it's Lindsay Armstrong. I'm so glad you found this audiobook, and I really hope you enjoy it. I hope to eventually make more of my books available on YouTube. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe so I can make that happen. If you'd like to try more of my stuff, you could head over to my website, lindsayarmstrong.com, and join my newsletter to get three free ebooks delivered straight to your inbox. You can also find my ebooks on Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Nook, and Google Play, pretty much wherever ebooks are sold. I'll drop the links below so you can check them out if you're interested. Happy listening! Tomorrow's Lullaby. Written by Lindsay Armstrong. Narrated by Tiffany Williams. Chapter 1. Sienna couldn't believe she was going to be late. Her junior year at the Academy of Arts was starting off with a bang. What had she been thinking, flying back from summer vacation the day before school started? Her plane had been delayed five hours due to weather. She'd stumbled through the front door of her shared apartment sometime after two in the morning, tossed her bags in a corner, and fallen into bed, fully clothed. Even Liv's deep breathing. She got mad if Sienna dared to call them snores. Hadn't kept Sienna awake. Four hours later, her alarm had done a crummy job of pulling her from her slumber. This better not be an indication of how this year would go. Fallen leaves crunched underneath her hurried footsteps. At least she wasn't the only student running late. She dodged a tired-looking man eating a bagel and a girl whose tangled hair suggested she'd just rolled out of bed. This semester had to go well. The last two years had been stressful, emotional, and life-changing. All she wanted out of this year was normal. Sienna pushed open the heavy wood doors to the Livingston building, tripping over the threshold. The hallway was completely empty, the door shut tight. Definitely late. Room 101, 103, 105. Sienna peered in the small rectangular window on the side of the door. Auditorium-style chairs descended toward a large whiteboard at the front of the room. Sienna slowly opened the door, wincing when the hinges let out a quiet squeal of protest. The room was uncomfortably quiet. Professor Callahan wrote on the whiteboard, the fresh marker squeaking with each stroke. Dark brown elbow patches stood out on his tweed jacket, and she could tell he had brushed his wispy gray hair into a comb over, even from here. Sienna scanned the rows of seats. There had to be an empty spot near the back. She couldn't face the humiliation of walking in late, then prancing to the front of the room for a chair. A guy in the last row lifted his backpack off a seat. Sienna barely glanced at her classmate, her eyes zeroing in on the chair. She slid into it with a grateful thanks. Maybe this semester wouldn't be so bad after all. Surely five minutes late didn't mean the whole semester was doomed. Professor Callahan turned to face the class, capping the dry erase marker he had been using. His messy scrawl was almost unreadable. Sienna squinted. She was pretty sure at least one of the words was TV. Welcome to the history of television, Professor Callahan said, his voice nasally. You're in for an informative and exciting semester. Only at an arts university would history of television be one of the options for the required film general. Sienna liked watching TV as much as the next person, but had a sneaking suspicion that taking this class would kill the fun. But it had fit into her schedule and seemed like the easiest of options. Television used to be a much underappreciated art form, often overshadowed by film, Professor Callahan continued. But it's gained in popularity over the last decade and has finally earned the respect it deserves. The guy sitting next to her snorted. For the first time, Sienna paid attention to her seatmate. He covered his face with a dark, sinewy hand. Sorry, he whispered. But is this guy for real? Her breath caught. Holy cow, the guy was gorgeous. His skin gleamed a beautiful golden brown, and inviting hazel eyes had her mouth going dry. His dreadlocks, pulled back in a ponytail at the nape of his neck, made their way to his shoulder blades. Mercy. She could make out a tattoo, some sort of quote under the cuff of his shirt sleeve. 
Bad boys had always been her weakness, and so these days she had rules when it came to guys. But that didn't mean she couldn't enjoy the view. He must be a transfer student. He looked too mature to be a freshman. The Academy of Arts was pretty small, and she had never seen this guy before. You can expect to view a minimum of 10 hours of television a week as part of your course assignment, Professor Callahan said. I assign the viewing material and require weekly five-page reports. If you'll turn to page two of your course syllabus, we'll go over the shows we'll be covering. TV is homework? I can get behind that, the guy whispered, leaning toward her. His breath smelled like spearmint, and she struggled to catch her breath without being obvious about it. You do like TV, right? You're not one of those purists who only reads Jane Austen and analyzes Van Gogh's art for fun, are you? Hardly, Sienna said. I don't just like TV. I love it. He grinned, revealing two front teeth that were slightly crooked. It gave his smile character. Do you lean more toward reality shows or sitcoms? He asked. Reality TV. I love the drama. I'm sorry, a nasally voice said. But are we interrupting you in the back row with our learning? Sienna's face flamed red. Professor Callahan glared up at them. She hadn't been called out by a teacher since high school. Of course not, the guy said. We were bouncing around the idea of forming a study group. Sorry, Professor. We'll talk about it after class. Well, then. The professor harumped loudly and turned his attention to the syllabus. Sienna stayed quiet, and so did her seatmate. As the professor launched into his first lecture, an incredibly dull and painfully detailed account of the father of modern television, she was all too aware of the man sitting beside her. Every breath, every shift in posture had her nerve endings dancing. She kept her eyes stubbornly forward, but she felt his gaze on her intermittently for the rest of class. Read pages 12 through 82 of your textbook as homework, Professor Callahan said. Be prepared for a quiz. See you Friday. The sounds of backpacks zipping open and laptop lids closing filled the classroom. Was her seatmate still watching her? She peeked over. Those hazel eyes made her skin flame. Sounds like a fun semester. His voice was deep and raspy when he wasn't whispering. Maybe a vocal performance major. She'd pay to hear him sing. I'm worried it's going to kill television for me, Sienna said. He laughed, exposing those crooked teeth again. He slung his backpack over a broad shoulder and held out his hand. Aaron Johnson. Sienna McBride. His shake was firm without being painful. Looks like we're study buddies now, Sienna. She raised an eyebrow, exiting the row and waiting for Aaron to do the same. The butterflies in her stomach were going nuts. Oh, really? Professor Callahan thinks we are. If we don't put together a study group now, I'll have lied to a teacher. I'm begging you, don't force me to be that guy. Sienna bit her lip, trying to hold back the smile that wanted to split her face. There was nothing wrong with studying with a handsome man, flirting with him even. It wasn't like she had a boyfriend. The few dates she had been on with Jared before heading home for a month hardly counted. I suppose you're right, Sienna said. I guess I could consider it my duty as your peer to be your study buddy. You could say that. Aaron pulled out his cell phone. Let me get your number and we'll get together soon. Maybe this weekend? Sounds good. They exchanged numbers as her heart pounded furiously in her chest. She hadn't allowed herself to flirt with someone this off limits since making the rules. It was nice to meet you, Sienna McBride. You too she said. Aaron raised a hand in acknowledgement, walking backward for a few steps before turning around and disappearing out the door. Sienna tried to forget about Aaron during her next two classes, but that proved nearly impossible. After the last class, she headed to the music hall and instantly felt at home. The soundproof practice rooms made the building unnaturally quiet. 
it was nice to be completely alone with her thoughts. The six-foot square practice room barely fit the upright piano with a natural oak finish. Soon she lost herself in one of her audition pieces for Juilliard. She ran a difficult measure over and over, working on fingering. She played the entire piece through dozens of times, focusing on memorization. She inserted emotion into the notes. This time, she'd nail the audition. Juilliard wouldn't even consider saying no. Three hours later, her back was stiff and her fingers ached. Time for a cool down. She played Hunter's Lullaby from memory, instantly transported back two years in time. The familiar notes calmed and soothed her. She felt good about the practice session. Dr. Stone would be pleased with her progress. Exhaustion hit full force during the mile-long walk home, but sleep would have to wait until she unpacked and probably went grocery shopping. Food wasn't something Liv usually thought about. She trudged up the stairs to her second-floor apartment. The chipped yellowing paint and faded brown carpet weren't much to write home about, but it felt good to be home. She kicked the door shut with one foot as her cell phone buzzed. Kira. Hunter and Sophie wanted to wish you good luck on your first day of classes. They made you a sign. Sienna grinned, waiting for the photo she knew would be texted next. Her phone buzzed again. Sophie held a sign, and the uneven letter said, Good luck, Aunt Sienna. Hunter's scribbles nearly covered the words. He held the other end of the sign and appeared to be trying to rip it from Sophie's hands. His nose, identical to Sienna's, was scrunched, his eyes narrowed. His blonde hair that mirrored her own was tousled. Sienna bit her lip, blinking quickly to stop the tears from forming. She was beyond lucky to have placed Hunter with the Petersons. When they'd adopted him, they'd welcomed Sienna with open arms and given her the title of aunt. She'd forever be grateful to them. Ah, oh, so adorable. I love it. Tell them thanks. I miss you guys already. How was your first day? It went great, smiley face. Oh, good. I hope it's your best semester yet. So did Sienna. With her upcoming Juilliard audition, she couldn't afford any distractions or mistakes. Thanks. She shoved her phone in her pocket, knowing Kira wouldn't text back. She always let Sienna have the last word. Kira was great about keeping Sienna in the loop when it came to Hunter. Aside from their weekly texts, Sienna always visited the Petersons when she went home to Utah. But as much as Sienna craved photos and information about Hunter... It always stung that she was a bystander in his life. It hurt to know her son wasn't really hers. The door flew open, bumping Sienna in the rear. Whoops, sorry, S. Didn't know you were home. Liv dropped her backpack to the floor and wrapped Sienna in a tight hug. How was Utah? I didn't even hear you come in last night. Utah was great. I'm glad to be back, though. Liv grinned, raising her face to the ceiling. Me too. Philadelphia speaks to me. Sienna laughed. She and Liv had been assigned as roommates freshman year and become instant friends. Last year, they had found this small one-bedroom apartment just off campus. When summer came, they decided to keep the apartment. It was nice not to deal with moving on top of the beginning of a new semester. You look pretty, Sienna said. Dark brown hair was piled on top of Liv's head, and her eyes popped with dramatic makeup against her smooth and flawless olive-toned skin. Her green dress shimmered with each movement. Did you just get back from an audition? Yeah, the campus is doing Aida, the musical, not the opera. Of course, I deserve to be Amneris. Of course. Liv hugged Sienna again. Gosh, I've missed you. I have so much to tell you. We texted last week. Liv's dark eyes glittered, and a smile brushed her lips. It's been an eventful week. Sienna's eyes widened. She grabbed Liv's hands, inspecting it for a ring. It'd be just like Liv to impulsively jump into marriage with a guy she barely knew. Craig didn't propose, did he? 
Liv pulled her hand away. Uh-uh, that's over. I'm with Eldon now. Eldon? What happened with Craig? Craig wasn't the one, so I dumped him. Oh, don't look at me like that. I met Eldon at the theater my last week in Detroit. It was love at first sight. I'm telling you, I heard the lyrics to every story is a love story in my head when our eyes met across the room. Liv hummed a few bars of the Aida song. Ours is a love that will never die. Right. It wasn't like Liv had gone through six, now seven, boyfriends since Sienna had known her. Uh-huh. And I'm assuming Eldon lives in Detroit? No! That's the best part. He's here in Philadelphia. He was only in Detroit on business. It's fate, I tell you, written in the stars. And just how old is Eldon? That sounds like an old man's name. Okay, he's 39, but that's what I need after Craig. A mature man, not an irresponsible boy. Sienna stifled a laugh. She knew it was pointless to try and talk sense into Liv, but she had to at least try. He's old enough to be your father. You're one to talk. The heart doesn't have an age. Sienna's ears flushed red. Jared is eight years older than me, not 18. And even that big of an age difference had bothered both Sienna and Jared a little. Besides, I don't think Jared and I will go anywhere. Liv made a sympathetic noise in her throat. He still hasn't texted you, huh? I'm sure he's busy with work. At first, the lack of communication had hurt Sienna's feelings. But if they continued dating, she'd have to tell him about Hunter. And she wasn't sure how straight-laced Jared would take it. Aaron would probably be fine with it. He seemed edgy. But that was exactly what she didn't need. She'd tried dating that kind of boy, and the decision had altered the course of her life. Not that she'd give up having Hunter for anything, but still, the consequences hurt. There's someone else you're interested in, isn't there? Liv asked. Sienna's cheeks flamed, and she shook her head. No. Don't lie to me. If she didn't admit to her burgeoning crush, then it didn't exist. Sienna tried not to break eye contact, but after nearly 30 seconds of staring, she blinked. You met someone, Liv crowed. You blinked. Yeah, well, not all of us can go for hours in staring contests. That doesn't mean I met someone. Who is he? Someone from school? Sienna headed to their bedroom while Liv trailed behind. It's nothing. Just a guy in my television history class. Tell me everything. Sienna dropped her backpack to the floor and grabbed one of her suitcases. Might as well start unpacking while they talked. Liv's side of the room was already littered in clothes. His name is Aaron, and we flirted a bit during class. We're going to study together this semester. That's it. Liv clapped her hands. Perfect! You can double date with me and Eldon. When's your first date? It's not like that. We're just going to study. Liv's eyes narrowed. Right, the church thing. It's not just a church thing. It was everything. But Liv had never understood Sienna's dedication to God. Just because you date him doesn't mean you have to marry him, Liv said. Date Aaron for fun. Christians are allowed to have fun, right? Dane killed the fun part for me. Liv groaned, flopping back on the bed. You were 17 when you got pregnant. You wouldn't let that happen again? Dating leads to marriage. At least it should. Sorry, Liv. Aaron and I aren't going to be a thing this semester. She didn't care how attractive he was. Bad boys were nothing but trouble. At least let me meet the eye candy. How do you know he's cute? I can tell by the way you talk about him. I want to know how it went from the first word to goodbye. Sienna laughed. She would indulge Liv. 
It wasn't like anything would actually come of her study sessions with Aaron. Chapter 2 Sienna waited all Thursday for Aaron to text, keeping her phone on the piano while she practiced and checking the screen in between songs. He never texted. Ten o'clock came and went without a word, and her stomach curled with disappointment. Why did she even care? Yeah, Aaron had flirted. She had given him her number, but he hadn't yet followed through. That didn't mean he wouldn't text eventually. Maybe he was one of those guys with a stupid rule about waiting so many days after getting a girl's number before actually using it. It wasn't like they could be more than study buddies anyway. She had rules about relationships that most guys weren't interested in following. Someone like Aaron, tattoos, dreadlocks, and a smile that said he knew how to have a good time, definitely wouldn't want her strict brand of dating. She needed someone who was a devout Christian, with strong morals and a willingness to wait until marriage. Maybe some girls could date a cute guy just for fun, but Sienna's one attempt at that had ended with a baby. Friday morning, Sienna woke up early, eager to get to History of Television. She arrived 20 minutes early and glanced casually around the nearby empty classroom. Professor Callahan had made chicken scratches on the whiteboard again, his back to the room. A girl sat in the front row, doodling in a notebook. There was a couple in the back corner, nuzzling each other's necks and giggling. No Aaron. Of course not. Bad boys didn't come to class early. Sienna walked past the back row determinedly and chose a seat in the middle of the room. She flipped down the small tray hidden in the armrest and booted up her laptop, absently doing piano finger exercises as she waited. The soft whir of her computer fan was disconcertingly loud in the eerily quiet room. She didn't need a study group, especially not for a fluff class like this one. It was more practical and efficient to work alone. Jeez, was Professor Callahan seriously still writing on the board? Sienna squinted, trying to make out even one of the words. A backpack hit the floor. Two students had taken up residence at the end of her row. The seat slowly started to fill, and the noise level rose from awkward silence to a pleasant murmur. She caught a flash of brown skin and long hair in her peripheral vision. The chair beside her squeaked as someone sat down. Aaron had sought her out. Sienna's stomach tumbled with butterflies, and she tried not to smile too widely. Hey. His voice was deep and sexy, making her arm hair stand on end. I see you managed to get here on time today. Last time was a fluke. Like an idiot, I decided to fly back the day before. My plane was delayed and I didn't get a lot of sleep. I'm usually a very punctual person. I can see that. He wore a basic gray v-neck tee that looked better than it had any right to. The tattoo on his bicep still teased, half hidden by a shirt sleeve. What did it say? The script was small and a complicated cursive. We should get that study group worked out, Aaron said. Her ears burned. Had he realized she was staring? She should tell him she was too busy for a study group and preferred to work alone. Sure. Wait, what? That wasn't what she was supposed to say. Aaron leaned back in his chair, stretching his long legs out in front of him. Oh gosh, he was wearing red Converse. Adorable. We can do viewing parties at my apartment every Friday, then discuss the shows afterward. Professor Callahan seems like the type to give challenging quizzes. No, no, no. Going to his apartment was definitely against the rules. Her fingers rapidly tapped out a Baroque finger-over-finger -finger exercise on the desk tray. Dang, I probably won't be able to come. I'm usually working on Friday nights. We can pick another day, Aaron said easily. His arm flexed as he brushed back a dreadlock that had fallen over his shoulder. I don't have any night classes this semester, and I set my own hours for work. How are Tuesdays? Was that another tattoo on his neck hiding behind his hair? 
she had the sudden urge to brush his hair aside and see for herself. Maybe it's easier if we view the shows on our own than meet to discuss them somewhere on campus. Where's the fun in that? I need someone to mock the shows with. You read the viewing list, right? Sienna couldn't help it. She laughed. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. See, these shows can't be watched solo. She wanted to go to his apartment and watch lame TV shows together. Wanted him to casually drape an arm around her shoulders as she snuggled against his side. But it only took a moment for casual cuddling to turn into something more. She would never put herself in that position again. It wasn't worth it. Would we bother your roommate? She asked. If someone else was around, it wouldn't break any rules. No, he works long hours as a dancer at a nightclub and is hardly ever home. That idea was out then. Sienna stifled a sigh. She'd have to be direct. He'd run for the hills any moment now. I don't go to guys' apartments alone. It's a rule I've made for myself. All right. He shrugged. Where were the raised eyebrows, the frown of disbelief? What if we had other people in our study group? Would it be okay then? He didn't seem annoyed. Yeah, that'd be fine. I don't want to make you uncomfortable, and I really do think the group would be beneficial. I agree, Sienna said. Cool, I'll find some others. Aaron tapped the shoulder of the girl who sat a seat over and in front of him and extended a hand. Hey, I'm Aaron. That's Sienna. Okay, then. He meant right now. The girl took his hand, shaking it uncertainly. She had a fringe of bangs across her forehead and heart-shaped face. Kelsey. Kelsey, Sienna and I want to form a study group. Interested? He had such a casual confidence about him. It was beyond attractive. By the time class started, Aaron had found two other eager and willing participants. They agreed to meet in the commons that afternoon to go over the details. All through class, Sienna had a hard time focusing on the lecture. Her eyes kept wandering over to Aaron. He had a strong jaw and thick eyebrows over gorgeous hazel eyes. She thought, from the tone of his skin, he must have some Hispanic blood in him. She caught a flash of the neck tattoo again. A stick? No, that couldn't be right. He caught her looking at him and smiled. Sienna flushed and kept her eyes on the professor for the rest of class. When the lecture ended, she expected Aaron to say his goodbyes and disappear. Instead, he waited for her to pack up her laptop and fell in step beside her. Her foot caught on a crack in the sidewalk and she stumbled, Crap, had he seen that? So what are you majoring in? No, let me guess. Aaron squinted, as though trying to figure out a complicated puzzle. You seem about as excited for this class as me, so you can't be one of the film majors. You're too shy for theater. You don't move like a dancer. Hey, Sienna said, stifling a giggle. He'd definitely seen her trip. I feel like I should be offended. Sorry, that must have been some other girl who tripped over a crack in the sidewalk. That could happen to anyone. His eyes sparkled with laughter. Don't interrupt me while I'm trying to figure you out. So art, music, or writing? I'm going to guess music. That leaves vocal or instrumental. He pursed his lips, tapping a finger against his chin. Instrumental. Piano? Sienna couldn't help feeling impressed. You're good at reading people. What tipped you off? The finger exercises. Are you a composition or performance major? Performance, although sometimes I compose just for fun. One day I want to open my own studio. His eyebrows raised. Wow, ambitious. Once upon a time. But Hunter had changed a lot of things. She'd dreamed of going to Juilliard her whole life, had even been accepted. By the time the letter came, she'd been pregnant. Juilliard wouldn't allow her to defer, and Sienna had stayed in Utah and had Hunter instead. They hadn't accepted her when she reapplied last year. This upcoming audition was her last chance. 
She was a junior, and if she didn't get in now, it wouldn't be worth going. The application process was stressful, and the emotional toll was high. She had to put an expiration date on that dream for her own sanity. You're not ambitious now? Aaron's voice broke into her thoughts. The explanation was too heavy for a casual friendship. Tell me more about you. What's your major? Aaron didn't call her on avoiding the question. She liked him more and more with every passing minute. Graphic design. I used to paint a lot as a kid, but now I mostly focus on digital art. The tattoo, she said, the image suddenly making sense. It's a painter's brush. I thought it was a stick. Aaron laughed. He swept his loose ponytail to the side, revealing a small paintbrush and palette just beneath the hairline on the back of his neck. Yeah, I got this one back in high school on a dare. My very first tattoo. Her fingers twitched and she clenched them into fists. Under no circumstances could she run her fingers over that tattoo. You showed good taste even then. Most high school tattoos are of the regrettable variety. My parents were definitely not too happy, but I was. I've got to go this way. I'll see you at four in the commons, right? Right. Looking forward to it, Aaron said. So was she, more than she had looked forward to anything in years, and it terrified her. After her last class, Sienna headed toward the commons, legs shaky and palms sweating. This was ridiculous. It was just a study group. But Aaron would be there. She found him underneath a large oak tree dropping its leaves. He sat alone, perched on top of a metal picnic table, shoulders hunched as he studied the textbook in his hands. Dang it, but he was beautiful. The sunlight glistened off his golden brown skin, and she could see a little furrow in his brow as he read. He looked up, his eyes zooming in on Sienna as though sensing she had arrived. A grin split his face, revealing those crooked front teeth. Hey, Sienna said. You came. Were you worried I wouldn't? Aaron hopped off the table, taking a seat on the bench. A little? Sienna folded her arms, trying not to let her annoyance show through. I said I'd come, and I'm a woman of my word. Yeah, I'm beginning to realize that. Sienna took a seat beside him and motioned to the textbook. What are you reading? Aaron groaned. Trying to get through my Spanish homework. I got here about an hour ago to study. What semester? Third. It's my least favorite subject. I should have gone for the BS in graphic design instead of the BA. Yeah, I'm taking French, and it's challenging. Aaron shook his head, the dreadlocks slapping against his back. It's not that. I actually can speak Spanish decently well. My parents made me take private lessons for years, and I hated it. Sienna opened her mouth to ask another question, but Kelsey arrived then, her fringe of bangs nearly hiding her eyes. Hey, she said. Glad you could make it, Kelsey. Aaron smiled, and for a moment, Sienna flushed with jealousy. Thanks. Oh, Owen's here. Kelsey raised a hand in a shy wave, her cheeks glowing pink. Well, dang. Now Sienna felt bad for being jealous. It was obvious Kelsey was crushing hard on Owen. A few minutes later, the final group member arrived. Aaron took charge, and they had outlined a schedule and group expectations in no time. We can watch the shows on Tuesdays at my place, Aaron said. My roommate's rarely home. Owen nodded. Great. Where do you live? Waverly Apartments. Do you know where that is? I do, Sienna piped up. I live right across the street at Haverton Apartments. Aaron raised an eyebrow, that slow smile spreading across his lips, making her whole body warm. Seriously? Cool. They split up the next week's reading assignment, and then the others left, Rick heading briskly toward the library, and Kelsey following after Owen, her eyes wide and hopeful. The September air had cooled as they spoke, and Sienna zipped up her jacket. Are you headed home? 
Aaron asked. Sienna nodded, checking her watch. Usually I'd head to a practice room for a few hours, but I'm playing at a retirement party tonight. Perfect. I'm heading home now, too. Want to walk together? He nudged her shoulder with his. I mean, I can go pretend to browse the bookstore and leave in 15 minutes if you prefer. Sienna laughed, falling into step beside Aaron. We can walk together. Excellent. That gives me like 30 minutes to find out all about you. Sienna's hands tightened on her backpack straps. Not much to tell. Family? She let her shoulders relax. Basic questions she could handle. Two brothers, identical twins that just turned seven. I'll bet they keep your mom hopping. That's an understatement. Troublemakers doesn't even begin to cover it. Aaron laughed. I can imagine. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Yes, three older sisters. I'm the baby of the family by six years. Time flew by as they talked about the basics, then moved on to discussing their classes. Soon they stopped on the corner outside their apartment complexes. Thanks for joining the study group, Sienna. I know I kind of strong-armed you into it. Not at all, Sienna said. Who knew a class on television would have so many quizzes? At least we get to hang out, right? Sienna's stomach twisted and churned, but he had said it himself. They were just hanging out. Right. TV history is my first class on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. I usually leave about 7.30. We could walk together if you're headed there at the same time. I am. Walking together sounds great. What was she doing? If she wasn't careful, this would go straight from casual flirting to a full-on crush. Cool. See you. He crossed the street, hands stuck casually in his pockets, steps confident and sure. She already couldn't wait until Monday. Chapter 3 Sienna slept in Sunday morning. Church services didn't start until 11 o'clock, and it was only a 20-minute walk to the building. Her body was exhausted from the first week back at school. At 9.30, she finally rolled out of bed to take a shower. Jared would probably be at church. She wanted to look her best, even if she had no idea where their relationship stood. They had been on a few very pleasant dates at the beginning of summer. He'd promised to text while she was in Utah. For a solid month, she had gone swimming with her brothers, had barbecues with the Petersons, and stayed up late watching movies with her parents. But Jared had only texted twice. She didn't know where that left them. Sienna walked into the kitchen a few minutes after ten, adjusting the belt on her high-waisted skirt. Liv sat bleary-eyed at the kitchen table, slowly consuming a bowl of cereal. Back to church already? Liv asked. Yep. Want to come? Pass. She wasn't surprised at Liv's refusal. Sienna adjusted the belt on her skirt again, then pressed her hands against her stomach, willing it to flatten. Does this look okay? Liv groaned, putting her hand to her head. Oh, don't talk so loud. Sienna sucked in a breath, then released it. She twisted back and forth, feeling the fabric tighten across her waist. This totally makes me look fat. I should change. You look fine. The baby belly is all in your head. Sienna sighed and slipped into a pair of heels. She didn't have time to change anyway. The walk to church was comfortingly familiar. Sienna opened the doors and immediately felt the stresses of the past week vanish. The foyer held the same comfortable furniture and photos of Christ she had seen in church buildings her entire life. Piano music floated into the foyer. The sanctuary was almost empty. Dark wood pews faced the pulpit. Sienna recognized one of the freshmen from the music program at the piano. The notes were technically correct, but she could tell he hadn't yet taken a composition class. There was nothing original about the piece. A couple in their mid-thirties sat on the front pew, and a few other students she recognized from campus were straggled about the room. She waved to a girl from her French class. 
She scanned the room, looking for a tall, thin man with trendy glasses and styled hair. Jared wasn't here. Disappointment dropped like a pit in her stomach, surprising her with its intensity. They'd had a few good dates, but it wasn't like they had been dating. She took her usual seat at the back row. Maybe he was running late, although that wasn't like him. He could be out of town again on business. A couple of months ago, she would have texted to find out. The pew slowly filled with familiar faces and a few unfamiliar ones. Pastor Tanner wandered up and down the aisles, shaking hands and welcoming everyone to the services. Good to have you back, Sienna, he said, extending his hand. It's good to be back, she said. How was Utah? His eyes asked a deeper question. Are you okay? He knew how hard her visits with Hunter could be. Sienna had moved to Pennsylvania only weeks after giving birth. She and her mother had visited several churches in the area, but Sienna had instantly felt a connection with Pastor Tanner. She told him everything about her past, and he had been nothing but compassionate and loving. It's always nice to go home, but I'm glad to be back, she said. Good. We'll talk more later. He patted her hand, then moved on to greet another member. She had spent hours in Pastor Tanner's small office that first semester, crying while he offered counsel. As the weeks dragged on, she had met with him less and less, but he still checked up on her at least once a semester. You're back. The deep voice instantly brought a smile to Sienna's lips. Jared. She couldn't stop the happy laugh that bubbled up as he pulled her into a tight hug. Even in heels, her head barely reached his chin. The height difference had made their few chaste kisses a little awkward. Aaron's height, a few inches shorter than Jared, but still close to six feet, would be much more kiss-worthy. Not that she'd ever find out. Dark chestnut-brown hair brushed the collar of Jared's white shirt, like he hadn't made time for a haircut in weeks. There was a quiet maturity about him that she had always been attracted to. I wondered if I'd see you here today, Sienna said. I thought maybe you were out of town again. I just got back on Tuesday. Things have been crazy with work. Sorry I didn't text more. She brushed a strand of hair behind her ear, pasting on a smile. That's okay. I was pretty busy too. I've missed you. The sincerity in his eyes was unmistakable. He looked good in his black suit and tie, with his thick glasses perched on the end of his nose. Clean cut and wholesome. Just what she needed. No teasing tattoos here. I missed you too. Jared motioned to the bench. Mind if I sit? Be my guest. Sienna scooted in and Jared sat down beside her. So what have you been up to? Work has been insane. I was in Chicago for almost three weeks. We had a situation with a branch there, and I was working 14-hour days trying to straighten everything out. I barely had time to eat, let alone sleep. Sounds awful. But it made her feel strangely better. This explanation made sense. Jared always gave himself wholeheartedly to what was right in front of him. Maybe he was still interested in pursuing a relationship. But was she? The mess definitely was, but the people were great to work with, and I ate lots of Chicago-style pizza. He slung an arm across the back of the bench like nothing had changed between them. Maybe it hadn't. How was Utah? Good. It was nice to spend time with my family, and especially to spend time with Hunter. We went to Lake Powell for a week and had a lot of fun. I'd love to hear about it. Can I take you to dinner sometime this week and we can catch up? So he was still interested. She hated the uncertainty phase their relationship seemed to currently be caught in. I'd like that. Text me and we can work out the details. The piano neared the end of the hymn, and the pastor made his way toward the pulpit. Jared's arm was mere centimeters from hers. If he moved even slightly they'd be holding hands. It wouldn't be the first time, 
but the month apart seemed to have erased all progress they had made. The pastor paused halfway down the aisle. A man shook his hand, then slipped into the end of a pew. Did he have dreadlocks? The pianist stopped playing. Pastor Tanner took the pulpit and welcomed everyone to the service. Sienna barely heard him announce an autumn potluck. She was fully fixated on Dred's man. Rich, dark brown hair just brushed his shoulder blades. He glanced at the clock on a sidewall and she caught a glimpse of his profile. Strong, angular nose, thick eyebrows over narrow eyes, a square jaw. She'd admired that face more than once in class. Tingles raced up and down her arms. She wouldn't have pegged him as religious. Did he attend services weekly? The choir began singing, and Sienna tried to focus on the lyrics, but she couldn't stop staring at Aaron. His white shirt was rolled halfway up his forearms. When he leaned forward, his hair fell over one shoulder. She thought she saw the tattoo on his neck. Jared shifted next to her. Sienna looked down at her hands, willing the blush to leave her cheeks. Why was she so obsessed with Aaron? She had good, strong, dependable Jared, who still wanted to pursue a relationship. Sienna barely heard the sermon. Aaron focused on the pastor the entire service with laser-like precision that was beyond attractive. The choir began singing. Had she seriously been staring for almost an hour? Sienna fumbled for the hymnal and held it so Jared could share. She bowed her head as the pastor offered a prayer. Her eyes popped open at the final amen, searching for Aaron. He rose, shaking the hand of a man in the pew in front of him, and then he finally turned around. A furrow appeared in his brow, and he looked around as though sensing someone watched him. Their eyes locked. His widened. Aaron. At church. Her church. Sienna, are you okay? Jared asked, following her gaze. I know him, Sienna said. We have a class together at school. Jared glanced at Aaron, then nodded. Oh yeah, he moved in about two weeks ago. He said in Bible study that he had transferred from Virginia State. I'm not surprised you've already run into him on campus. I didn't know he was religious, Sienna said. His bad boy appearance didn't jive with attending services. Aaron made his way down the aisle, heading toward her. Sienna fought against the current of people streaming out of the sanctuary, aware of Jared following closely behind. What are you doing here? Sienna asked. Aaron folded his arms, his hazel eyes amused. I'm going to church. What else? It's good to see you again, Jared said. He motioned toward the sanctuary doors. Are you staying for Bible study? Sure. Aaron said, I've been very impressed with the class. He attended services every week. He stayed for Bible study. Sienna's mind whirled, trying to reconcile this new information with the image she had of Aaron. They took the stairs to the basement and fell into their seats in the small classroom, Sienna between the two men. I can't believe you're here, Sienna said. There must be hundreds of churches in Philadelphia. Aaron chuckled, the warm sound raising goosebumps on her arms. He had affected her more in five minutes than Jared had in an hour. I thought you might be religious when you were so concerned about being alone in my apartment, but I couldn't think of a good way to ask. Oh gosh, he would remember that awkward conversation. I thought for sure you would laugh at me, but you were so nice about it. The assistant pastor called the class to attention. Sienna couldn't focus. She was too aware of the two men on either side of her. Aaron was hot. Too hot. It made her nervous. And he was good and kind and fun. But she knew what to expect from Jared, and he obviously wanted their relationship to go somewhere. But Aaron might not be off limits now. He went to church every week. He stayed for Bible study. It wasn't like she and Jared were exclusive. Dane went to church too, she reminded herself. 
He'd been heavily involved in the youth group. Just because Aaron went to church didn't mean he'd respect her rules. It didn't make him dateable. As Sienna sat through the lesson, her mind continued to churn. Aaron had flirted. He seemed interested. Didn't the way he'd easily accepted her apartment rules say something about his character? Aaron raised his hand and made a comment on the lesson, quoting a Bible verse from memory. That wasn't the kind of thing a casual Christian could do. Class ended, and Sienna realized she didn't even know what the topic had been. Aaron was messing with her head. Are you headed back to the apartments? Aaron asked as the room broke up into smaller conversations. Yeah, Sienna said, her heart pounding in anticipation of what he'd say next. Me too. Did you walk or drive? Walk. I don't have a car. Even with scholarships covering most of her tuition, a car was a luxury she couldn't afford. In that case, I can drive you home, Aaron said. Jared's hand rested heavily on her shoulder, and she fought the urge to shrug it off. I'll take you home if you need a ride. That's twenty minutes in the opposite direction of your house, Sienna protested. It'll give us a chance to catch up. Sienna lives right across the street from me. Aaron said, I'm heading there anyway, so it isn't a problem. Jared took Sienna's hand in his, the first time since her return. It felt like he was staking a claim. I don't mind taking you. Sienna firmly pulled out of his grip. It makes more sense for Aaron to drive me. Thanks for the offer, though. Text me so we can arrange things for this week, okay? He stared at Aaron, then leaned down and kissed her cheek lingering longer than was necessary. Okay, we'll talk soon. Sienna followed both men up the stairs, then said goodbye to Jared. I'm parked over here, Aaron said, his gaze like a deliciously warm fire. Two hours ago, she had been excited at the prospect of catching up with Jared on another date. Now all she could think about was Aaron. Chapter 4 Aaron drove an ancient Toyota with flaking blue paint and a fender held on by duct tape. But any car felt like a luxury to Sienna. He held the passenger door open for her, and her palms grew damp at the gentlemanly gesture. Thanks, Sienna said as she slid in. No problem. Moments later, they were leaving the parking lot. Why don't I just drive you to church every week? Inside, Sienna was dancing. That'd be great. Jared won't mind? Sienna had a feeling he probably would, but he didn't own her. They could have been a couple by now, but instead he ignored her for a month. He'll get used to it. Are you two dating? The words were casual, but she heard the interest underneath his words. She could shut him down right now without hurting his feelings. Jared was exactly what she needed, and Aaron was a dangerous distraction. His question had given her the perfect out. We've been on a few dates, but we aren't dating, Sienna said. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Hadn't she learned not to play with fire? Looks to me like he wants to be exclusive. Maybe. She looked down at her hands, feeling suddenly shy. I'm still trying to decide if that's what I want. He seems like a nice guy, but I'm a nice guy too. Sienna's stomach blazed with heat. He was interested. Interested and very bold. Time to change the subject. I can't believe we both attend the same church. It's not even that close to campus. What brought you to Pastor Tanner's congregation? Aaron relaxed back against his seat, one hand loosely holding the steering wheel. His son is my best friend from high school. Things were hard at home, and I hung out a lot at Evan's house. Eventually, he invited me to church. My parents were pretty mad when they found out, but that just made me want to go more. Evan and his family moved to Philadelphia my senior year, but we kept in touch. When things exploded last December, I looked into moving here. Right when she was celebrating Hunter's first birthday. Wow. Why were your parents so upset? They don't believe in organized religion. Sundays are for football and fishing. 
but I've never really fit in with my family, and I did with Evans. Pastor Tanner never pushed me toward conversion, but here I am. What about you? Is your family religious? Extremely. I grew up going to services every week. It must be hard not having that kind of support. I think it'll be easier now that I'm farther from home. Can I ask why you don't fit in? Aaron's relaxed posture didn't change, and he gave her an easy grin. I don't mind telling the story, but it's kind of long. That's okay. My parents always wanted a big family. When my mom had an emergency hysterectomy after my sister was born, they were pretty disappointed. About four years later, they decided to adopt, and two years after that, I came into the picture. Sienna's heart thudded loudly in her chest. Could Aaron hear it? She pulled her sweater tightly around her. You're adopted? Yes. My bio mom was an immigrant from Mexico and my bio dad was white. That's all I know. Adopted? I was never really a part of my family, you know. You could just tell by looking at us. All three of my sisters looked just like our parents, fair skin and blonde hair. He flashed a grin, but Sienna felt numb. Like you, only way less beautiful. My parents are always trying to shove Mexican culture down my throat. A Hispanic middle name, Spanish lessons, Taco Tuesday. But they brought me home from the hospital. The only connection I have to the Hispanic culture is DNA. My family doesn't seem to get that. Is that how Hunter would feel as an adult? No, he loved Kira and David and Sophie. He wasn't treated any differently, and he wasn't forced to deal with a cultural divide. That must have been really hard, she said, her voice thick. It was a lot to deal with, especially as a teen. But at Evan's home, all of that disappeared. I loved listening to Pastor Tanner read from the Bible during dinner. The verses about acceptance are my favorite. I'm so sorry, Sienna said. I love my family, and I know they love me, but it's not enough. I don't know how birth moms can sentence their children to that kind of confusion. Sienna's blood ran cold, and she tried to keep her face blank. I think most birth moms are doing what they think is best for their child. I'm sure they are, but maybe if they knew what adoption was like for their kid, they'd reconsider. Sienna couldn't believe they were having this conversation. I had a friend growing up who was adopted. She fit into her family perfectly. A few years ago, I asked if she wished things were different, and she said absolutely not, that she couldn't imagine any other life. I'm happy for your friend, but I think she's in the minority. Her chest was tight with barely contained emotions. What about orphans, abusive situations? Okay, I'll give you that. Aaron's posture was still relaxed, like he hadn't noticed the tension zinging through Sienna. I've met a few people like your friend, who don't wonder about their bio family and feel completely at home with their adoptive family. But most of the adoptees I know feel like they don't quite fit in. Why? Did your family treat you badly? Of course not. But as much as we love each other, I still don't belong. I hate my birth mother for abandoning me. Sienna closed her eyes and willed her hands not to tremble. I made the right decision, she reminded herself for the millionth time. You don't know what her circumstances were, what your life would be like now. True. I'm sorry adoption has been so hard for you. Aaron gave her a grateful smile. Thanks. Things are better than they used to be, but it's still hard. Anyway, now I'm here in Philadelphia and my family's really upset. She grasped at the subject change like a lifeline. That you moved? That I'm attending the Academy of Arts. Three generations of Johnsons have graduated from Virginia State and I'm breaking the trend. Aaron pulled into her apartment parking lot. Sorry, I didn't mean to unload that on you. Sienna tried to smile. I asked, and I'm glad you told me. It sounds worse than it really is. I still talk to my family on the phone every week, and I'll visit when I can. That's good. Yeah. Thanks for driving home with me. 
Sienna nodded, trying not to stare at his full lips. She could never date him now. This was too much baggage for any couple to overcome. But they could still be friends. You're the one doing me a favor. I'll see you in class tomorrow? Absolutely. Aaron pointed to the corner. Meet me at 7.30 if you want to walk over together. I'll be there. Sienna waved as Aaron drove away. Her mind reeled as she trudged up the stairs and opened the door. Liv straightened from where she had been sprawled on the couch, watching an old black and white film. Hey, Liv said. How was church? Sienna kicked off her heels. Aaron, the guy from my television history class? Yes. He was at church. Liv's eyes widened. She grabbed the remote and paused the movie. Wow. Yeah. That means he'd probably respect your rules. Yeah. That means he might not be off limits. Yeah. This is amazing, S. Liv hugged her. We really can double now. I can't wait to tell Eldon. Oh, it gets better. Jared was there too. He's going to text me so we can go out sometime this week. Obviously, he wants to continue dating. Is that what you want? Sienna hugged her legs to her chest. I don't know. Jared is great and we have a good time together, but I sort of like Aaron. And if I like Aaron, should I keep dating Jared? Here's a crazy idea. You could just date Aaron. That's not going to happen. Why? Sienna rubbed her eyes, feeling a stress headache building. Because he's adopted, and I think he hates his birth mom for placing him. Wow, didn't see that one coming. Me either. Liv patted Sienna's knee. Okay, so he's adopted. So what? You don't have to tell him about Hunter, at least not at first. Liv, I've got more than enough adoption baggage for any relationship. I need to date someone with different baggage. Now you're just being difficult. You don't even know how bad his baggage is. Sienna thought about their conversation, her heart twisting. I'm pretty sure it's bad. If you keep dating Jared, you'll have to tell him at some point. You'll have to tell anyone you date seriously. Yeah, but Jared doesn't already have adoption baggage. So what are you going to do? Sienna thought of the calm way Jared dealt with every situation, how he'd apologized for not texting her while she was gone. He'd asked for another date, been jealous when she drove home with Aaron. Aaron, who hated birth moms who gave up their children, but could make her entire body feel on fire with just a look. S? Liv asked. What will you do? Sienna sighed. I have no idea. Chapter 5 Sienna walked down the hallway toward Dr. Stone's office, the sheet music clutched in her hand. She'd made a few changes to Hunter's lullaby while in Utah and couldn't wait to get Dr. Stone's opinion on it. Hopefully there would be time at the end of her lesson. Stepping into his office was like coming home. He sat at the satiny black grand piano in the middle of the room, fingers flying over the keys. A bright orange sweater vest clung to his rounded middle and beads of sweat gathered at his receding salt and pepper hairline. He trilled one last chord, then looked up from the piano. Good afternoon, Sienna. How was your summer? Sienna set her backpack down. Really good. I've been practicing the audition pieces we selected for Juilliard. Excellent. Let's start with Chopin. For the next hour, Sienna played her audition pieces and listened to feedback from Dr. Stone. Juilliard had very strict repertoire requirements, and each piece took all of her concentration. She was sweaty and exhausted by the end of the lesson. I think you're right on track, Dr. Stone said. You've made a lot of progress since your audition last March, and you've picked pieces that really showcase your talent. Thanks. Sienna felt as though a balloon were expanding in her throat, threatening to suffocate her. She had thought she had perfect selections last time, too. 
She had been so confident Juilliard would accept her. After all, why wouldn't they? She'd already been accepted once before. But they hadn't re-accepted her. She had been shocked. We have a few minutes left of your lesson, Dr. Stone said. Do you have any personal compositions you'd like me to look at? Yes. Sienna pulled the sheet music for Hunter's lullaby out of her backpack, trying to push away the fear that clutched at her heart when she thought of the audition. The lullaby. Did you make changes to it over the summer? Just added a few measures to one of the transitions between pieces. Dr. Stone gestured to the piano. Well, let's hear it. Sienna nodded and began playing. The first half of the medley she played flawlessly, but the new transition made her stumble. Most people wouldn't notice, but Sienna did, and she knew Dr. Stone had as well. He noticed every imperfection, no matter how tiny. Sienna finished the piece, holding the last note for eight beats before letting up. Dr. Stone took off his glasses and rubbed his eyes. It's different. Not better than the other version, but not worse, either. Sienna's heart fell. I really thought I had gotten it right this time. You've worked so hard on this lullaby medley, and it's beautiful. But you need to move on. Focus on the pieces for your audition and end-of-semester recital. The words hit Sienna like a slap in the face. But Dr. Stone was right. She'd been working on this medley for two and a half years, since she was barely in the second trimester with Hunter, and it would still be waiting for her come March 10th, when the audition was over. It didn't make sense to spend so much energy on an original piece when Juilliard didn't allow those to be used in an audition. This was her last shot. Next year, she'd be a senior, and if they wouldn't accept her as an undergrad, she'd never get into a master's program. She swallowed hard. You're right. I should focus on the audition. And you're a very strong contender. Dr. Stone gave her a sympathetic smile. Now, your homework is to choose some pieces for the Christmas recital. I'd closely consider Handel's work. You don't have any of his pieces in your repertoire, and it's an excellent choice for Christmas. Sienna left the practice room feeling discouraged. She'd made good progress on her Chopin piece, even nailed a difficult measure that she had struggled with for the last month. And that had felt amazing, like a standing ovation combined with thunderous applause. But the idea of leaving Hunter's lullaby behind, even for a few months, felt like failure. The sun shone outside, reflecting brilliantly off the changing leaves. The air had cooled and she buttoned up her jacket, longing for home but she should probably head to the library and look for recital pieces. The piano melody from a thousand years floated up from her pocket, muffled by the denim. She didn't recognize the number and debated for half a second whether to answer it. Hello? See? Her heart stopped, then started pounding. She hadn't heard that voice in more than two years. Why was he calling her? Dane? It is you. Relief coded the words. I was worried you'd changed your number. Why are you calling me? She could still remember the last time they'd spoken, just a few weeks after high school graduation. He'd sat across the table from her at an ice cream parlor while she downed a bowl of mint chocolate chip he hadn't even offered to pay for. He admitted something she'd suspected since showing him the pregnancy test barely a month earlier. He didn't want anything to do with the baby she carried. Their baby. No kid would mess up his football scholarship and dreams of the NFL. Then he'd walked away, the door slowly closing behind him as the tears poured down her face and pain sliced through her soul. I really need to talk to you, Dane said, pulling her back to the present. Now's not a good time. Not that there ever was a good time to talk to your ex. Please, I'm here. Sienna looked around, her heart rate spiking even higher. She'd forgiven Dane and moved on a while ago, but that didn't mean she wanted to see him. Where? In Philadelphia, at the Academy of Arts. Why? 
the teams at Penn State, our first game's tomorrow. You drove three hours from State College to see me? Sienna couldn't keep the incredulity out of her voice. Rode a bus, and Coach will kill me if he finds out. I only have a little more than an hour before I have to catch the bus back. It's got to be now. I really don't think we have anything to talk about. Sienna, please, I've come all this way. Sienna closed her eyes and sighed. She should tell him no and hang up. But he was here, on campus. The curiosity burned almost as much as the heat overtaking her chilled face. She'd drive herself crazy, wondering what he wanted. I can meet you at the student center in five minutes. Do you know where that is? Yes. See you soon. Dane was here. His timing was impeccable. She didn't have anything else on her schedule until playing at Dillard's that evening. She could give Dane 15 minutes. Maybe he just wanted to catch up, apologize for how he'd acted. Maybe something was wrong with someone in his family, or he had some sort of news he wanted to share. She'd never know until she talked to him. The noise of the student center instantly surrounded her. Leaves swirled in the closing glass doors, and students crowded the entryway. She'd hoped for this when choosing the meeting place. Sienna hooked her fingers through her backpack straps and started looking. She wasn't even sure what to look for. Had Dane kept his hair short or grown it long like Aaron's? Oh gosh, Aaron, what if he saw her with Dane? Maybe Dane wouldn't show. It'd be just like him to beg for a meeting, then stand her up. Someone tapped her on the shoulder. See? The voice was familiar, yet unfamiliar at the same time, deeper than she remembered. Her eyes automatically drifted to where Dane's eyes should be, but she ended up staring at his lips. His family had moved right after graduation. She always wondered if it was because of the scandalous pregnancy, and she hadn't seen him since. He'd grown over the last two years, filled out and bulked up. His massive shoulders strained the fabric of his t-shirt. But he looked so much the same, too. His sandy blonde hair was still trimmed short. His eyes were still a warm brown. See. Dane pulled her into a hug, his arms crushing her to him. She stiffened, jerking away. Hi, Dane. He frowned, a familiar furrow appearing in his brow, the one that said he was annoyed. He motioned to an open cluster of chairs along one wall. Can we sit? Only for a minute. I'm really busy today. They both took a seat. Dane rested his arms on his knees and leaned toward her, hands clasped. It's good to see you, he said. I like how you're doing your hair now. It looks good on you. Like complimenting her use of layers and a curling wand could make the last two years disappear. What are you doing here, Dane? You aren't going to make this easy for me, are you? Why would I? We used to mean a lot to each other. Yes, we did. A student passed perilously close to their little alcove, and she lowered her voice to a whisper. I loved you enough to make a choice I knew was wrong for me, and you broke my heart. When I told you I was pregnant, you told me that was my problem to deal with. You chose football over our child. He scrubbed a hand over the unfamiliar whiskers lining his jaw. Would it have changed anything if I'd been thrilled? Neither of us were ready to be parents. Are you trying to tell me if I'd stayed, we'd be raising a baby together right now? Toddler. He'll be two in December. How had she ever loved this man, who didn't even know how old their child was? But would we have kept him? A student with dreads passed by, and Sienna flinched until she realized the hair color was too light to be Aaron's. Of course not. Hunter belongs with... She almost said Kira and David, but stopped herself just in time. Dane didn't know who Hunter's parents were. He'd ignored all of the adoption agency's attempts to contact him. Sienna had ended up leaving his name off the birth certificate on the advice of her caseworker. When Dane hadn't tried to establish paternity, his parental rights had automatically been revoked. Hunter. Dane swallowed. It's a good name. 
He hadn't even known that much about their son. No, he'd chosen not to know anything. Can I see him? Sienna let out a disbelieving snort. Excuse me? Rumor has it you keep in contact with his family. Do you have a picture? His voice softened to the timber that had made her throw caution to the wind and give him everything. Please? She wouldn't be so easily swayed now. She weighed the pros and cons of showing a photo. Could any harm really come to Hunter by sharing a picture with Dane? No. The only reason to refuse was vindictive. She pulled out her phone and found a picture of Hunter from two weeks ago. Sienna had babysat the kids while Kira and David went on a date. Hunter was in her parents' backyard, laughing as he splashed in the plastic wading pool. His blue eyes sparkled and his face was pulled into a grin, two front teeth just showing. Sienna reluctantly handed her phone over to Dane. He stared at the photo, shoulders hunched and eyes impossible to read. Was he purposefully trying to hide his feelings? He's so handsome, Dane said finally, his voice rough like maybe he was trying not to cry. He handed the phone back to her. He's got your eyes and nose. And your chin, Sienna said. Yeah. What are you really doing here? You haven't so much as sent a text in more than two years. Dane folded his arms, his face hardening into a defensive frown. I want to be part of his life. No. See, just hear me out. Sienna stood, her hands trembling. No. You had the chance to be part of Hunter's life, to support me through the pregnancy, to help me choose a family for him. But you gave all that up for a football scholarship to Alabama State. We couldn't even track you down to sign the paperwork for the adoption. I know. I was immature and foolish and stupid. Hunter isn't someone whose life you can jump into and out of on a whim. He needs stability. I know. You aren't stable, and you never made me feel secure. His voice was practically a whisper. I know. Then I guess we're done here. Don't you want to know why I want to be a part of his life? Sienna froze, her backpack half slung over one shoulder. Okay, I'll bite. Why? Because I know I made a mistake and I want to make it right. Sienna closed her eyes, fighting tears. Two years ago, she wanted Dane to participate in the open adoption more than almost anything. But he hadn't. She'd vowed to never let Dane hurt their son the way he'd hurt her. But was that the right thing to do for Hunter? Why the change? Sienna asked. A few months ago, I was injured during practice. Nothing serious, just a sprained ankle that had me out for a few weeks. But it terrified me, made me realize I'm not invincible. His eyes searched hers, pleading for sympathy, but she kept her face stony. Dane sighed. I realize the NFL isn't a foregone conclusion. Football can disappear from my life just like that. He snapped his fingers. I started talking to my parents, and I even went back to church. They must be so proud. He rose, towering over her. I was wrong. I treated you badly, and I want to make it right. Clearly you get pictures and stuff and I'm guessing you see him in person since that's your parents' yard in the photo. I want that too. Then you should ask them yourself. Utah adoption law didn't make many provisions for birth parent rights, and Sienna's attorney had told her that even a written open adoption agreement was unenforceable if the Petersons changed their minds. Dane and Sienna were ultimately at the mercy of Kira and David. I don't have their information, Dane said. You have the name of the adoption agency. Contact them through a caseworker. Dane gave a bitter laugh. I don't have a chance without you. If I send a letter, they'll throw it away without a second thought. But if you tell them, I'll have a real shot. What makes you think they'll listen to me? I know you well enough to know that maintaining a relationship with Hunter and his family is your top priority. 
anger seethed through Sienna, making her knees shake. You're a coward, Dane. You were a coward then and you're a coward now. I am not your go-between. If you really care about Hunter, you'll forget your stupid pride and send a letter through the agency. At least let them know I'm interested. Sienna shrugged into her backpack, avoiding his eyes. I really have to go. I'll call you. Don't bother. She called over her shoulder, and then she stormed away. Chapter 6 Sienna veered away from the student center and trudged to the music hall in a daze. She needed a piano to process this. Never in a million years had she imagined Dane would show up. In the practice room, she tried to work on her Juilliard pieces, but her concentration was shot. If not for Dane, she'd be sitting in a practice room at Juilliard right now. She had been accepted, had her dream within reach, but she had been due too close to the end of the semester and had been terrified to deal with all the doctor's appointments and pregnancy worries without her mom. Friends had told her she was crazy. Maybe she wouldn't go into labor until after finals. But Sienna had prayed about it and knew she needed to stay in Utah until Hunter's birth. If she hadn't stayed in Utah, she never would have found Kira and David. She hit another wrong note on the Chopin audition piece and let out a frustrated yell. She slammed her hands down hard on the keys, the jarring notes zinging through her fingers. She shouldn't let Dane destroy her practice time, time she desperately needed to prepare for Juilliard. Her pre-audition tape was due in only two short months. She switched from Chopin to one of Beethoven's sonatas and ran it through five times, despite the messy finger placement and frequent mistakes. Only after she had played every audition piece at least three times did she allow herself to shift over to Hunter's lullaby. But even the familiar melody couldn't soothe her frazzled nerves. She hit the notes with too much force, and the staccato sound rung off the walls in the tiny practice room. As she played, the rush of emotions from two years earlier came flooding back. She vividly remembered the betrayal she had felt, the other desertion that had overwhelmed her. The notes grew angry and harsh, not the lullaby, but something jarring and ugly. Sienna pulled the fall board over the keys and rested her head against it, breathing heavily. She had to tell Kira. Dane might not try to contact them, probably wouldn't for a few weeks at the very least, but she owed the Petersons a heads up, even if she owed Dane nothing. Sienna's phone rang, skittering along the top of the piano. Liv. Hey, Sienna said. Hey, S, are you home yet? No, I'm still practicing. And not very well. Stupid Dane. She couldn't afford to waste a minute of practice time with the auditions fast approaching. Whoa, what's wrong? You sound mad. Sienna clenched her teeth, trying to push back the anger. Dane is what's up. You're kidding. Baby Daddy Dane? In the flesh. He called and he said he was here and wanted to meet. Tell me everything. Sienna spilled the whole story, tracing the grains of wood on the piano. It just threw me off, she finished. Seeing him was the last thing I expected today. Do you want to get back together with him? Sienna snorted. Definitely not. I don't ever want to see him again. And that's part of the problem. If Kira and David let him back in Hunter's life, he's back in mine. So what are you going to do? I have to tell Kira. It's her decision to make. Sienna sighed. She'd call Kira in a few days, after she'd had a chance to process this alone. Sorry to steal the conversation. What did you need? Oh, Eldon said he was having a package delivered. I'm hoping it's day lilies. I told him how much I love those. I thought if you were home, you could bring them inside. I'm heading there now for an hour or so before I leave for Dillard's. I'll text you a picture of the flowers. You're the best! Oh, the director's calling for me. Later. The phone clicked before Sienna could say goodbye, but that was Liv. Sienna left the music hall feeling like she had wasted the afternoon. 
stupid Dane. Now she hadn't picked pieces for the Christmas recital or made strides on her Juilliard pieces. Ignorant, selfish, unconscionable, she muttered, kicking at a pile of leaves. Hey, Sienna. She froze, her foot poised to kick again. Aaron smiled down at her, looking dashing in a leather jacket with a backpack slung casually over one shoulder. Well, she felt like an idiot. Hey. Is everything okay? Oh, that. I'm fine. Just had a rough day. Man, I'm sorry. Anything I can do? I wish. Thanks for the offer, though. Looks like you're heading home. Mind if I walk with you? Of course not. Aaron fell into step beside her, and they walked in silence for almost a block. I feel like an idiot. Sienna stared at her shoes, unwilling to look him in the eye. I swear I'm not an angry person. Everyone has bad days. He gently bumped his shoulder against hers. I'm a pretty good listener. For just a moment, she considered telling him the whole story. About Dane. About Hunter. About the adoption but she quickly dismissed the idea. She doubted he'd react well to the news, and right now she could really use a friend. She opted for a version of the truth. My high school boyfriend showed up and wanted to talk. Wow, that's unexpected. That was the understatement of the century. You're telling me. Does he live close by? No, he's at Alabama State on a football scholarship. I haven't seen him since just after graduation. What's he doing in Philadelphia? I guess they're playing Penn State tomorrow. I don't really follow football. Aaron nodded, shoving his hands in his pockets. That's a pretty long drive just to talk to an ex-girlfriend. He must have had something important to say. Just that he wanted to be a part of their son's life. Things ended badly between us, and he wanted to hash it out. Makes sense but she could see the skepticism in his eyes. Who does that after two years, he seemed to ask. Sienna knew her explanation was flimsy, but she was too on edge to come up with something better. It threw me for a loop. I wasn't exactly thrilled to see him. Aaron's shoulders relaxed. Sienna couldn't help the smile that spread across her face at his obvious relief. He totally had a crush on her, and she couldn't say she was sorry. Hey, don't worry about it, Aaron said. I'd be distracted too after something like that. Were you guys together for very long? Most of our senior year. I wish I could say it was good to see him again, but I could have done without the visit. That stinks. I'm sorry. She shrugged. Not your fault. When unpleasant things happen to me, I find that a distraction helps me forget about the bad thing. Oh, he was definitely flirting now. Anticipation zinged up her spine. Two could play at this game. What kind of a distraction? Let's hang out this weekend. I'm a pretty fun guy. Sienna twisted a lock of hair around her finger, grinning. Are you asking me out? I think the phrase I used was hang out. But hey, if you want to call it a date, I'm not going to protest. Sienna laughed, already feeling lighter. She probably shouldn't want to call it a date, but she did. Aaron had found Jesus while still in high school, going against his family's wishes. He attended church every week. When she had told him about her rule, he hadn't laughed, but instead invited others to their study group so she'd feel more comfortable. That had to mean something. I'm very interested in you, Sienna. She couldn't stop staring at Aaron. His eyes looked more green than hazel today and sparkled with mischief. She should tell him they were better off as friends and stick with Jared. I'm a pretty difficult girl to date. Not hanging out alone in your apartment is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm not looking for a fling. The rules don't bother me. Sienna brushed a strand of hair out of her face, feeling suddenly shy. If you're asking me on a date, then the answer's yes. If you're asking me to hang out, then I'm busy. It's definitely a date then. Saturday night? 
Sure, Sienna said, biting her lip to hold back the embarrassingly big smile fighting for release. They'd reached the corner between their two apartment buildings, and she found that she didn't want to go home. See, I'm distracting you already, Aaron said. You're very good, Sienna agreed. She had almost managed to forget about Dane's unwelcome visit. Saturday, then. I'll pick you up at seven. I'll be ready. Cool, Aaron said. Meet you on the corner tomorrow morning at 7.30? Absolutely. Aaron nodded and waved, then headed toward his apartment building. A date. With Aaron. Sienna's toes tingled. It had been a long time since she had gone out with someone who gave her this many butterflies. She couldn't wait. Chapter 7 Aaron had asked her out. Sienna barely registered the notes she hit, much less the shoppers passing by the piano. She'd played the sonata so many times she could probably play it in her sleep, which was a good thing, because all she could think about was Aaron. Lucky for Sienna, her set list at Dillard's was easy, even if it sounded complicated and it required little to no concentration. Finally, nine o'clock rolled around. The floor had been practically empty for the past hour, and she just wanted to go home and dream about Aaron. She grabbed her purse from the employee locker and swiped her phone awake. One text. Her hands shook as she opened it. Had Aaron been thinking about her too? But it wasn't Aaron. It was Jared. Sorry I haven't texted. Major crisis at work, but it's fixed now. Smiley face. There's a motivational speaker speaking at church tomorrow. Want to go? I'll feed you first. Sienna headed to the bus stop without replying. There was no reason to tell Jared no. In fact, she had already said yes at church on Sunday. She liked Jared. He was exactly the kind of guy she needed. Strong, faithful, loyal. But she also really liked Aaron. The more she learned about him, the more she wanted to know. She could almost hear what Liv would say if they were having this conversation. You can date two guys at once, Sienna. It's not like you're exclusive with either of them. Maybe, after one date with Aaron, she would go running in the opposite direction, straight back to Jared. It could happen. When the bus arrived, Sienna showed her pass and found a seat, pulling out her phone. Oh no, glad things are better with work. I'd love to go. What time? The response was almost immediate. What time are you out of class? I've got a practice room scheduled until four. Perfect. Can I pick you up at five? Sure. Smiley face. The next evening, Sienna got ready for her date with Jared. She chose a yellow maxi skirt and navy top that she'd always loved. She was excited to see Jared. Really, she was. But the butterflies of their first date were absent, and it was harder than she'd anticipated to push Aaron out of her mind. It didn't help matters that she was still trying to figure out how to tell Kira and David about Dane's visit. Sienna unplugged her curling wand and was applying lip gloss when the knock came at the door. She gave her lips one last swipe. Finally, a quiver of nerves. That was how she should feel when going on a date with a guy as great as Jared. She flung open the door, smiling as she took in his appearance. He'd gone more casual for the evening, leaving his suit coat at home and wearing a light blue button-down shirt instead of his usual white. There was no denying it. Jared was attractive in a clean-cut boy-next-door kind of way. She couldn't compare him to Aaron's edgy bad boy appearance that never failed to make her mouth go dry. They were too different. Hi, Sienna said, giving Jared a hug. Wow. He pulled her close and she breathed in the scent of laundry detergent. You look amazing. She couldn't stop herself from looking him up and down again. Jared grinned knowingly and she blushed. Thanks, she said. You look great, too. Come in, I just need to grab my purse and then we can go. Jared stepped inside, glancing around the apartment. Still looks the same. 
it would appear not much has changed in the last five weeks. He gave her a meaningful glance. Sienna grabbed her purse and slung it over her shoulder. Maybe nothing had changed for him, but it felt like something might have changed for her. What did you think would change? I hoped nothing, but five weeks is a long time, and I dropped the ball while you were gone. I'm really sorry about that. What do you mean? I should have texted more. I don't want you to ever worry that you're not a priority for me. You are, and I'm sorry my actions said otherwise. Sienna fiddled with the strap of her purse. Was he saying this because he felt bad about the last month, or because Aaron had made him nervous? You were busy with work. I understand. I could have still made time for you. I will in the future. Let's consider tonight a fresh start, then. Like a do-over? His eyes were disappointed, and he shoved his hands in his pockets. I think that's best. Sienna took his hand, giving him a tentative smile. Ready to go? The door swung open. Liv walked in, wearing yoga pants and a baggy tee. Her hair was pinned tightly to her head, and dramatic black liner emphasized her eyes. You got the part, Sienna said, giving her roommate a hug. Liv only wore her hair like that when getting fitted for a wig, and the eye makeup looked Egyptian. Liv rolled her eyes. Of course, I just got fitted for my costumes. Congrats, you'll make a great Amneris. You remember Jared, don't you? Liv folded her arms, giving Jared an appraising look. Sure I do. Nice to see you again, Liv, he said. How's Craig doing? We're over. Liv waved a hand through the air. I met a new man, and I do mean man. He's 39, Sienna said. Jared coughed, his eyebrows shooting up. Uh, okay. Don't worry, he has the body of a much younger man, Liv said. Jared's face flamed red. Sienna grabbed him by the arm and pushed him outside. Have a good night, Liv, she called and shut the door. Wow, Jared said. 39? Yeah, Liv keeps asking me to meet Eldon, but I'm a little scared. And I used to think that the eight years between us was a big deal. Does it still bother you? I hardly think about it anymore. You're very mature. Having a baby at 18 did that to a person. Jared opened the door to a silver Honda Sienna didn't recognize. She slid inside, the smell of new car making her sigh happily. Sometimes it was really nice to date an older man, someone who had already done the college thing and established his career. Jared pushed a button and the engine purred to life. I love the new ride. Sienna ran her hands along the leather seats. The sunroof would be great in the summer, and the seat warmers luxurious in the winter. When did you get it? The tips of Jared's ears reddened. About three weeks ago. It was probably frivolous to get all the extras, but I was so sick of driving an old clunker. I think it's a well-deserved treat. You work really hard. It was one of the things she admired about Jared. At the restaurant, they were quickly seated. They fell silent as they perused the menus. What are you going to order? Sienna asked. I love their prime rib, but the slow-roasted pork and barbecue chicken is really good as well. Hmm. Her stomach growled in anticipation. Hi, my name is Tamison. I'll be your server today. Sienna glanced up, then did a double take. The waitress was young, probably close to Sienna's own age. She wore modest black pants and a shirt that stretched over her swollen stomach. She had to be close to eight months pregnant. Sienna's eyes flicked to the girl's ring finger. Bear. Hi, Tamison. Jared gave her a winning smile. Tamison smiled too, and her whole face lightened. Her shoulders relaxed at his easy conversational tone. She placed drink coasters in front of them. Have you dined with us before? Yes, but we'd love to hear the specials, Jared said. 
Tamison rattled them off and said, I'll give you two a few minutes to decide. What was her situation? Was Tamison destined to be a single mother, or were her fingers too swollen from pregnancy to wear her ring? She returned a few minutes later, notepad in hand. Are you folks ready? Tamison asked. I'll have the barbecue chicken with a loaded baked potato, Sienna said. Tamison nodded, scribbling down the order and taking Sienna's menu. And for you? She asked Jared. I'm going to stick to my tried and true favorite, the prime rib, he said. That's my boyfriend's favorite, too, Tamison said. I'm partial to the pulled pork myself. Sides? Jared rattled off the rest of his order, but Sienna was fixated on the word boyfriend. So Tamison wasn't married. Sienna hoped Tamison's boyfriend proved more compassionate and loving than Dane had been. Jared and Sienna kept up an easy conversation throughout dinner, catching up on the last month. Tamison was an excellent server, filling their glasses frequently and remaining attentive to their needs. But Sienna noticed the way she sometimes shifted from foot to foot with a hand on her back, the slight grimace when she thought no one was looking. Sienna well remembered those last days of pregnancy when she had been so uncomfortable even sleeping was a chore, and Sienna hadn't had a job. Tamison brought the check and Jared handed her his card. Soon she was back with the receipt. Thanks for dining with us, she said, grabbing a few mints out of her apron pocket and setting them on top of the billfold holding the receipt. Have a good night. Sienna grabbed a mint and unwrapped it. Jared leaned over the receipt, writing in the tip. Sienna wasn't trying to watch, but her eyes widened when she saw him write $100. That was more than double the cost of their meal. He quickly signed his name and shut the billfold, obviously not wanting her to see. In the car, Sienna said, Thanks again for dinner. Thanks for coming with me, Jared said. What you did back there was really nice. What do you mean? The tip. You gave her a hundred bucks. Jared's ears turned red. You weren't supposed to see that. But I did. It was kind and thoughtful, and I'm sure she could use the money. She'll probably be without a paycheck for at least a few weeks once the baby comes. I wanted to do what I could to help. Sienna's heart warmed. He was so kind and gentle. When he'd looked at Tamison, he hadn't seen an unwed mother, but a child of God in need of help. If they kept dating and Sienna told him about Hunter, would he treat her with the same compassion? After tonight, she thought he probably would. She couldn't say the same for Aaron. The motivational speaker was excellent and his life story powerful. Sienna teared up multiple times as the speaker talked about turning away from drugs and relying on the Lord. Sienna hadn't found Jesus in quite the same way, but she understood what it felt like to sin and feel true remorse. What a remarkable man, Jared said as they left church. And a remarkable story. Sienna waited until they were both in the car before she continued speaking. Do you think he can do it? Turn away from his past? I think he already has. Pasts had a tendency to follow a person, no matter how much that person changed. But do you think his past defines him? One day when he finds a spouse, is it going to come between them? Jared started the car. Not if she's the right woman. She won't judge him. I don't think it's that black and white. You can't escape from your past. No, but it doesn't have to define your future. That's not always a choice we get to make. Jared raised an eyebrow. Is there something I should be worried about? Sienna looked away. We all have pasts. Yes, but I won't judge my future wife for hers. Hypothetically, what if something from his past comes back to haunt them? Like what? I don't know. What if one day he finds out he contracted AIDS from a dirty needle? Jared shot Sienna a sideways look, his grip tight on the steering wheel. 
She was making him nervous, but his answers felt significant. Would Jared really react to her teen pregnancy the way she thought he would? Are you trying to tell me you have AIDS? His tone fell just short of teasing. Sienna burst out laughing. The tension of the moment was too much. No, I've never done drugs. Jared's grip on the wheel relaxed. Me neither. If something from his past comes up, then they'll deal with it. If you love someone enough, nothing else matters. You can work through the hard things. Really? Jared reached for her hand and squeezed. Really? You know you can tell me anything, right? He was such a good man. Her heart swelled with affection, and she had the sudden urge to hug him. I know. Are you trying to tell me something now? Sienna bit her lip. No, at least not yet. Jared pulled into her parking lot and turned to face her. You're scaring me. We all have passed, Jared, but I promise I've never done drugs or been arrested and I haven't contracted some communicable disease. He gave her a searching look, then nodded. I trust you. They held hands as they walked up the stairs to her apartment. She felt safe and secure, like she could tell Jared anything and he'd accept her anyway. But it was too soon to tell him about Hunter. Maybe one day. They paused outside her door and Sienna looked up into his soulful eyes. Thanks for taking me out tonight. I had a great time. Me too, Jared said. Can I take you out again soon? I'd like that. I'm going to prove that you can trust me. I want to get to know you, all of you, secrets and all. And then Jared leaned down. He paused, waiting for Sienna to protest. She didn't, aching for the acceptance he promised. Jared covered her lips with his own. They were firmer than she had expected them to be, but pleasant. Sienna leaned into him, the kiss comforting and sweet. There weren't fireworks, but maybe that could come with time. She wanted what Jared was offering, unconditional love, acceptance, and stability. He kept it chaste, pulling away after only a moment. Her lips felt cold, and while the kiss had been pleasant, she didn't long for another. Aaron's face flashed in her mind. She had no doubt what his kisses would do to her. But maybe fireworks weren't everything. She had learned that all too well with Dane. Jared was good at his core. He'd been understanding and sweet, and he deserved the same respect in return. Sienna rested a hand on his chest. I think I should tell you something. A worry line furrowed his brow. Okay. Aaron asked me out and I said yes. We're going out on Saturday. Jared took a step back and hurt flashed across his face. Oh. Sienna took a deep breath, forcing herself to continue. I like you, a lot. But I like Aaron, too. I guess it's my own fault for not being more proactive while you were away. I'm sorry. I didn't want to hide it from you, especially now. Jared covered Sienna's hand with his own, trapping it against his chest. I don't want you to hide anything from me. So you'll go on a few dates with the new guy. No big deal. I'll win you over soon enough. Sienna laughed. I really did have a good time tonight. He leaned forward, giving her another brief kiss. Me too. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Good night, Sienna. Night, Sienna whispered as he walked away. She unlocked her apartment door and slipped inside. Maybe she had been wrong to accept Aaron's date. She had a history with Jared. But tonight's kiss had proved that while she enjoyed his company, he didn't excite her the way she wanted her husband to. At least, not yet. Just being in the same room with Aaron ignited her far more than Jared's chaste kisses. She was already anticipating Saturday. Chapter 8 
The pleasant feelings from her date with Jared didn't linger long. Dane wouldn't stop calling. In the 48 hours since he'd reappeared in her life, he'd called three times. Sienna knew she couldn't put off calling Kira any longer. She found a quiet spot in the commons between classes and leaned against a tree, dread pooling in her stomach. Three students tossed around a football in the middle of the grass and two more studied under a tree. No one was close enough to overhear her conversation. Stupid Dane. She'd much rather spend the next 15 minutes fantasizing about Aaron. The phone only rang once before Kira picked up. Hey, Sienna said, sliding the zipper up and down her jacket with nervous energy. How's it going? Hey, Sienna, this is a nice surprise. Kira's voice was thick, like she'd recently been crying. How are classes? Sienna straightened, dropping the zipper. Classes are fine. How are the kids? Missing you like crazy. Hunter's asleep right now and Sophie's at school, but they're good. A sniff made its way through the line, definitely crying. Kira, what's wrong? It's Nana. Kira no longer seemed to be trying to hide the tears. She's in the hospital. I'm so worried. Sienna's heart dropped. Not Nana, who had welcomed her into the family with open arms. Sienna could still remember meeting Nana at a family barbecue shortly after the adoption was finalized. Sienna had clutched her purse like a shield, nauseous with nerves. Yes, Kira and David had welcomed her into their lives and their home, but would their extended family resent her presence, judge her for her choice? Nana had held out her arthritic, age-spotted hands and pulled Sienna into a hug. Eyes glistening with tears, she declared Sienna an angel the entire family loved with all their hearts. In that moment, Sienna had known everything would be okay. In the two years since, she had come to consider Nana a surrogate grandmother. What's wrong with Nana? Sienna asked. Pneumonia. The doctors are very worried. I'm so sorry. Sienna blinked back tears. Nana was 90 years old. At her age, pneumonia was practically a death sentence. We're all praying for her, Kira said. Right now, that's all we can do. Give her my love. I wish I could be there. Me too. She loves you so much. Kira sniffed again. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail the conversation. Did you call for a particular reason? She couldn't tell Kira about Dane. Not now with everything else Kira had to worry about. No, just to check in, Sienna said. I'll let you go. Give the kids a kiss from me. She'd tell Kira about Dane in a few days, when things were less uncertain with Nana. For now, she'd cross her fingers that he'd leave the Petersons alone. Sienna fidgeted with the tie on her wrap shirt, appraising herself in the full-length mirror on her closet door. Should she wear a dress? Jeans might be too casual. It would have been nice if Aaron had told her where they were going. She really didn't like surprises, like Dane showing up unexpectedly. She still hadn't figured out when and how to tell Kira. She took a deep breath, pushing it out of her mind. Tonight, she would focus on Aaron. Liv leaned against the doorframe, her face cat-like with heavy makeup from rehearsal. Stop obsessing, you look fabulous. Why can't guys be specific? Will you go out with me and this is the appropriate dress code for a date? How hard is that? Liv laughed. I think what you're wearing is fine. Maybe I should wear the blue shirt. Stop, you're not changing again. You look great. Sienna turned back to the mirror. The green wrap shirt emphasized the smallest part of her waist, and the jeans were her favorite pair because they fit like a glove. She had chosen the outfit because it made her feel both comfortable and attractive. Black boots added four inches to her height. Now she'd only be a couple of inches shorter than Aaron. Loose blonde curls fell around her shoulders, and she had spent more time on her makeup than usual. 
Maybe she'd put on too much. Are you sure I look okay? It's just a date, S. Yeah, but if it goes poorly, I still have to see him all semester. We're in that study group, and we walk to class together, and we'll see each other at church on Sundays. She blew out a breath. This was a bad idea. It's not that much different with Jared. You still have to see him at church if you dump him for Aaron. Thanks. I feel so much better now. The doorbell rang, echoing through the tiny apartment. Liv pushed away from the doorframe. Are you getting that, or am I? You want to meet him, don't you? Liv gave a wicked smile. Of course. Be nice. Liv followed her to the door. I'm always nice to your dates. Try and relax, okay? Have fun. Fun. Sienna nearly laughed. What a concept. Having a baby at 18 tended to change one's perception of fun. But it didn't have to define her future. Yes, she'd had a baby at 18, but Hunter wasn't something she could ever regret. The circumstances surrounding his conception, yes, but not him. Sienna opened the door and her mouth went dry. Aaron wore a button-down shirt with the sleeves rolled up nearly to his elbows and jeans that hung perfectly on his frame. His dreads were pulled back in a half ponytail that was sexy in a rock star kind of way. Hi, she breathed, her throat constricting around the one word. You look amazing. Aaron held out a long, single-stemmed rose. This is for you. Sienna took the rose, unable to stop smiling. It's beautiful. Very nice touch, Liv said. She nudged Sienna aside and held out a hand. Hi, I'm Liv, Sienna's roommate. Nice to meet you, Aaron said, giving her a firm shake. You as well. Aren't you heading to practice, Liv? Sienna said, raising an eyebrow and hoping Liv would take the hint. Right. Have fun tonight, kids. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. She stepped around Aaron, then fanned her face, mouthing, Oh my gosh. Sienna bit her lip, trying not to smile. Come in, Sienna said to Aaron. I'll put this in a vase and we can go. Aaron took one step over the threshold. He gave her a meaningful look, then pushed the door open another inch. Warm tingles cascaded over Sienna. He remembered her rule about being alone in an apartment with a boy. She cut off the bottom of the rose stem and placed it in a vase. Beautiful. I'm ready to go. They talked about school on the walk to his car. Aaron held open her door just like he had at church, but this time it felt different, more intimate. Aaron's car growled, a far cry from the purr of Jared's new ride. But the worn fabric seats looked freshly vacuumed and the dashboard was free of dust. He'd cleaned for her. Adorable. Where are we going? Sienna asked. Aaron flashed her a grin. Dinner first. I have a surprise for you. Ugh. Hopefully it wouldn't be a surprise she'd have to pretend to enjoy. Tell me more about yourself, Aaron said. You mentioned you worked a lot on weekends? Yes, I freelance for events, mostly wedding receptions, but I also play for a few hours a week at Dillard's. Ooh, fancy. Sienna laughed, letting herself relax. This was Aaron. No surprise could be bad if she was with him. Hardly. A kid bangs on the keys at least once a week, and then his mom drags him away kicking and screaming. Try playing through that. I like wedding receptions best. No one bugs me, the music is easy and pretty, and the money's usually good. It must be nice to set your own schedule. It's perfect with school. What about you? Do you work? Yeah, I actually work for Pastor Tanner's son, Evan. He owns an online startup company for sportswear. I do all the graphic design for their website, brochures, that sort of thing. It pays the bills and puts a little money in my pocket. He pulled into the parking lot of a Japanese restaurant that Sienna had been dying to try. If this was his surprise, she'd have no problem acting thrilled. I hope you like Japanese, 
Aaron said. I love it. Good, because this dining experience is so cool. The scent of grilled shrimp mixed with the spicy sweet tang of soy sauce and garlic had Sienna's mouth instantly watering. Instead of tables or booths, the seating area held teriyaki grills with ten bar stools each. What is this? Sienna asked, confused. Aaron grinned. It's awesome is what it is. Dinner and a show. The chef cooks your food right in front of you and does all sorts of cool tricks. The hostess seated them at a grill with a family of four. A little boy sat in a high chair and a baby slept peacefully in her carrier. Hi, the boy said, bouncing in his chair. His curly black hair fell into his eyes, making Sienna smile. Hunter's hair did that too when it was time for a cut. Hi, Aaron said. What's your name? The kid let out a stream of gibberish that had Sienna aching for Hunter. Wow, that's a cool name, Aaron said. His name is Carter, the woman said. Sorry, he loves talking to new people. I don't mind, Aaron said. Carter held up a car, then threw it at Aaron. He caught it mid-air, and Carter laughed. Carter, the mother said, her face turning pink. We don't throw our toys. I am so sorry. Don't worry about it, Aaron said. He made the sound of a horn, driving the car back to Carter. Sienna's heart thudded in her chest. She'd been attracted to Aaron before, but now he was off the charts adorable. A few minutes after they placed their orders, an Asian man in a red chef's hat wheeled out a cart piled with food. He grabbed a bottle and squirted oil on the grill, then dumped a bowl of chicken on it and started adding spices. Sienna's nerves disappeared as she watched in fascination. Knives flashed in the light as he chopped and diced vegetables, managing to keep an eye on multiple meals simultaneously. Sienna gasped as he built a volcano out of onions and lit it on fire. The flames warmed her cheeks and she laughed. Across the table, Carter clapped in delight. Definitely a good surprise. She should have tried this restaurant a long time ago. The chef dumped a bowl of shrimp on the grill and added some spices. This is my favorite part, Aaron whispered, his breath making her shiver. A few minutes later, the chef pointed his spatula at Aaron, who nodded, his eyes sparkling. The chef scooped up a piece of shrimp, bounced it on his spatula, then tossed it into the air. Aaron rose out of his seat and leaned to the left, then caught the shrimp between his teeth. Sienna clapped loudly while Carter jabbered. You? The chef said, pointing at Sienna. She nodded, her stomach swirling with anticipation and nerves. The chef bounced the shrimp on a spatula. It sailed through the air and she rose to catch it. She opened her mouth wide and felt the shrimp graze her tongue. Triumph surged in her veins, but the shrimp kept going, lodging in the back of her throat. Sienna gagged and leaned forward. She coughed, trying to force the shrimp back up. Eyes watering, she struggled to get air past the food. Her vision tunneled as panic set in. A hand landed on her back with a solid thud. She coughed again, and the shrimp flew back into her mouth. Sienna grabbed her napkin and spit the shrimp into it, gasping. Are you okay? Aaron asked. He handed her a glass of water, eyes dark with concern. I'm fine, she wheezed. Oh gosh, she had never been so humiliated in her life. She peeked at the family, Carter pointing at her while his parents shushed him. You okay? The chef asked in broken English. Sienna nodded. Try again? No, she and Aaron said at the same time. The chef nodded and pointed at the father of the young family, tossing him a shrimp. Are you really all right? Aaron asked, keeping his voice low. Sienna put her hands to her cheeks, feeling their heat. I might die of embarrassment, but I'm fine. He wrapped an arm around her shoulders, pulling her against him. You scared me. Just my lack of shrimp-catching prowess showing through. Trust me, you aren't the only one. I had it happen to me once, too. My sister had to give me the Heimlich. 
Sienna laughed, her embarrassment slipping away. Aaron made everything so easy. How old were you? About twelve. My mom was screaming hysterically, and the chef was so nervous he caught his jacket on fire while leaning across the grill to help. And somehow, that did make Sienna feel better about the whole thing. The chef portioned the food onto their plates, then cleaned the grill and left them to eat. Sienna took a tentative bite of her food, and flavor exploded in her mouth. She closed her eyes in pleasure. Still, she was careful to chew thoroughly before swallowing. No way was she allowing any more mishaps on this date. How is it? Aaron asked, motioning to her plate. Delicious. I even love the show, except the part where I almost died, literally from choking and figuratively from embarrassment. Aaron chuckled, and the sound sent shivers up her arms. I'm glad you didn't die, literally or figuratively. You were a good sport. Thanks for taking me out. It's been a while since I've gone anywhere this fancy. Come on, a pretty girl like you must get asked out all the time. I do get asked out. I just turn them down a lot. Aaron raised an eyebrow. Why? She didn't have to be embarrassed. If Aaron didn't understand, then he wasn't the guy for her. I set some pretty strict dating standards for myself before moving here. Most of the guys don't measure up. I'm glad I made the cut. I've wanted to ask you out since the day we met. Sienna's scalp tingled, and she couldn't stop from blushing. Really? Absolutely. You're beautiful, funny, and intelligent. What's not to like? She couldn't stop the smile from spreading across her face. Aaron paid for dinner, and they got back in his car. Thanks for dinner, Sienna said. I really did enjoy it, choking aside. It was a good surprise. Oh, that's not the surprise. It's not? Nope. Are you going to tell me what it is? Aaron winked. You'll see soon enough. They talked and laughed as they drove through Philadelphia. Sienna tried to figure out where they were going, but nothing stood out to her. Her nerves had mostly dissipated, though. The restaurant had turned out to be a good surprise. Surely this would, too. Aaron pulled up in front of a building with a low roof and no windows. A giant sign flashed on the front. Club Pen. Dancing, drinking, music. Sienna's stomach dropped. A cluster of young college students in very little clothing smoked outside the entrance to the nightclub. Maybe Aaron wasn't the good boy she wanted to believe he was. Chapter 9 Sienna closed her eyes, the flashing lights of the sign shining through her eyelids, and prayed she wasn't wrong again. Dane had seemed like a good guy at first, too. He'd gone to church every week and said all the right things, but then he had started taking her to questionable parties and hanging out with guys that made her uncomfortable. Before she knew it, she was staring at a positive pregnancy test. Aaron grabbed her hand. We're not here to dance. This is where my roommate works. An awesome band is playing that I think you're going to love, and he helped me get tickets. The keyboardist is fantastic. A concert? Sienna asked. That didn't sound so bad. It sounded great, actually. Aaron seemed to have put a lot of thought into this date. I've been following their music for about a year. They're still relatively unknown, but they'll be big one day. Sounds great. Sienna breathed in, slow and even. Aaron wasn't Dane, and he wasn't bringing her here for anything other than the concert. She had to trust him, at least a little. Aaron entwined his fingers with hers, scrambling her brain until she couldn't remember what had worried her. Is this okay? He asked, a half grin on his temptingly full lips. She nodded shyly. It was more than okay. Aaron showed their tickets and IDs to the bouncer, and they were led inside the club. Loud music and laughter instantly surrounded them. Sienna blinked, letting her eyes adjust to the dimly lit interior. The air was hazy with smoke, and heavy bass notes pulsed through the floor. 
Someone bumped into Sienna, then mumbled a slurred apology. Sienna shrank against Aaron, the atmosphere reminding her all too much of the raucous parties Dane had taken her to. One had even been broken up by the police. She had fled through an open window, heart pounding as she chased Dane into the shadows. The dance floor was packed and the bar surrounded. Aaron stuck to the fringes, navigating the path of least resistance. He showed their tickets to a man who let them into a roped-off area just in front of the stage. It was standing room only, but less crowded than the rest of the club. Aaron led them to a prime spot near the front of the stage. Excitement crowded out her nerves. She couldn't wait to hear the music. Aaron leaned close, speaking into her ear. The band's only been together for about two years. I can't believe they haven't been discovered. They're unlike any other band. She stared up at him, caught by the sudden urge to run her fingers through his hair. You really love music, don't you? I do. We have that in common. She couldn't think of anything she really had in common with Jared, aside from a similar set of values. Would that be enough to build a life together? The lights went up and the band started playing. Sienna's jaw dropped. They were definitely a rock band, but she heard the classical music influences in the undertones of their songs. It added a richness and depth to the music that she instantly loved. Aaron had excellent taste in music. Straight-laced Jared would never take her on a date like this. Aaron wrapped one arm loosely around her shoulder while keeping his gaze fixed on the band. The stage lights illuminated his profile, making his nose and lips more prominent. What would it be like to kiss him? Her entire body lit on fire just at the thought. Sienna forgot about the cigarette smoke and drunken laughter of the club as the band played song after song. Her legs ached from standing so long in heels, but she didn't care. The keyboardist played with an emotion and passion Sienna had worked tirelessly to produce. Megan, one of her piano teachers in Utah, had helped Sienna a lot with blending emotion and technique, but Sienna couldn't hold a candle to the keyboardist. Maybe one day, if Juilliard accepted her back, she knew her professors could help. Nearly two hours after the concert began, the band took their final bows. Sienna clapped along with the rest of the audience. A soft smile turned up Aaron's lips as he watched her. He raised an eyebrow as though to say, well, what did you think? Sienna smiled and clapped even harder, nodding enthusiastically. The crowd dispersed, and he tugged her toward the exit. The dance floor had grown wilder during the concert. Sweat and perfume mixed together, almost overpowering the scent of cigarette smoke. Sienna squeezed herself close to Aaron, craving the security he offered. Raised voices drew her attention. A man's face was darkened in anger and he screamed at a shorter man. The shorter man took a step backward, nearly bumping into Sienna. Aaron's arm tightened around her shoulder, pulling her backward. The taller man swore, swinging for the shorter man who stumbled. He crashed backward, knocking the wind out of Sienna. She hit the ground hard, her rear end stinging with the impact, and the shorter man sprawled on top of her. Aaron yanked the man off Sienna before she'd even regained her breath. The taller man loomed over the shorter one, dragging him to his feet. Aaron's arms were around Sienna in an instant, pulling her up and holding her close. Are you okay? he yelled, hustling her away from the fighting men. Sienna took two steps for every one of his, struggling to keep up. I'm fine. He didn't hurt you. I don't think so. What a bunch of idiots. I'm so sorry. They pushed through the exit, the crowd spilling out around them. Cool September air blasted Sienna in the face, and she sucked it in. His hands brushed over her neck and shoulders, sending warm shivers through her entire being. Are you sure you're okay? Seriously, I'm fine. Aaron, that band was amazing. He grinned, dropping his hands. I knew you'd love them. I almost didn't get tickets when I found out the venue, but I had to introduce you to their music. I'm so glad you did. It's obvious they've studied classical music extensively. 
There was definitely a little Vivaldi in some of their songs, and I swear I heard a nod to Bach in the last one. They're incredibly talented, just like you promised. They got into the car and pulled out of the crowded parking lot. I love their ballads the best, Aaron said. It might not be manly of me to admit it, but they're powerful. It's not just the music. It's the lyrics, too. They've got the total package. How are they not double platinum by now? I know. Record labels are crazy not to sign them on the spot. They continued discussing the concert and were almost home when Sienna's cell phone beeped, indicating a text message. Sorry, I thought I put my phone on silent. Sienna pushed the button on the side of her phone, making sure the volume went down to vibrate. You can get that if you need to, Aaron said. No way. It can wait until the end of our date. Seriously, I won't be offended. He gave her a lazy smile. You've been a perfect date all evening. Liv could need something. Sienna's mom might need to talk, or Kira could have sent a photo of Hunter. I'll just make sure it's nothing important. Sienna swiped across the screen to read the text. Have you talked to the Petersons yet? She put her phone back in her pocket with shaking hands. Why couldn't he leave her alone? Everything okay? Aaron asked. Yeah. She knew she didn't need to say anything else, but she wanted to talk to Aaron about it, even if she wasn't willing to be 100% truthful, yet. You know how I told you I ran into my ex-boyfriend the other day? He keeps bothering me. Aaron smiled, but it seemed forced. Should I be worried? About Dane? Sienna snorted. No, that ship sailed a long time ago. Good. I really like you, Sienna. Her cheeks flushed, his bold statement making her heart swoop. Why did he have to hate adoption? I like you too. She couldn't keep putting Dane off. It had already been almost a week. She needed to tell Kira, regardless of Nana's condition. They held hands as Aaron walked her to the door. She wished she could stretch out the distance and make this date last forever. How could she miss someone so much when they hadn't even said goodbye? I had a fantastic time, Aaron said. I'd love to take you out again sometime. Sienna played with her keys, heart dancing in her chest. I'd like that. There's an art exhibit on Wednesday. It's just on campus, but I have to attend for one of my classes. I don't know if that's your kind of thing, but I promise to make it fun. I'd love to go. Aaron leaned forward, and for a breathless second, Sienna thought he might just kiss her. She closed her eyes, lips tingling in anticipation. Should she let him kiss her? Not kissing on first dates was one of her self-imposed rules. Never had she been tempted to break it. She raised on her tiptoes, imagining how a kiss would feel. His lips landed on her cheek. Sienna's eyes flew open, and he was already pulling away. Thanks for going with me, he said. Can I pick you up for church in the morning at 1030? Sounds great. Her voice sounded embarrassingly breathy. His fingers skittered across her cheekbone, so light she wondered if she imagined the touch. Okay. I had a wonderful time tonight. Thanks again. Me too. Good night, Sienna. Opening the door was physically painful. She slipped inside the apartment and leaned against the door, her hand cupping the cheek he'd kissed. If she wasn't careful, she would fall for Aaron. Hard. But maybe that wasn't a bad thing. She'd probably blown his dislike of adoption out of proportion. Liv closed her laptop lid and muted the TV, her eyes eager. Hey, how was the date? Amazing. Liv, I think I'm in trouble. Chapter 10 Sienna was ready and waiting for Aaron by 10 o'clock the next morning. She'd taken extra special care with her hair and makeup, wanting to look perfect. She'd also made sure her undershirt was carefully tucked into her skirt so there was no chance of flashing a stretch mark. 
Sienna sat at the table with Liv, who was still in her pajamas, and was eating a bowl of cold cereal. They'd stayed up for over an hour last night, discussing every detail of the date. You are totally falling for Aaron, Liv said. You've got this moony-eyed look on your face. It's both nauseating and adorable. What am I going to do? What do you mean? I thought we decided last night that you're going to date him until it isn't fun anymore. That's kind of the definition of dating. Sienna sighed. Last night, with the excitement of the date so fresh, it had seemed simple and easy. In the light of day, all her fears had come crashing back. What am I going to do about Hunter and Dane and Jared? Well, Dane can be Kira's problem. You need to tell her what's going on and let her make the decision. Sienna knew Liv was right. It had been six days since Dane's appearance, and Nana's condition remained stable but unchanged. Sienna couldn't keep using Nana as an excuse to put off an unpleasant conversation with Kira. And as for Hunter, Liv continued, why do you have to tell Aaron or Jared anything? You're not serious with either of them. Keep dating both until you make a decision, although I know who I'd choose. Sienna sighed. Last night when she had been with Aaron, the choice seemed so obvious. The fireworks between them were undeniable. But Jared was stable. He'd already told her he accepted whatever past she was hiding. He didn't have his own adoption baggage. Maybe the fireworks would come later. I'm going to have to pick one of them eventually, Sienna said, and I'll have to tell him about Hunter. The longer I wait, the more it'll look like I was trying to hide something. It's not like a baby is the kind of thing someone shares with casual acquaintances. If things work out, worry about it then. Why did life have to be so complicated? A sharp knock sounded through the apartment, and her palms grew clammy. Teeth check. Sienna smiled wide. All clear, Liv said. Have fun. Aaron looked amazing in a white shirt and dress pants. His dreads were pulled back into a low pony at the nape of his neck, revealing his painter's palette tattoo. Hey, she said, shutting the door behind her. You look great. Aaron laced his fingers through hers, the action both exciting and comforting. At church, Aaron followed Sienna to her favorite pew just as Pastor Tanner started the service. Good morning. Pastor Tanner greeted the congregation. And that's when Jared slid into the pew. Aaron leaned forward. The two men made eye contact and gave each other uneasy nods. Sienna wanted to crawl into a hole and disappear. It wasn't like she had kept either relationship a secret, but still. The choir began singing an upbeat hymn. Sienna tried to focus on the lyrics instead of her complicated romantic life. Just as the choir sat back down, her phone buzzed. Sienna's cheeks heated and she grabbed her purse. Even vibrate was loud in here. Her fingers pushed aside receipts and lip gloss before grabbing onto the phone. She fumbled for the button at the side and quickly silenced it. The screen lit up, bright in her dark purse. An incoming call from Dane. The next two hours were the most uncomfortable of Sienna's life. Dane called two more times. She almost skipped Bible study, but didn't want to leave Jared and Aaron alone together. She had to tell Kira, today. Dane was more determined than she had given him credit for. As soon as she was home, Sienna made the phone call. It rang only once before Kira picked up. How's Nana today? Sienna asked. Still delirious, Kira sighed. I don't think she even knew who I was yesterday. I'm so sorry. I don't know if she's going to get better this time. Sienna did rapid finger exercises over the bedspread. How are the kids doing? Okay, we've tried to keep things upbeat, and they don't really understand what's happening with Nana. Want to talk to them? We were just getting Hunter ready for a nap, but he can talk for a few minutes. I'd love to. Just a sec. A moment later, Sienna heard the muffled sounds of a phone changing hands. Sina! 
A string of gibberish followed, the voice garbled and excited. Sienna's heart ached. Hey, Hunter, did you have fun at church today? More gibberish. Sienna didn't mind. She closed her eyes and imagined Hunter's round face and soft blonde curls, the way it felt when he wrapped his arms around her neck in a hug. She missed him so much. It nearly hurt as much to be away from him as it did to be with him. She'd waited for the pain to disappear over the last two years, but it had only dulled. That's awesome, Sienna said, though she had no idea what she was responding to. I love you, Hunter. I miss you. Hunter's playing with a car, Sophie announced. He gave the phone to me. Sienna talked for a few minutes with Sophie, then asked, Can you give the phone back to your mom, Soph? I need to talk to her. Sure, Sophie said. Love you, Aunt Sienna. I love you, too. Give Hunter a big hug and kiss from me, and tell him to give you one, too. Did you make out any of that? Kira asked, amusement in her voice. He's speaking a little clearer, but I still can't decipher half of what he says. I think I heard the word bubbles, and that's about it. Kira laughed. Yeah, they have a bubble machine in nursery that he absolutely loves. So tell me more about school. Are you enjoying your classes? Dr. Stone kept urging her to leave Hunter's lullaby alone, and Sienna's practice sessions were being overrun by stress. She rose from her bed and started pacing. Classes are great. Listen, Kira. I actually have something to talk to you about. It's important. Of course. Kira's voice was steeped in concern. The next words were muffled, as though she had pulled the phone away from her mouth. David, watch the kids for a sec, okay? I'm going upstairs to talk to Sienna. A moment later, Sienna heard a click. Okay, I'm alone now. Sienna massaged her forehead. I probably should have waited until the kids were in bed and called when both you and David could talk. Sorry, I'm not handling this very well. Sienna, you're scaring me. What's going on? Dane came to see me last week. Silence flooded the line. Sienna rushed to explain. I was going to tell you last week, but then you told me about Nana. It didn't seem like the right time, but I couldn't put it off any longer. I don't understand. I thought you two weren't talking. We weren't, aren't. But last Monday, I got a phone call from him out of the blue. He said he was in town for a game and wanted to see me. Kira, he wants to see Hunter. A strangled gasp echoed over the phone line. I don't understand. He wanted nothing to do with him. I'm as surprised as you. Apparently, he was injured a few months ago and is having some sort of existential crisis now that he's realized he can't play football forever. I told him if he wanted to talk, he should contact you through the agency, but I wanted to give you a heads up. Wow. I don't know how I feel about this. That makes two of us. Sienna would never erase Hunter from her life. Without Dane, there'd be no Hunter but she desperately wished she could remove Dane from the equation. He hasn't contacted us once in two years. We've never even met him. I know. We couldn't even track him down to sign the adoption paperwork. The stress of those chaotic last months of her pregnancy flooded back, and anger came with it. Yeah, he sucks. What do you think? You know him better than me. I think he's a self-centered jerk. I think he had his chance to be part of Hunter's life and shouldn't get another one. Sienna sighed, kicking her backpack. But that's not my call. I haven't talked to him in two years. Maybe he's changed. Why now? Do you really think it's just the football thing? Or does he want something from us? I'm not sure. I know he had a full-ride scholarship when he left for Alabama State, and his parents are well enough off to help with the housing and incidentals. I doubt he's going to ask for money. Despite the illegality of such a thing, Sienna knew of situations where that had happened. But Dane's flaky. He constantly changes his mind and flits from one thing to the next. 
I think he does sincerely want to meet Hunter right now. I showed him a picture and he got a little emotional. But in six months? I don't know. Thanks for the heads up. I'll talk to David and see what we want to do. Maybe Dane won't even contact us. Maybe, but I wouldn't bank on it. He keeps texting and calling me. What should I tell him? That he's more than welcome to contact us through the agency to discuss the possibility, but I'm making no promises. We love having you in our lives, Sienna, but you've been there from the beginning. In ten years, we know you'll still be here. Dane's an unknown. We have to do what's best for Hunter. I know. Sorry I wasn't calling with better news. It was irrational, but Sienna felt guilty, like she should have picked a better bio dad for Hunter. You should have waited until you were an adult in a committed relationship, Sienna reminded herself. But then that baby probably wouldn't have been Hunter, and he wouldn't be Kira and David's son. Let's talk about something less stressful, Kira said. Have you met any cute guys lately? Actually, yes. Sienna thought of those tense two hours at church, and her stress mounted. Nice! Who is he? If only it were so simple. Remember Jared from last semester? I'm dating him again. And I'm dating someone new as well. Two guys? Sienna groaned. I know. His name is Aaron. He's a graphic design major, and we go to the same church. Tell me about him. Sienna lay back on her bed and told Kira about their date and the awkward two hours at church today. Aaron sounds sweet, Kira said. I'm so happy for you. They both sound like great guys. Thanks. Sienna swallowed the lump in her throat. Kira genuinely loved her, and that love could be felt even through the phone line. I don't know if anything will come of either relationship, but I'm going out with both of them again this week. That's such good news. Keep me posted, okay? Okay. And give Hunter a kiss for me and tell him I love him. Sienna blinked back tears. Sophie, too. I miss you guys so much. We'll see you at Thanksgiving. It's our year to stay in Utah with David's family. I'm already counting down. Give Nana my love. They said their goodbyes and hung up. Sienna stared at the cell phone in her hand, wondering what Kira and David would decide to do about Dane. A big part of her hoped they'd tell him to take a hike, but would that be the best thing for Hunter? She groaned, burying her face in a pillow. How had life gotten so complicated? Chapter 11 Sienna raised a fist and tentatively knocked on Aaron's door. School had been in session for a couple of weeks now, but this week was their first viewing assignment. She wasn't quite sure what to expect. A moment later, the door swung open. Welcome, Aaron said, motioning her inside. Thanks. Sienna hooked her fingers through her backpack straps, looking around. The apartment more or less had the same layout as hers, only flipped. It was much cleaner than she had expected from a guy's apartment. The small counter was clear, the outside of the refrigerator free of magnets or papers. The living room carpet had vacuum lines, and the couch's tan fabric was free of stains and food crumbs. A small end table held a few neatly stacked textbooks. Nice apartment, Sienna said. Thanks. The others should be here soon. I'm just getting the popcorn ready. Yummy. What can I do to help? Aaron motioned to the cupboard. Want to grab some water for everyone? Cups are in that cupboard, and there should be enough ice in the freezer. Sienna pulled out five glasses and set them on the counter, then grabbed the ice tray from the fridge and cracked it to release the cubes. Is your roommate working tonight? Yes. He was super disappointed, too, when I told him what the show was. Ready for the Twilight Zone? Absolutely. If it weren't for all the ridiculously hard quizzes Professor Callahan gives out, this class would almost be fun. I mean, come on. How hard can it be to watch Seinfeld or Cheers or The Cosby Show? But his quizzes are rough. I think I'm most excited to watch MASH. I used to watch that with my grandma when she would babysit me growing up. 
I've never seen that show. I think you'll like it. How did your lesson go today? Sienna sighed, turning on the faucet. Dr. Stone kind of got mad at me for spending practice time on a personal composition. I've been working on it for two years, and he thinks it's time to move on. Aaron folded his arms, giving her his full attention. The song must be important to you. It is. She looked down at the counter, tracing a crack in the formica with her finger. But he's right. I should work on something new. Every time I try to start a new composition, though, my mind goes blank. Why do you think that is? She shrugged. She knew Pastor Tanner would say it was because she felt too connected to the past. But was that such a bad thing? It is if you can't move on, a voice whispered in her mind. I just feel really connected to that song, Sienna said. Nothing else has come close yet. That must be hard. Aaron's phone interrupted them with a shrill ring. He grabbed it off the counter and glanced at the number. Hang on, it's my mom. She'll keep calling until I answer. Hey, mom. The microwave beeped and Sienna grabbed the bag of popcorn. What? Aaron leaned back against the counter, his free arm folded across his chest. And you're just telling me about this now? I would have come. And you told them and not me? Sienna opened the bag of microwave popcorn and dumped it slowly into a bowl. Because I deserve to know, Aaron said. Well, is he okay now? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I can drive home next weekend to check on him. Okay, okay, I won't come. Fine. Bye. He hung up the phone and angrily tossed it back on the counter. Everything okay? Sienna asked. Yes. No. It's my dad. He's been in the hospital for the last couple of days. Really bad kidney stones. I'm so sorry. My mom had those once and she was completely miserable. Is he okay? Yeah, he's home now but they had to do surgery and this is the first I'm hearing about it. I'm always the last to know in my family. My three sisters have been by his side all week and here I was at school, totally unaware of what was going on. Why didn't they tell you? Sienna couldn't imagine her own parents keeping something like that from her. Mom said they didn't want to distract me from my classes since it wasn't serious, but it makes me feel like I'm not part of the family. Sienna placed a gentle hand on his arm. I'm sorry they didn't tell you. I would be really upset, too. A knock echoed through the apartment, effectively ending their conversation. For the next three hours, Sienna sat next to Aaron and watched episodes of The Twilight Zone. A notebook sat nearly empty in her lap. She couldn't concentrate. Aaron's arm kept brushing against hers, sending tingles everywhere. Heat radiated off his body, and electricity sizzled between them. But her mind kept wandering back to what he had said. I'm not a part of the family. His eyes had been stormy, the ache in his voice too real to ignore. Did his adoptive family really treat him differently? Was he an outsider? After discussing the episodes and comparing notes, the three other group members got ready to leave. Sienna cleared cups off the table while Aaron said goodbye to the others. You don't need to do that, Aaron said. I'm not going to let you clean up everything by yourself. Sienna put the stopper in the sink and turned on the water, squirting dish soap into it. The apartments didn't have dishwashers, so everything had to be cleaned by hand. For the next few minutes, Sienna washed the few bowls and cups in comfortable silence while Aaron dumped popcorn kernels and napkins in the trash and straightened up the living room. Sienna shut off the water, and she and Aaron dried the dishes and put them away. Thanks for helping, Aaron said. Of course. Sienna rested a hand on his arm. Sparks seemed to fly from his skin to hers, and she had to make a conscious effort not to rush her breathing. Are you okay? Yeah. Aaron threaded his fingers through hers. I wish I didn't feel like such an afterthought in my own family. My childhood was difficult. Didn't your parents treat you well? She couldn't imagine a couple going through the pain and struggle of adoption and then not loving their child with everything they had. 
They tried their best, and I know they love me. But my dad was always disappointed I wasn't into sports, like they'd accidentally picked the wrong child to adopt. I'm sure they don't do it intentionally, but they treat me differently than my sisters. Maybe it's because you're a boy and they're girls. I wish that's all it was. They're always reminding me I'm adopted in subtle ways. The Spanish lessons I told you about, shoving Mexican culture down my throat, that sort of thing. Sometimes I wonder if my birth mother made the right choice. Sienna yanked her hand away like she had been burned. I'm sure she did what she thought was best for you. Yeah, that's what everyone always tells me. But I'm not sure I believe it. Am I better off in a dysfunctional adoptive family than I would have been with a single mom? He shrugged. I don't know, but it's something I think about all the time. Have you ever met your birth mother? Sienna was pretty sure she already knew the answer. No, it was a closed adoption and the records were sealed. I don't even know her name. His voice cracked. But I'm going to find her. I need to understand why she didn't care enough to raise me. I hope you do find her. I'm sure she'd love to answer your questions. She held out her arms. Aaron went into them willingly, the hurt radiating off him in waves. Her heart ached for him. Would Hunter one day stand in his kitchen, hugging a girl and telling her how much adoption hurt? No. She'd made the right decision. Her situation wasn't the same. She had a relationship with Hunter. He'd be able to ask the hard questions when he was old enough to crave answers. She hoped Aaron would find his birth mom. She hoped answers would help him find peace. Aaron dropped a kiss on her forehead, then pulled away from her embrace. I'm sorry to unload on you. Don't be. It's getting late. Let me walk you home. Aaron kept the conversation light, talking about funny scenes from the Twilight Zone. Sienna followed his lead and even managed to make him laugh, but her heart was heavy. If she decided to keep dating Aaron, how would she ever tell him about Hunter? Chapter 12 The next morning, Sienna met Aaron at their usual spot. How are you doing today? she asked as they walked to class. Okay. I talked to my dad for a while last night. He can't figure out why I'm so mad no one told me he was in the hospital. We must have argued about it for ten minutes. He kept saying he wasn't in mortal danger and they didn't want to distract me. They were trying to protect you. Even if she didn't agree with that decision. I know, but it doesn't feel like protection. It feels like betrayal. Sounds like the lyrics to a pop song, Sienna teased. She was desperate to bring back the happy-go-lucky Aaron she had come to know over the past few weeks. She didn't like seeing him hurt. I'm going to post a photo on social media with everything I know about my birth and see if I can get it circling. I've seen it work for others. I think that's a great idea. I told my parents, and they acted supportive. It kind of surprised me, to be honest. I thought they'd be upset. They love you, Sienna said. They want you to be happy. I hope I'm not giving you the wrong idea about my family. I love them too, obviously, but I've really struggled to find my identity. Sienna knew what that was like, at least a little. Adoption isn't easy for anyone, but I think most birth moms really do believe they're making the right decision. Sienna's phone rang, and she pulled it out of pocket. Ugh, Dane was starting early this morning. She sent the call to voicemail. Perhaps it was petty, but she still hadn't told him Kira's decision, figuring he deserved to sweat it out. But it had been nearly two weeks. She'd text him today. Someone's calling you early, Aaron teased. It's just my obnoxious ex. Oh. Aaron's voice cooled considerably. He's really persistent, isn't he? Don't worry. He just wants to get back in touch with someone we knew back in the day. There, that sounded noncommittal. Things didn't end on very good terms with this particular group of friends, so I told him I'd ask if it was okay to share their contact information. 
I'll text him when we get to class. Okay. He's not trying to get me back. I believe you. Aaron grabbed her hand and held it the rest of the way to school. In class, Sienna pulled out her phone and texted Dane while Aaron booted up his laptop. Spoke to Kira last night. She said she'd talk to David, but that you could contact them through the agency. The response was almost immediate. You can't just give me their info so I can call them? Don't push it. I told them I thought you had lost your chance and shouldn't be given another, but they might be more forgiving than me. If you're serious, you'll go through the middleman until they decide otherwise. Sienna dropped her phone in her backpack, not wanting to see if Dane would respond. She didn't really care. Yes, he had been young and immature and scared when they found out about the baby, but so had she, and she hadn't turned around and run away. Aaron reached over and threaded his fingers through hers. Sienna loved the feel of his hand, strong and secure. She relished the feel for the rest of class, even though it meant she didn't take a single note. So we'll meet at my house on Tuesday for the screening of next week's shows, Aaron said as everyone closed up their notebooks at the end of the study session. They sat under the same picnic table in the commons where they'd first met, leaves occasionally falling from the trees above them. Sounds good, Owen said. I'll try to be there. Kelsey sighed, slinging her backpack over one shoulder. My sister's meeting with an adoption caseworker that afternoon, and I said I'd go with her. I'm not sure how long that sort of thing takes. Sienna focused on zipping up her backpack and tried to sound nonchalant. Is your sister pregnant? Yes. I don't know how she let this happen, but she's way too young to be a mom. I think she's going to give away the baby. Place the baby. Sienna said automatically. Kelsey raised an eyebrow, and Sienna felt her palms grow sweaty. She avoided looking at Aaron. They say, place the baby for adoption, not give away, Sienna clarified. It's more positive language. I've had a few friends that either adopted children or were adopted themselves. Adoption is hard, whatever words are used, Aaron said. Kelsey shrugged. I'm sure it'll be difficult, but I hope she does place the baby. She's applying to law schools, and a kid's going to mess that up. Sienna's spine stiffened, and it took all her effort to keep her voice steady. There are night classes. It's about what's best for the baby. Kendra isn't really mom material, Kelsey said. She's really cold and has never liked kids, you know? Anyway, I'll try to come on Tuesday. If I don't make it, I'll watch the shows on my own. So ignorant, Aaron muttered once the others had left. Kelsey doesn't know what she's talking about, Sienna said, trying to keep her voice calm. But it seemed like Kendra did know what she was doing, choosing the best future for her baby, just like Sienna had. It took everything in me not to give her a piece of my mind. Yeah, Sienna knew what he meant. Kelsey had been so flippant. I'm proud of you for keeping quiet. Her sister's ready to get rid of the baby just because it doesn't fit into her plans? Okay, now she disagreed with him. I doubt that's the real reason Kendra's considering adoption. She's dooming her child to a lifetime as an outsider. Why didn't my mom keep me? Was I an inconvenience she didn't want to deal with? Sienna placed a soothing hand on his arm. Your birth mom loves you. I bet she would have given anything to keep you. Aaron snorted. She couldn't have wanted me too badly or she would have found a way. Heat rose up her collar and Sienna clenched her fists, trying desperately to hold her frustration at bay. He didn't know he was partly talking about her. You don't know your mother's circumstances. She could have been a teenager. She could have had no family support. She could have been homeless or uneducated or any number of things. I'm sure she thought she was giving you the best hope for a bright future. I know that, logically. But it's hard to convince myself that's true here. He tapped his heart. I can't believe Kelsey's sister is really going to give her baby away, just like that. 
Doesn't she love him? Okay, the claws were going to come out if he didn't stop talking. Adoption isn't about not loving your baby. Don't you think that most birth moms would rather parent? Obviously not, or they would. It isn't about what the birth mom wants. It's about what she believes is best for her child. Her voice came out louder than intended, and Aaron gave her a strange look. Do you know any birth moms? Aaron asked. She could lay it all out, right here, right now. She could tell him she was a birth mother and that giving up Hunter had been the hardest thing she'd ever done. Yes, and all the birth moms I know did it out of love. Coward. She was probably a thousand kinds of stupid to not tell him. If he couldn't accept this part of her life, then they had no future together. But she couldn't bring herself to tell him. Not yet. Not now when he was so obviously upset. I think you're refusing to see the other side of the coin, Sienna continued. Birth moms do love their babies more than anything, including themselves. They'd never be able to place them otherwise. Aaron folded his arms, his eyes dark. Is that what the birth moms you know say? Yes. How do you know so many? Sienna shrugged and looked away. She couldn't tell him about the hours she had spent in birth mom support groups. Adoption is so common these days. Everyone knows someone connected to adoption. Surely you do, too. I've never met a birth mom, but I have met a lot of other adopted kids. Most of them feel as lost as I do. If my bio mom loved me so much, she should have stayed a part of my life. I don't even know her name. He gave a hollow laugh. I'm reduced to begging people on social media to pass around my photo in hopes she sees it and contacts me. Adoptions were different back then. Your mom might have wanted an open adoption but been refused one. Aaron threw up his arms, his eyes blazing. Why are you defending her? She could have been a selfish drug addict who didn't give me a second thought. And she could have been a scared 16-year-old who saw no other option. Sienna closed her eyes and took a deep breath, consciously willing her blood pressure to lower. Aaron, I'm not trying to discredit your feelings. Adoption has been hard for you. But not all situations are like yours. I think you're being overly harsh to birth moms and are refusing to see the other side of the story. Maybe but I've spent 22 years living this side of the story, trying to understand how my bio mom could give me away, why my adoptive family treated me different than my sisters, why I have always been on the outside. Call it being unchristian, close-minded, whatever, but I don't think I'll ever feel like adoption is the best choice for most situations. If I ever meet my bio mom, I'm going to have some really hard questions for her. Sienna folded her arms tightly around herself, the September breeze suddenly cutting through her like icicles. He didn't know her. He didn't know her situation. He didn't understand. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree about this for now, Sienna said, her voice distant. Aaron pulled her into a hug and pressed his face into her hair. I'm sorry, Sienna. I wasn't trying to be mean. This is just a subject I feel really strongly about. So did Sienna, but she wouldn't tell him about Hunter today. As their relationship progressed, if it progressed, Aaron would get to know her better. She could explain the whole thing, and he'd understand that her situation was different than his. She had wanted Hunter more than anything, had ached to be a mother in every sense of the word but she had also wanted to live her own life, go off to college, date, be a young adult. I'm not Aaron's bio mom, she reminded herself. She talked to Hunter every week. She visited every time she was in Utah. He knew who she was and that she loved him. And Kira and David weren't anything like Aaron's parents. They treated Hunter with just as much love and consideration as they treated Sophie. 
But still, it hurt to know that if Aaron knew about Hunter, he probably wouldn't be holding her right now. Chapter 13 Jared's taking you to a soup kitchen? The distaste in Liv's voice was obvious. Sienna nodded, grabbing her wallet off the kitchen counter. Sounds dirty. Boring. It's charitable. Sienna had gone all gooey inside when he invited her to join him. She wanted a guy who helped the homeless. His company helps out there once a week, and it's his turn to volunteer. And that means he has to take you with him? A soft knock sounded at the door. Liv glanced at the clock and rolled her eyes. Mr. Boring's even early for this lame date. Aaron would have come up with something much better. Shh, Sienna said, butterflies spreading their wings in her stomach at the mere mention of Aaron. Jared might hear you. I think it's great. Well, then have fun, I guess. Liv grabbed a muffin off the counter and disappeared into the bedroom. Sienna shook her head and headed for the door. Liv was many things, but a philanthropist wasn't one of them. It said a lot about Jared's character that he had planned this for a date. Hey, Sienna said, giving Jared a hug. Hey, yourself. He dropped a brief kiss on her lips. She willed herself to feel something, anything at the brief contact. It didn't work. Sorry, we're not doing something more exciting, Jared said as they walked to his car. Sienna's cheeks heated. Did you overhear Liv? No, what did she say? Nothing, Sienna said quickly. Jared raised an eyebrow but shrugged. Well, anyway, I promise I'll take you somewhere nice on our next date. Oh, please, Sienna gave Jared a gentle shove. Like I'm going to complain about serving food to the homeless. Only a jerk isn't willing to help out at a soup kitchen when invited. Thanks for being so cool about it. Sienna had been expecting dingy and old, but the soup kitchen was spotless and updated. Stainless steel appliances and farm-style sinks filled the kitchen, and the front half of the building held several long tables with benches. An employee with a white apron and hairnet led them to a long counter with a plexiglass shield and explained their task. It was mostly for Sienna's benefit, since Jared had been there before. Then the employee left. So basically, I put a scoop of macaroni salad on each plate, Sienna said. Jared nodded. Easy peasy. At five o'clock, the doors opened and people trickled in winding around the long tables and forming a line in front of the cafeteria-style counter. They ranged in appearance from extremely ragged to well-kept. Jared smiled at the first woman in line. She had the stringy hair and sunken eyes of a drug user. When she extended her tray, Sienna saw the track marks on her arm. Hey, Danny. Jared set a scoop of mixed fruit on her plate. How are you doing? Danny smiled and her whole face lit up. Got a job stocking shelves at Walmart. I like stocking the deodorant best. It's all neat and orderly and looks nice when I'm done. Plus, the bottles smell good. I don't like it when I have to do the toothbrushes. I always knock something off and it falls down. But it's a job. It's only part time, but it'll help. That's great. The happiness in Jared's voice was genuine. How are your kids? Good, Danny said. I passed my last drug test. I think I'll be able to find an apartment soon. Some friends have been letting me crash on their couch, but I've got to get my own place before I can get the kids back. Looked at a few last week. They were okay, but I probably couldn't afford them. Going to look somewhere else tomorrow. I'll get my kids back soon. I hope you do, Jared said. Sienna placed a scoop of macaroni salad on Danny's plate and gave her a weak smile. Jared really cared about Danny. Sienna had a feeling he cared about a lot of the other people who visited the kitchen, too. The next person in line was an older man. He wore a threadbare suit that was a size too big, but his face was clean-shaven and his hair neatly combed. Mike, Jared said. How'd the job interview go, buddy? 
They went another way, but I had another interview this morning, so hopefully something will come of that. Jared pulled off his glove, then reached into his back pocket and withdrew a business card. Come see me. The mailroom at my work is hiring. It isn't much, but the company loves to promote from within. Mike's eyes widened. He reached out with a shaky hand and took the card. Really? Jared nodded. Really? Call, email, or just drop in any weekday. I'll get you set up with an interview. Th thank you, Mike stammered. For an hour, Sienna watched while Jared interacted with the people in line. He didn't know all of them, but he was on a first-name basis with many. He made an effort to smile and encourage every single person. Sienna looked down, her eyes filling with tears. He really cared for these people who were desperately in need of a second chance, and Jared was more than willing to give them one. A few hours later, the doors to the kitchen closed. Sienna and Jared helped clean up their area, then thanked the employees and left. Did you have a good time? Jared asked when they were in the car. Are you kidding? That was amazing, Sienna said. I've never been on such a rewarding date. I'm glad you liked it. Most of them are good people who have just made a few wrong choices or fallen on hard times. They're desperate for someone to listen to them and try to help. So what's Danny's story? Jared sighed. She grew up in an abusive situation and had her first baby at 17. She has three kids now, and I know she really loves them. But she can't shake the drugs. She said she passed her last drug screen, though. Maybe she's finally turned a corner. What about her kids? They're in foster care. Danny loves them as much as she is capable. I hope it's enough for her to turn her life around. She's got a good heart. Sienna blinked rapidly. She wouldn't cry. And what about Mike? He lost his wife and teenage son in a car accident about five years ago. He started drinking too much and lost his job. Now he's homeless and has a police record. But he's been sober for six months and is trying really hard to find a job. I think he'll be okay in the long run. Sienna and Jared talked about a few of the other people who had come through the line. Genuine love coded Jared's voice as he spoke about each of them. He was incredible. He had so many of the qualities she wanted in a partner. The only thing missing was the spark. But maybe that would come with time. Sienna leaned against her front door, looking up at Jared. You are amazing. Jared grinned. Why do you say that? You accept all these people's past mistakes and don't judge them. Why should I judge them? Everyone makes mistakes, Sienna. I would hate to be held accountable for mine for the rest of my life. There's a reason we call the past the past, because it's gone and it's over. What good would it do any of them if I was cold and unkind? They've had enough of that in their lives. They need someone to believe in them. Sienna leaned forward, kissing Jared softly on the lips. His arms held her close, and the moment was pleasant, but not spectacular. She pulled away, disappointed. Thank you for today, she said. I knew you were an incredible man, but now I admire you even more. He pressed his forehead against hers. You know I will still like you no matter what, right? Because I know the person you are today. And I really, really like that person. Sienna looked down, willing the tears back. Thank you again for a great time. Jared brushed a kiss across her forehead. I hope you feel comfortable enough to open up to me soon, but I'm willing to wait. They said goodnight, and Sienna let herself into the apartment. She leaned against the door and sighed. She didn't have the natural chemistry with Jared that she had with Aaron, but she wasn't terrified to tell him of her past, either. Sienna sat on the piano bench in the practice room, staring at the keys as though they might hold the answers she needed. She'd had another lesson with Dr. Stone. For the first time ever, he'd actually berated her. Move on, he demanded. Do you want to keep spending time on the lullaby, or do you want to focus on your Juilliard audition? 
You need to figure out your priorities. Put the song away. Start composing something new. Your junior recital will be here before you know it, and you used Hunter's lullaby last year. She knew Dr. Stone was right. She had to let go of the lullaby and start working on something new. She had to move on. But first, she had to say goodbye. It was time to finally close that chapter of her life for good. Sienna took a deep breath, then started playing Hunter's lullaby. The music flowed out of her without any effort, just as it always had. She'd created the original medley while pregnant with Hunter, and Kira had played the CD every night before bed when he was an infant. Now, every time Sienna visited, Hunter and Sophie begged her to play it. Sienna leaned over the keys, the notes flowing from her. She had been exultant and devastated when she had gotten the acceptance letter from Juilliard. It had been a stiflingly hot July day. She'd walked to the mailbox in her flip-flops that were uncomfortably tight on her swollen feet, her back aching from the ever-increasing pressure of her growing belly. Her first stretch mark had appeared that morning, and she worried it would never fade. The letter from Juilliard sat on top of the small stack of mail, a large white envelope that size and weight whispered of an acceptance letter. Sienna wandered back to the house, the mail clutched to her chest. At least she was home alone. She still remembered the smell of paper, the way she struggled to open the envelope because the oppressive heat made the adhesive extra sticky. And then she pulled out the letter. All she saw was one word. Accepted. Her eyes blurred and she started to sob. God had prepared her heart and she had known immediately she couldn't go. Sienna pounded on the keys, her touch too heavy for the gentle melody. In that moment, she had been consumed with a sense of complete and utter failure. Juilliard had been her dream since she was around six years old. Because of one poor choice, she had to turn them down. She couldn't move across the country while in her third trimester and give birth alone, and Juilliard had refused to let her defer even a semester, despite her tireless petitions. It's okay, her mom had said. God has a plan. You'll get in next year. Mere months after Hunter's birth, Sienna emptied her savings account to fly from Philadelphia to New York for the audition. They'd turned her down. Sienna stumbled, her fingers missing a note as she struggled with the new transition between two of the pieces in Hunter's lullaby. Her hands felt clammy and her pulse thrummed in her temple. This was it, her last chance. She'd be a senior next year. If Juilliard didn't want her for an undergrad degree, she'd never make it into their highly competitive master's program. She missed a note in the arpeggio and cursed, slamming her hands down hard on the piano keys. The discordant notes filled the practice room. Sienna stretched her spine and blinked back the tears. Why did Dr. Stone have to be right? She didn't know how to stop holding on to something that was such a huge part of her past. Sienna stood, pacing the piano room. She shook her hands as though she could shake away the medley. You are good enough for Juilliard, she said to the silent room. Your life doesn't have to be defined by that one mistake. Silence echoed back her words. She sat down on the bench, feeling like an idiot. Her phone dinged and she swiped to open the text from Kira. A picture of Hunter in ragged pants and a pirate hat filled the screen. He had an adorable smile on his cherubic face and his blue eyes sparkled with joy. Getting a jump start on Halloween shopping. Hunter can't stop talking about pirates lately. Too cute. We miss you and love you. Sienna held the phone to her chest, tears aching for release. She'd given up so much for that little boy, and she didn't regret a single sacrifice. That included Juilliard. She took a deep breath, then started playing again. This time she didn't stumble over the transitions. Every note was perfectly timed, every inflection full of a wistful sadness, but also hope. The last chords sang through her soul. 
She held it for a full sixteen beats, feeling as though a weight had been lifted from her shoulders. The buzzing of her phone interrupted the moment. She wiped underneath her eyes, clicking open the text. I can't stop thinking about you. Smiley face. Can't wait for a date. A stanza of music fluttered in the back of her mind. Just a few measures worth of music. She grabbed a blank piece of paper, quickly jotting down the notes. Her fingers tentatively found the keys, and she played the phrase. The notes were happy, light, hopeful. She played them again, and another stanza came to her. She closed her eyes and kept playing, letting her soul feel for the notes. It was time to write a new piece. Chapter 14 Sienna woke up on the day of her second date with Aaron, stomach full of butterflies and the new piece she had started composing in her head. She wasn't much for art exhibits, but even that sounded exciting if she was with Aaron. Classes and piano lessons dragged. After her last session, Sienna raced home to change before her date. Liv was already at the apartment getting ready for her own date. Which boy are you going out with today? Liv asked, expertly applying eyeliner to a closed lid. Sienna stripped and pulled on a fresh shirt. Aaron. Oh, good. I really like him. Hey, what are you doing next weekend? We should finally all go out together. So Sienna would finally get to meet the infamous Eldon. She thought of asking Aaron out, and her palms grew damp. He'd made it clear he liked her, but her stomach still rumbled with nerves at the thought of asking him out. Next weekend should be fine. You're going to invite Aaron, not Jared, right? Liv popped her lips, blotting the gloss she had just applied. I mean, Jared is nice and all, but kind of boring. Aaron is hot. Sienna rolled her eyes. He was so much more than hot. He was sweet and romantic and thoughtful and fun to be around. Yes, I'll ask Aaron. A knock sounded at the front door, and Sienna's heart started pounding. That's Aaron, Liv said, following Sienna toward the door. Eldon never comes to the door. Well, he should, Sienna said. Oh, don't be so old-fashioned. You're going to love him. Sienna seriously doubted that. She had yet to like a single guy Liv had dated. She opened the door, Liv still at her side. Aaron had pulled his dreads back in a half ponytail and wore a leather jacket and jeans that had Sienna's mouth watering. He looked back and forth between them, one eyebrow raised. Hey. Don't worry, I'm just leaving, Liv waved as she hurried down the stairs. See you next weekend. Aaron leaned down and gave Sienna a quick kiss on her cheek, leaving a trail of longing where his lips had been. What was that about? Oh, Liv has been begging us to double with her and Eldon. I said I'd ask you. Sienna buttoned up her jacket, hoping the movement looked casual. Geez, asking someone out was terrifying. How did guys do this constantly? Sounds fun, Aaron said. Sienna dropped her hands, relaxing. Really? He laughed. Absolutely. In case it wasn't obvious, I kind of like spending time with you. I like spending time with you, too. Good. His hand slipped easily into hers, like it was the most natural thing in the world. I thought we'd walk to the gallery if you don't mind. Parking is such a nightmare on campus. Fine with me. You really don't mind going out with Liv and Eldon? Of course not. Liv's important to you, and I'm honored you asked me to go on this date with you. A strong breeze blew out of the north, making the fallen leaves swirl about their feet. Sienna knew decent weather in early October was a blessing that would soon disappear. She stood closer to Aaron, letting his body heat keep her warm. Tell me about Eldon. What's he like? Aaron asked. I haven't met him yet, but I don't have high hopes. All I really know is that he's 39 and a lawyer. Aaron whistled. Liv goes for older men, huh? Liv's likes and dislikes change on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. 
For now, I think it's Eldon's lifestyle more than his charm that she's attracted to. Her last boyfriend worked as a manager at a small clothing store. The hours were awful and the money scarce. I think she got tired of going to community theater instead of Broadway for date night. I doubt Eldon and Liv will last long. Well then, we'd better go on this date and meet him while we can. Sounds like an entertaining evening. Anything with Liv is entertaining. I'll let her know we're on for this weekend. Friday night, maybe? Does that work for you? Aaron tapped her on the nose with his finger. For you, I'll make it work. Sienna tingled from her head clear down to her toes. The student ballroom had been transformed into an elegant art gallery. Student pieces with expensive plaques were showcased in neat rows. Classical music played quietly overhead while people milled about the room. The crowd was sparse, and wide aisles laid with red carpet enhanced the spacious feel. Wow, this is a lot classier than I expected. Sienna looked down at her blouse and dark denim jeans. I feel underdressed. Aaron kissed her temple. You look beautiful, and if you're underdressed, then so am I. Next semester, you should submit something to showcase. Maybe I will. He led Sienna to the edge of the ballroom, and they started wandering up the first aisle. So what is the assignment? Sienna asked. Write an essay detailing my experiences and how the art emotionally impacted me. Aaron snorted. Freshman work. I can't believe an upper-level course assigned this. Sounds like a fluff piece. I think the professor is using it to increase attendance at the show. He organizes it, and all the money goes to the children's hospital. It's a good cause, then. I suppose I can suffer. For the children. He winked, and Sienna laughed. Aaron pulled her over to an abstract sculpture made from old tires. He pursed his lips and rubbed his chin. I feel emotionally impacted by this work because it reminds me of the time I got a flat tire and had to wait two hours for my dad to get off work and bring me a spare, Aaron said. Sienna mimicked his stance. Yes, I can see that. If you were to express that feeling in watercolors, what would it look like? An immense quantity of bovine excrement. Sienna snorted. A severe-looking woman with bright red lipstick and a slicked back bun glared at them. More laughter bubbled up, and Sienna covered her mouth, leaning into Aaron as she tried to control her laughter. He grinned and tugged her toward an oil painting. Greens and blues blended together as laughing children ran through a meadow. This emotionally impacts me because that looks like a great place for a picnic, and now I want fried chicken, Aaron said. I think I'll write my paper about the emotional distress I experienced because of my sudden hunger. Sienna cocked her head, staring at the painting. The children looked young, two boys, perhaps four years old. They both wore overalls without shirts underneath and were barefoot. Really? Fried chicken is what you get out of this painting? Well, yeah. A meadow obviously means a picnic, and a picnic obviously means fried chicken because fried chicken is amazing. Hmm. Sienna tapped her chin. I don't know. I'm more emotionally impacted by how I want to fly a kite, but don't own one and so can't. Aaron laughed. We can do a picnic with fried chicken and kite flying date another time. Sienna shivered at the promise. She couldn't wait. Her purse started buzzing, interrupting the moment. Sienna ignored it and followed Aaron to the next exhibit. A few minutes later, her phone buzzed again. She could feel the vibration against her hip, though the slight sound was lost in the noise of the exhibit hall. Sienna motioned to a picture made entirely out of thumbtacks, the sharp ends pointed out. Explain what the heck is happening here. Aaron laughed. Modern art emphasis is my guess. See how it's a heart? Yeah, I think I could even arrange thumbtacks in that shape. It's saying that love hurts, that loving someone can make you bleed. See how each thumbtack is tipped in red? I thought that was to make the heart red. That's one interpretation, 
but I think the artist is trying to get across a deeper message. Love is beautiful, but it's also sharp and painful. Sienna nodded, enjoying his more serious tone. She loved that she could laugh with Aaron, but have deep conversations with him as well. Have you ever been in love? Aaron nodded, not shying away from the question. Once. We mutually agreed it wasn't working and parted on good terms. Last I heard, she was living in Los Angeles with her fiancé and working in marketing, which had always been her dream. I'm happy for her. Sienna's phone rang again, tickling her hip bone. Who was trying to call her so insistently? She should have silenced the phone instead of putting it on vibrate. It was probably Dane. Have you ever been in love before? Aaron asked. Once, Sienna admitted, echoing his words. With your ex-boyfriend, Dane? Yeah, with Dane. But that was a long time ago. Aaron's eyes clouded, and he brushed his knuckles along her cheek. He hurt you. Sienna took a deep breath. She could be vulnerable with Aaron. He'd earned that much of her trust. Dane crushed my heart. I don't know if what I felt for him was real love, but it felt real enough for a 17-year-old. I was devastated when he broke up with me. Are you sure he doesn't want to get back together with you? He's bothering you an awful lot. What Dane wants doesn't matter. I don't feel anything for him anymore. Aaron nodded, his eyes light and hopeful. He cleared his throat and pointed to the next exhibit. Apparently, pipe cleaners are used in art after the first grade. I had no idea. Sienna matched his tone, glad to put the conversation about exes behind them. Clearly, the artist is expressing his longings for the simplicity of childhood. Really? And I was so sure it was depicting a gruesome, unsolved murder. Sienna burst out laughing. How do you figure? He pointed to a red pipe cleaner stuck through the center of a peach-colored circle. Obviously, someone has been stabbed in the head. Obviously. Her phone rang again, and she let out a groan. Something wrong? Aaron asked. Someone keeps trying to call me. I'm just going to turn my phone from vibrate to silent. Sorry. Maybe it's something important. You should answer it. I'm sure it's nothing. Sienna froze when she saw the number. Not Dane. Kira. I'm sorry, I have to take this. Sienna plugged her exposed ear with a finger to try and block out the noise. Kira, what's wrong? I'm so sorry to bother you, Kira said, her voice thick and nasally. Sienna's heart dropped and tears welled in her eyes. She blinked, refusing to let them fall. It's Nana, isn't it? She passed away about an hour ago. A massive stroke. I wanted to call and tell you before word got out on social media. Sienna covered her mouth, fighting back a sob. Kara, I'm so sorry. It was her time to go, but it hurt so much. What can I do for you? Sienna asked. How are the kids taking it? Sophie is really sad. Hunter's a little anxious because he's not sure what's going on. I'm a wreck, which isn't helping. Should I call and talk to them later? Sienna asked. It's pretty noisy where I am right now. They'd love that. When's a good time? Maybe an hour. David took them out for ice cream so I could have some time to myself. Absolutely, Sienna said, her voice thick. I'll call them in an hour. What else can I do? Kira laughed, but it came out more of a sob. Nothing. I've got to make a few other phone calls. We'll talk soon. Of course. Goodbye, Sienna said and hung up. Aaron's hand rested on her shoulder, his eyes filled with concern. Is everything okay? A single tear rolled down Sienna's cheek, and she quickly wiped it away. No, Nana died. His arms immediately wrapped around her, pulling her close. She rested her head against his broad chest as a few more tears squeezed out. I am so sorry, Sienna. Were you close to your grandmother? Was she sick? 
How would she explain her relationship with the Petersons to Aaron? She isn't actually my grandmother, but she might as well be. Aaron's brow furrowed. Okay. There's this family back home in Utah, the Petersons. They're like my second family. Kira's grandma has been sick for a few weeks, so we knew this might be coming. It's still so hard. She wiped under her eyes. Aaron pulled her in for another hug. I'm sorry. I can tell you were really close to her. Kira thinks it'll help if I video chat with her kids. I'm really close with them, and with everything going on, they're stressed. Of course. Aaron took her hand and started leading her toward the exit. What about your paper? Sienna asked. I can walk home myself if you need to stay. I have enough for the paper. I'm not letting you walk home alone in the dark. I've got the emotional distress from no fried chicken to write about, remember? Thank you, Aaron, for everything. He nodded and they exited the stuffy ballroom and headed toward home. The chilly October air cooled her warm face and she leaned into Aaron. Want to tell me about Nana? He asked. Sometimes it helps to talk about it. She was great. Is great. She treated me like her own granddaughter, even though I wasn't. Another tear. She always made me feel so welcome. I'm really going to miss her. Aaron wrapped an arm around Sienna's shoulders, rubbing his hand up and down her arm. I can tell Nana is very important to you. She should tell him everything. It was the perfect opening. She couldn't tell him everything. The entire Peterson family is, Sienna said. They helped me through a really hard time in my life. I stay in close contact with them. We text at least a few times a week, and I visit them every time I go home. Maybe I'll get to meet them one day. They must be pretty amazing if you speak so highly of them. Sienna's heart stuttered, then thudded back to life. He wanted to meet the Petersons, Hunter's family. Aaron was thinking about a future that involved her. They're incredible, Sienna said. At her apartment door, Aaron asked, Want me to stay with you? Sienna did, but she couldn't say yes. Hunter and Sophie couldn't be trusted not to let something slip. Thanks, but I need to be alone right now. Aaron nodded. He leaned forward and wrapped Sienna in his arms. She clung to him, relishing the protection she felt in his embrace. Call me if you need anything, he said. I'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely. Liv wasn't home from her date yet, and the apartment was quiet. Sienna booted up her laptop and logged onto video chat. It hadn't quite been an hour since Kira's call, but Sienna couldn't wait any longer. Kira's face filled the screen, splotchy and devoid of makeup. Thanks for calling, she said. Of course, Sienna said. Kira, I'm so sorry. I wish I could give you a hug right now. Me too. David's not home with the kids quite yet. I can wait. Do you know yet when Nana's funeral will be? Saturday, I think. I just got off the phone with my mom and that seems to work for everyone. I'll see about booking a flight out there. Kira's eyes filled with tears and she grabbed a tissue. That's so sweet, but we don't expect you to come. We know you have school and I want to come, but I don't want to make this any harder or more stressful for you than it has to be. Sienna did a finger exercise on her desk. She always worried she'd wear out her welcome and the Petersons would ask her to back off. We'd love for you to come, Kira said. Your family, but if you can't, we understand. Tears pricked at Sienna's eyes again, but this time for a different reason. She was so grateful to have the Petersons in her life. I'll let you know my travel plans. Thank you. Kira looked over her shoulder. Oh, here are the kids. They'll be so happy you're coming home again soon. Kira disappeared, and a few moments later, two blue eyes and blonde hair appeared. Hi, Sinna. Hunter waved his fingers, barely visible. Here. There was a scratch of chair legs, then Hunter came fully into view. Hi, Hunter. 
Sienna waved, her heart melting as soon as she saw the little boy. He looked nearly identical to her own baby pictures, and she ached to cuddle him close. How are you doing, buddy? I miss you. I miss you, too. Mommy cried. I know. She's just sad because Nana went to heaven. All gone? Hunter asked. Sienna let out a strangled sob. Yes. Mommy's sad. Hunter's lip pulled down in a pout. Me sad. I'm so sorry. Hunter grabbed something, holding it up for her to see. Ball! He threw it, and there was a loud muffled bump as it hit the computer screen. No, no, no! David appeared in the frame with his curly hair and thick glasses. He waved. Hey, Sienna, how are you doing? Okay, Sienna said. I'm sad, but mostly worried about Kira. She'll get through it, David said. We all will. Kira said you're going to fly out for the funeral. That's so nice. I want to do it. Let us know your travel plans and we can pick you up at the airport. The spare room's yours if you want it. Despite the fact her parents lived only 20 minutes from Kira and David's, they were so sweet to always volunteer their home. I'm sure my parents can pick me up and I'll stay with them. Well, it's a standing offer. Thank you. Where's Sophie? David looked over his shoulder. She's crying. Kira's putting a movie on for her. Sorry, I guess she doesn't feel like talking right now. We'll see you this weekend then? See you then, Sienna agreed. As soon as they said their goodbyes, she started looking for a ticket home. Chapter 15 The next day, Sienna met Aaron on what she was coming to think of as their corner. Hey, he said, wrapping an arm around her shoulders and giving her a squeeze. How are you doing? Okay. She'd spent most of the night alternating between crying and tossing and turning. She knew Nana was in a better place, but she wished she had had a chance to say goodbye. I'm flying home tomorrow for the funeral. Just a quick weekend trip. Let me drive you to the airport. You don't have to do that. I can take the bus. I want to, Sienna. She smiled up at him, her heart brimming with gratitude. Thank you. What time do you need to leave for the airport? About two o'clock. Will that cut into your class schedule? Even if it did, I'd miss for you. He kissed her on the temple. I'm here for you, okay? Sienna stayed up late Thursday night doing laundry and packing. She was bleary-eyed during class on Friday, unfocused and tired. But there were quizzes in both her classes, so it was good she decided not to skip. Taking a quiz while half awake was still better than not taking it at all. Aaron picked her up right on time. He carried her bag to his car and they left for the airport. Who's picking you up in Salt Lake? Aaron asked as they drove. My parents, or maybe just my mom. She takes advantage of every opportunity to leave the house without Connor and Cameron. Those two are a handful. I'd love to meet them sometime, Aaron said. Sienna smiled, imagining Aaron playing in the backyard with her brothers. I'd like that. When are you coming back so I can pick you up? Oh, you don't need to do that. My flight comes in really late Sunday night. I'll take the bus. Aaron gave her a stern glare. I'm not letting you ride home that late on the bus. What time? 11.30. She reached across the center console and squeezed his hand. Thank you. They parked in short-term parking, and Aaron waited while she got her boarding pass. She didn't have any bags to check, which made it easier. Then he walked her to security. Have a good trip, he said. Text or call when you get there so I know you're okay. I will. Can I call you tomorrow? Sienna nodded, unable to stop the smile from spreading. I'd like that. He leaned forward, crushing her in a hug. She wrapped her arms around him, relishing the feel of his body against hers. She gazed into his hazel eyes, feeling herself falling. Her eyes were magnetically drawn to his lips. 
They were full and a soft peach color that had her unconsciously swallowing. She closed her eyes, eager and ready to kiss him. His lips landed on her forehead. Sienna's eyes popped open. Aaron stepped back, looking regretful. Don't chicken out, she thought. Kiss me. I'll miss you, he said, giving her another quick hug. I'll miss you too, Sienna said. Call me when you get there, and I'll pick you up Sunday night at 11.30. Okay, and thank you. Aaron let out a groan and pulled her to him again. Bye, pretty girl. His voice was thick with emotion, and she wanted to stay in that moment and never let him go. Eventually, they released each other. Sienna picked up her bag and headed through security. She turned around on the other side. Aaron still stood there, watching her. He lifted his hand in a wave. She returned the gesture, then headed down the corridor toward her flight. It didn't occur to her to let Jared know she was going out of town until she was waiting to board her first flight. Sorry we haven't talked since our date. Jared had called a few times, but Sienna hadn't felt like talking. Is everything okay? I've been worried about you. I'm headed home for a funeral. I'm at the airport right now. Sad face. Who? One of my good friends. She was like a grandmother to me. I am so sorry. Is there anything I can do for you? Do you need someone to pick you up at the airport? Sienna's mind flashed back to Aaron, to their almost kiss. Her stomach squirmed. Thanks for the offer, but I've got it covered. See you Monday? Thought we could go to dinner, then attend the church singles activity together. Sienna tapped her phone screen. That almost kiss with Aaron kept replaying in her mind. Her entire body had ached with the buzz of electricity just being near him generated. In that moment, Jared hadn't even been on her radar. But chemistry wasn't everything. She'd spent most of the last two days telling Aaron half-truths because she didn't think he could handle reality. Wasn't that a red flag? Sierra sent Jared one last text. Sounds great. See you Monday. By the time her plane landed in Salt Lake City, she was exhausted. She pulled out her cell phone to check the time, 11.05 p.m., and she saw a text from Aaron. I miss you already. Hope you had a good flight. She grabbed her bag from the overhead bin and texted Aaron back as she waited to exit the plane. I miss you, too. Just landed in SLC. Flight was uneventful. The response was almost immediate. She grinned. Was Aaron waiting by the phone, anxious to hear from her? Glad you got there safe. Sleep well, pretty girl. We'll talk tomorrow. Sienna followed the line of people off the plane. Her mom waited in baggage claim, dark shadows under her eyes. Her short, honey-blonde hair looked like it hadn't seen a brush since morning, and her face was scrubbed clean of makeup. She held out her arms, and Sienna fell into them. I missed you, Annabelle said, hugging Sienna tightly. I missed you, too. Do you have any bags? Sienna shook her head, lifting the small duffel. This is it. Okay, let's go, then. Sienna followed her mom out of the airport into the car. Are the twins asleep? Sienna asked as they pulled out of the parking garage. Yes. Your dad was sad he didn't get to come pick you up, but I told him I wanted to come myself. I'm so sorry about Nana. Me too, Sienna said. What are your plans for the weekend? The viewing is at 11 tomorrow and the funeral is at noon. After that, it'll depend on Kira and David. I was hoping to spend a little time with Hunter, but I don't want to interfere with their plans or get in the way. You're never in the way. Kira and David love you. I know. And Sienna really did but she didn't want to step on any toes. Want me to come with you to the funeral? Mom asked. Sienna thought about it for a moment, then shook her head. No, I'll be fine by myself. I want to help Kira with the kids so she can focus on the services. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. Mom paused, then said, 
We'd love to see Hunter while you're here if we can. Sienna nodded, saying nothing. Watching their first grandchild be raised by someone else hadn't been easy on her parents, but they had supported Sienna's decision 100%. Tell me about school, Mom said as they drove down I-15 toward Riverton. I haven't heard from you much since it started. It's barely been a month, so there's not much to tell. Sienna debated for a moment whether or not to say more. I'm kind of dating someone. Well, two guys, actually. Her mom's head whipped towards Sienna, then quickly back toward the road. When did this happen, and why wasn't I the first to know? Sienna blushed. I'm not sure yet if it's going anywhere with either guy. It's going somewhere if you've been on a few dates. Tell me all about them. Sienna's mom already knew about Jared and was happy to hear the two were dating again. Sienna also told her mom about Aaron, leaving out the part about his adoption. It felt good to acknowledge him as someone important in her life. Sienna's mom pulled into the driveway of her childhood home. This house held so many memories, and her heart warmed just seeing it. Her dad sat in the living room, his mouth half open in sleep as the television played quietly. Mom gently shook his shoulder. Look who's home. Dad wrapped Sienna in a hug and kissed her on the cheek. Good to have you home. We're so sorry about Nana, honey. Thanks, Sienna said. Want us to go to the funeral with you tomorrow? We could probably find a babysitter for the twins. Mom already offered. That's sweet, but I think I need to go alone. Her dad nodded in understanding. Well, I'm off to bed. I'll see you two in the morning. Sienna wished both her parents good night and dragged her bag down the hallway to her old bedroom. It looked the same as it had on the day Sienna left for Philadelphia nearly two years ago. The bedspread was a cheerful aqua, the dresser drawer fronts, paper mache and old sheet music. Four black frames with music notes mounted on burlap hung on one wall and a picture of a little girl playing piano on the other. Sienna fell back onto her bed and stared at the ceiling. She'd cried in this bed all night after finding out she was pregnant. She had lain here after throwing up throughout the first trimester. She'd paced the carpet with discomfort every night for a month before she delivered. The notes from Hunter's lullaby floated into her head, and she fought the urge to pull out the score paper and tinker with one of the transitions. She was moving forward. She could appreciate the memories of the past without getting lost in them. Sienna pulled herself upright and wandered into the bathroom to get ready for bed. She had a long day tomorrow. She'd better sleep while she could. Chapter 16 Sienna had planned on sleeping in, but she should have known it was a lost cause. The sound of running feet woke her before the sun. Sienna lit up the display on her cell phone, peering at it through squinted eyes, and groaned at the time. Barely six o'clock. Her bedroom door burst open. Connor and Cameron ran across the room and jumped on top of her laughing. Sienna, they said. Sienna grunted theatrically as they dogpiled her. She pushed herself into a sitting position. They wrapped their arms around her neck and hugged her tight. We missed you, Connor said. I missed you guys, too. Sienna kissed them both on the cheek and laughed as they groaned and tried to scrub the kisses off. How's school? We have to stay there all day, Cameron said. It's so long. But we get to eat lunch at school, Connor said, because we're the big kids now. The kindergarten babies have to go home and eat with their mommies. Cameron and Connor started laughing. Sienna pushed them off the bed amid giggles. Go eat breakfast and let me get ready. Will you watch cartoons with us? After I practice the piano. The boys groaned, and Sienna smiled as she remembered other Saturdays that had played out much the same. But the boys left the room, and Sienna quickly got ready. She was just sitting down at the piano bench when her phone dinged with a text. Just wanted to let you know I'm thinking about you. 
Good luck with the funeral today. I wish I could be there to support you. Thank you. That means a lot. She hesitated, then sent another text. I miss you. I miss you, too. When you get back, I think we should talk about how much we miss each other. Smiley face. Her heart fluttered, and she sent him a smile emoticon. Then she started playing. Sienna was only able to put her brothers off for an hour, but she managed to go through each of her Juilliard audition pieces once. Then she snuggled on the couch next to her brothers and tried to live in the moment instead of obsessing about her audition. Cameron and Connor were growing up too fast, and she didn't get to spend nearly enough time with them. After a half hour of mindless cartoons, her mind wandered back to the piano in the living room. The melody for the new piece she was composing, the one without a name, kept running through her head, and she ached for the piano to test out the new stanza she had just imagined. She had a feeling that when played, the notes would sound a lot like Aaron's laugh. Eventually, it was time to get ready for the funeral. Sienna slipped into a black skirt and dark red blouse, curling her hair to fall around her shoulders. She lightly dusted makeup on, then gave her family a kiss and left, borrowing her father's car for the drive. Her stomach clenched into knots when she pulled into the church parking lot. Even after two years, she still got anxious when attending Peterson family events. Nana had always been the one to help her feel better. Sienna blinked back tears and got out of the car. She recognized one of Kira's cousins and waved. Sienna followed the trail of people into the church. The viewing had only started a few minutes earlier, but already the room teemed with people. She wished she could text Aaron and tell him how nervous she was. He was so gentle and understanding. But for him to understand, she'd have to explain. And she wasn't ready for that. Kira's sister came over and gave Sienna a hug. They chatted for a moment, and she felt herself relax. These were good people who accepted her. She needed to stop feeling so awkward around them. She found Kira near the front of the room, sitting in a chair with Hunter on her lap. Her chestnut hair had fallen out of the clip holding it back and now hid much of her expression. Her face was close to Hunter's, and she must have whispered something because he started to giggle and snuggled closer to his mom. Sienna's heart twisted. It never got easier seeing the two of them together. She loved watching Kira be a mom, loved watching the close relationship she shared with Hunter, but it was hard, too. Pastor Tanner had cautioned Sienna many times not to ask what could have been, but sometimes it was impossible not to. If she'd kept Hunter, she'd be waiting tables at Denny's in between night classes. He'd be raised by babysitters. This was the best for everyone involved. Sienna straightened her back and walked over to Kira and Hunter. Hey, she said softly. Hunter popped off his mom's lap, wrapping his arms around Sienna's legs. Aunt Sienna! Sienna bent down, lifting Hunter into her arms. Hey, buddy. She hugged him tight, relishing the feel of his arms around her neck, and gave him a solid kiss on the forehead. I missed you. Hunter giggled. Miss you. Kira rose, giving Sienna a hug. Thank you so much for coming. Of course. How are you doing? I'll be okay. It's been hard, but we know she's in a better place. Hey. Hunter's chubby hands grabbed Sienna's cheeks. I talking. Sienna laughed. Okay. What are we talking about? Hunter pointed. Nana, bye-bye. Sienna hugged Hunter close. Yes, I'm so sorry. Have you had a chance to say goodbye to Nana? Kira asked. Not yet, but I will. Kira, why don't you let me take the kids during the funeral? You shouldn't have to worry about keeping them quiet. Thanks for the offer, but they'll be fine. She placed a hand gently on Sienna's shoulder. If you'd sit with us during the service in case we need help with them, we'd appreciate it. You're part of the family. Sienna nodded, her throat tightening. She had been so lucky to pick Kira and David. Hunter was so blessed. 
Sienna had heard horror stories from other birth moms about promises the adoptive parents broke after the adoption was finalized. Some of those birth moms didn't even know where their child was today. Sienna had been terrified that once the judge signed the paperwork and everything was legal, Kira and David would cut her out of Hunter's life. But they'd stayed true to their word, and Sienna would always be grateful to them for that. She thought of Aaron, completely cut off from his birth family, and for the first time considered the other side of the equation. She hoped he'd find his birth mother soon so he could resolve some of his issues. Maybe then they could move their relationship forward. Aunt Sienna! Sophie launched herself at Sienna. Sienna shifted Hunter to one hip and wrapped her free arm around Sophie. Hey, cutie, I missed you. I missed you, too. Sophie scrunched her face up. Did you come because Nana died? Yes, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Mommy said we can get ice cream if we're good today. That sounds like fun, Sienna said. David wove his way through the crowd, and Sienna gave him a quick hug. We'll have the family prayer in about five minutes, someone at the front announced. It's time to say your last goodbyes. Sophie placed her tiny hand in Sienna's, tugging her toward the front of the room. Come see Nana. Sienna let Sophie lead her to the casket, Hunter still perched on one hip. Nana's wrinkled face was serene, her hands placed delicately over her chest. Sienna blinked, and tears cascaded down her cheeks. She leaned down, brushing Nana's cold cheek with a final kiss. Thank you, she whispered. The service was very nice, at least what Sienna heard of it. She tried her best to keep Hunter and Sophie quiet and entertained so that Kira and David could focus on the funeral. After the service, she followed Kira and David to the cemetery, where they dedicated the grave and said their final goodbyes. Some of our neighbors are providing a luncheon back at the church, Kira said as everyone left. Please come. I'm bored, Mommy. Sophie tugged on Kira's hand. I don't want to go back to the church. Hunter laid his head on Kira's shoulder, crying. He didn't get his nap, Kira said. He's so tired. Why don't you let me take them to my house, Sienna offered. That way you and David can get a break and enjoy the luncheon in peace. I'll try and get Hunter to take a nap so he isn't so cranky. I want to go to Grandma Annabelle's, Sophie said, hopping from foot to foot. I want to play with Connor and Cameron. Please, Mom. Kira looked at David. Are you sure? David asked. Sienna nodded. My family really wants to see the kids, and you two look exhausted. Thank you, Kira said. That would be great. David fished keys out of his pocket. It's probably easiest if we just switch cars. Sure. Sienna pulled out her dad's car keys and handed them to David, taking his in exchange. You two take as much time as you need. I don't have anything else to do today, and I want to spend time with them. Kira and David leaned down, giving the kids hugs. You two obey Aunt Sienna, Kira said. Thanks so much. This is a huge help. No problem, Sienna said. Diaper bags in the car. We'll pick them up before bedtime. If you can't make it back by then, don't worry. I'll handle it. You should be with your family right now. Kira gave Sienna a tight hug. I don't know what we'd do without you. You continue to be an angel in our lives. The feeling is mutual. She took Sophie in one hand and Hunter in the other. Come on, guys. Let's go see Grandma Annabelle. Hunter was asleep by the time Sienna pulled into her parents' driveway. Her mom was out the front door before Sienna could even turn off the van. You brought them, she said, joy evident in her tone. Sophie launched herself from the car. Grandma! Annabelle gave Sophie a tight hug. Where's Hunter? He fell asleep, Sophie said. Where's Cameron and Connor? In the backyard with Grandpa Sam. Want to go play with them? Sophie let out a whoop. Yes! Can we play in the sandbox? Sure, Annabelle said. Sienna gently lifted Hunter onto her shoulder, careful not to wake him. 
Annabelle grabbed the diaper bag and led them into the house. How long are they staying? I told Kira and David I'd watch them for the rest of the day so they could visit in peace and quiet. Annabelle placed a soft kiss on Hunter's forehead. I'm so glad. You can lay Hunter down on the spare bed if you want. Sienna shook her head, tightening her hold on Hunter. He's had a rough day. I think I'll just hold him while he sleeps. Annabelle nodded in understanding. Outside, Connor and Cameron raced out of the sandbox to say hi. Sienna sank into a patio chair while Sophie ran off to play. Annabelle sat down next to Sienna, kissing Hunter on the head again. He looks bigger. I know, Sienna swallowed. It's only been over just a month since I saw him, and I already swear he's grown. It's hard to be so far away. Sienna nodded. But it's hard to be close, too. Sienna watched Sophie play with her brothers for nearly an hour before Hunter woke up, and they all joined in the fun. Her heart soared as she chased Hunter around the yard, tickling him and tossing him in the air. They played with dump trucks in the sandbox, and she pushed him on the swings while Sophie and the twins raced down the slide. Sienna was just helping her mom clean up a dinner of chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese when the phone rang. Hey, Sienna, Kira said. How are the kids? They're doing great. We've been playing outside most of the day and just finished eating dinner. Hunter slept for about an hour, but I think they're both tired again. Hunter grinned, his face covered in cheese sauce. Sienna winked at him. Thank you so much. We're just leaving the church, so we'll be there soon. Oh. Sienna tried to hide the disappointment. Kira and David were so generous with Hunter's time, but it was never enough. Okay, I'll have them ready to go when you get here. Sienna cleaned up the kids and instructed Sophie to say her goodbyes to the twins. They'd barely finished when the doorbell rang. Mommy! Sophie exclaimed, racing toward the front door. Sienna followed, going at a much slower pace to accommodate Hunter's shorter legs. Hey, baby girl, Kira said, hugging Sophie. Did you have fun with Aunt Sienna? So much fun! Sophie launched into a long explanation of the afternoon's activities. Sienna picked up Hunter, relishing their last few moments together. Ugh! Hunter leaned forward, straining for Kira. Sienna's heart cracked. She wasn't Hunter's mother, not really. Kira was who he wanted when he was tired or upset. Kira took Hunter, giving Sienna a sympathetic glance. Thank you so much for watching them, David said. Yes, Kira interjected. It was so nice to visit with a family and not have to worry about these two. Will we get to see you again before you leave? David asked. Sienna shook her head regretfully. I have to leave for the airport around two tomorrow. Darn, Kira said. We were hoping you could come over for dinner, but there won't be enough time after church. Maybe next time, Sienna said. What about breakfast? We feel like we've barely gotten to see you. Okay, Sienna agreed. She'd get to see Hunter one more time before leaving, and that was worth waking up at any hour. Breakfast. Is eight o'clock okay? That's perfect. Thank you. Can you tell Aunt Sienna bye-bye? Kira asked. Hunter looked like he'd refuse, but at the last moment he reached his hands toward Sienna. She cradled him against her, tears burning in her eyes as she reluctantly kissed the top of his head. See you in the morning. He nodded solemnly. Sienna gave him one last squeeze. I love you, buddy. Love you, Hunter echoed. Sienna stood on the front porch, watching as the little family drove away, taking a piece of her heart with them. Her mom's arm wrapped around Sienna's waist. Are you okay? Annabelle asked. Sienna took a deep breath and nodded. It helps to see him so happy. They invited me over for breakfast, so I'll see him one more time before leaving. They're great parents. They've been so good to you and to us. We're more involved in Hunter's life than I ever let myself dream we could be. Yeah, Sienna agreed. 
Her phone started ringing, and she fished it from her pocket. Which boyfriend is that? Annabelle asked, her tone teasing. Stop it! But Sienna couldn't stop the smile that spread across her face when she saw Aaron's name on the display screen. She immediately answered the call. Hi. Sienna McBride? His deep baritone made her shiver. I miss you. Sienna turned away from her mom, who fluttered her eyelashes dramatically. In her room, she lay down on her bed. I've missed you, too. More than she thought she would. They'd known each other such a short time, but already she couldn't imagine her life without him. Maybe she shouldn't have said yes to another date with Jared. Suddenly, it felt wrong to go out with him again. Unfair. All the kindness in the world didn't make up for a lack of chemistry. How was the funeral? Aaron asked. Sienna gave him a brief summary of the program. Then I watched Sophie and Hunter for the rest of the afternoon so Kira and David could have a break. It was so good to just play together. You must be really close to them. He had no idea. We had a lot of fun. We built a castle in the sandbox and pretended to be astronauts flying to the moon on the swings. Aaron chuckled, the sound sending shivers of pleasure up her spine. You sound like a fun babysitter. I try to be. Enough about me, though. How was your day? Uneventful without you. I went to the activity at church and missed you the whole time. Sienna pumped a fist into the air in a silent yes. Anything exciting happen at the activity? Benton Jorgensen asked Annie Baker out, and Mindy Cooper ran out of the room in tears. Sienna let out a sympathetic groan. That poor girl. She's been head over heels for him for a year. Poor Mindy. Poor Ben. He had no idea what was going on. Annie pouted the rest of the night because she thinks Ben and Mindy had a fling. Looks like maybe he's going to lose both girls. Sienna needed to decide between Jared and Aaron soon, or she might end up like Benton. Okay, okay, she needed to tell Jared she couldn't date him anymore. A few days apart had given her the clarity she needed. No matter how nice Jared was, he couldn't be the guy for her. Not when just talking to Aaron had her floating on clouds. No one went after Mindy, so of course I had to, Aaron said. Sienna rolled onto her stomach and started giggling. You didn't. I shouldn't have, that's for sure. But I felt bad for her. What happened? I'm pretty sure she tried to kiss me. The laughter exploded out of Sienna. How can you be pretty sure? I mumbled that I had to go, and when I stood up, she practically face-planted on the sofa in the foyer. Stop! I can't breathe! Tears of mirth leaked out of the corners of Sienna's eyes. Promise me that I'll never have to attend another church activity without you. His tone was still light and teasing, typical Aaron, but she heard the hidden meaning in his words. He'd mentioned wanting to talk when she got back, and she had an idea of what he was going to say. The time for dating both men was up. Sienna took a deep breath and let it out slowly. Then she said, I promise. Chapter 17 Breakfast was great, Sienna told Kara as she helped bring dishes from the table to the sink. I didn't expect you to make waffles. I would have been fine with cereal. Kira laughed. I know, but that's probably what you live off of at school. I wanted to make something extra yummy. Well, you succeeded. Kira put a dish on the drying rack and turned to face Sienna. David and I wanted to let you know what's happening. Dane sent a letter through the agency, and we wrote back telling him he could call us. I don't know if he's gotten our letter yet. Sienna shut the dishwasher and gave Kira her full attention. She had half believed Dane wouldn't go through with it. What did he say? Basically the same thing he told you. He made a mistake and he wants to meet Hunter and be a part of his life. And what did you tell him? That we still need to think about it. Kira folded her arms and sighed. 
We've really taken what you've said into consideration, and we don't want to do anything that will make our relationship with you uncomfortable or strained. We all love you so much. Hunter and Sophie would be devastated if we stopped having such frequent contact. I'm happy with how much I get to see them right now, Sienna said quickly. The only way that will change is if you ask me to back off. She wasn't about to let Dane chase her away. It would be uncomfortable if they started running into each other, but she would deal with it. We're happy with the status quo, too, and I feel like if we let Dane into our lives, that would change. He might not be consistent, and we can't allow him to just come and go from Hunter's life as he pleases. Sienna was glad to hear it, but she heard the unspoken but at the end of that sentence. You're wondering if you're making the right decision, Sienna said. Kira winced. Yes. What if he turns out to be as wonderful as you? I would feel awful if I denied Hunter the chance to know his biological father, if the relationship will be beneficial. That's why we're taking things slow. You need to make the decision with only Hunter in mind and not worry about me, Sienna said. My role in his life won't change, regardless of what happens. Kira exhaled. I'm so relieved to hear you say that. If we do allow Dane in Hunter's life, will it be awkward or uncomfortable for you? A little, but I'll get over it. Kira fidgeted, wrapping a loose string from the dish towel around one finger. I know your feelings toward Dane are less than warm, but what about his toward you? Kira looked up, her eyes brimming with stress. I know you would never consider this, so I don't want you to think this is about you. But I am concerned that maybe Dane is doing all this more to get back with you than to be part of Hunter's life. Sienna flushed. You're right about one thing. I have no interest in having Dane be a part of my life again. Pigs would fly before I'd ever consider going on another date with him. Dane hasn't mentioned our relationship to me, except to apologize for the past. I think he knows that ship has sailed. That makes me feel a little better. I knew you wouldn't go for it, especially now that you're dating Aaron and Jared. But I don't know what to expect from Dane. Sienna smiled weakly. Maybe he'll just go away and we can forget about him. I hope so. But then I worry I'm being selfish and that wouldn't be the best thing for Hunter. Kira dropped the dish rag on the counter. So, tell me about these two boys you've been dating. You seem to especially like Aaron. Sienna blushed. I do. When I get back to Philadelphia, I'm going to tell Jared I can't see him anymore. Kira dropped the dish towel to the floor. Whoa! It isn't right for me to keep dating him when I feel so much stronger about Aaron. Sounds serious. Sienna looked away. I don't know. I want it to be. We've never really talked about this before, but maybe we should. What will happen when you start dating someone seriously? He'll have to accept that Hunter is part of my life. As soon as Sienna said the words, she knew the time had come to tell Aaron the truth. If he couldn't accept her past, then he wasn't the right guy for her and she would let him go. Just thinking about the conversation had her heart pounding and palms sweating. But Hunter was the most important thing in her life, and whoever she dated would have to accept that. I won't bring a man into Hunter's life until I'm sure he's going to be a permanent part of it, Sienna said. And of course, I'd talk to you and David first. I won't introduce Hunter to anyone without your blessing. We appreciate that, Kira said. I always assumed as much, but it's nice to hear you say it. I don't think you need to worry. I have a feeling it'll be a while before I'm serious with anyone, Aaron included. There was a very good chance that once she told him about Hunter, he wouldn't be able to get past his own hang-ups and accept her status as a birth mom. She might lose both Jared and Aaron this week. A dull pain started behind her eyes, and she knew a headache was coming. Aaron drove you to the airport, Kira said. And isn't he picking you up tonight? That's a guy who's falling for you. I see how you look when you talk about him. Sienna sighed, leaning against the counter. It's not that simple. If you mean Hunter, 
The guy you're meant to be with won't care. He'll love being Hunter's uncle. And he'll think you're an amazing and selfless woman for giving us the chance to be parents again. Kira's eyes glistened with tears. I know that on a conscious level, and I think Jared would have taken the whole thing in stride, which makes breaking up with him that much harder. It's more complicated with Aaron. How so? Sienna ran a hand through her hair. He's adopted, and he really resents his birth mom for placing him. Kira's mouth popped open into a little O. Yeah, told you it was complicated. I know I need to tell him, but I'm nervous. I really like him, Kira. When he finds out about Hunter, he'll never look at me the same. If it's meant to be, it'll work out, Kira said. The Lord knows what he's doing. You like Aaron, which means he's a good guy. I believe he'll understand your choice. I hope so. If our relationship's going to work, I have to trust him with the truth. But when do I tell him about Hunter? It's not the kind of thing you blurt out on a first date, but we've been out twice now, and we're texting and calling each other every day. Kira gave Sienna a hug. I see what you mean. He'll understand why you waited to tell him. Sienna played with the kids for a while longer, and then it was time to say goodbye. She hugged David and Kira, thanked them for their hospitality, and hugged Sophie. Then she picked up Hunter, crushing him to her. I'll miss you, little buddy, she said. Miss you, Hunter echoed. She leaned her head forward against his. I love you, Hunter. Love you, Sienna. Sienna waved goodbye and climbed into her dad's car. She couldn't stop the tears from flowing as she drove to her parents' home. It was always hard to say goodbye to Hunter, whether it was for an hour or a month, a knife that would never be removed from her heart. She'd video chat with him in a few days. He was happy and healthy and where he was meant to be. That was enough. And she'd never have gone to the Academy of Arts if she had chosen to parent. True, but you'd be at Juilliard if you hadn't gotten pregnant, a tiny voice reminded her. She batted it away as though it were an obnoxious fly. She wouldn't think about that or all the practice time she'd have to make up next week because of this little vacation. She would get the practice time in, and she would nail the Juilliard audition. But if she did make it into Juilliard, where would that leave her and Aaron? She gritted her teeth. She had to stop thinking like that. She and Aaron weren't even exclusive. Yet. She needed to focus on her goals and cross that bridge when she came to it. At the airport, the goodbyes with her family were hard, but less painful than her goodbye with Hunter. Soon she was through security and waiting at the gate for her plane to arrive. Sienna's phone beeped and she swiped to read the text. Just making sure your plane's still arriving at 11.30. Don't want to miss you. Yeah, I'm waiting to board now. Thanks again for picking me up. I've been looking forward to seeing you since I put you on that plane. Smiley face. Sienna grinned. Aaron seemed to have missed her as much as she'd missed him. Smiley face, LOL. I'll text an update during my layover, but plan on 1130. You got it. Talk to you soon. Sienna worked on some homework during the flight and texted Aaron when she landed in Denver. Just got to Denver. I'll be boarding the next plane in about a half hour. That's not too bad a layover. Nope. What's Denver like? I've never been there. Sienna looked around the airport. The sky was overcast but not drizzly, and the airport big but not too loud. The dim lighting and empty hallways were intimidating. Pretty quiet. It's kind of freaking me out. We should talk until you board so you aren't scared. Wink. Can I call you? Sure. A moment later, her phone rang. Sienna answered it with a shy, hey. Hi, Aaron responded. His voice was soft, almost a caress. How was the flight? Not bad. I had a whole row to myself and the waitress gave me an extra packet of pretzels. Someone's living large, Aaron teased. 
Oh, yeah, it was practically first class. Business class at the very least, right? Definitely. So, any scary people nearby? Sienna glanced around. There was a businessman on a cell a few rows over. A young couple slept nearby, sprawled out on the floor with their backpacks as pillows. The gate was mostly empty, just like she had told Aaron. I see at least three mafia types wielding handguns and a Tarzan wannabe running with a machete. But I'm pretty sure they're after someone else, so I think I'm good. What a relief. I don't know what I'd do if you didn't come back. There was a tenderness in his voice that had Sienna grinning from ear to ear. They could weather their adoption baggage. She knew it. They flirted back and forth until a flight attendant announced the plane would now begin boarding. They just called my flight, Sienna said. I better go. Okay. The silence stretched out between them, thick with longing. I'll see you soon, Sienna said. I'll miss you every second until you get here. Sienna couldn't stop smiling. When the plane landed and the fastened seatbelt sign turned off, Sienna stood on shaky legs. She waited until nearly everyone had exited the plane before retrieving her duffel bag and leaving. She had been so anxious to see Aaron only a few hours before. Now she wanted to prolong the time until they met. What should she do? What should she say? Talking over the phone suddenly felt a lot less intimidating than talking in person. Her mom's advice from when Sienna had freaked out over her first school dance floated back to her. Just be yourself. Sienna snorted. If only it were so easy. She stopped to use the restroom and bought a water bottle at a small shop, but then ran out of ways to stall and made her way through security. She saw Aaron almost immediately. He wore faded jeans and his leather jacket. In one hand, he held a bouquet of daisies. Oh, he was good. Sienna hitched her duffel higher on her shoulder and quickened her pace. Aaron broke into a smile and started walking toward her. I missed you, he whispered before crushing her in a hug. Sienna's heart raced, and she wrapped her arms around him, loving the feel of his strong body against hers. Aaron pulled back to look at her, his hazel eyes liquid. I missed you too, Sienna said, the words barely audible. Aaron's eyes flicked to her lips, then to her eyes with a question. She didn't step away. He leaned down, covering her lips with his. Her imagination hadn't come close to the real thing. She slipped her hands behind his neck, tracing the spot with her thumb where she knew his painter's palette tattoo rested. His skin was silky smooth, just as she'd always imagined it. Aaron deepened the kiss, and Sienna pulled herself impossibly closer. She wanted to stay in this moment forever. Eventually, Aaron broke away. He held up the mangled daisies, and she laughed, taking them. For two whole days, I've regretted not doing that before you left, he whispered, resting his forehead against hers. Sienna bit her lip, but even that couldn't control her involuntary smile. I've been wondering why you didn't. He chuckled, low and deep, and kissed her again. Because I was a stupid, stupid man. He grabbed the bag from her arm. Come on, I'll take you home. Chapter 18 Aaron and Sienna talked the whole drive home. Then, because they couldn't seem to get enough of each other, they sat in the car and talked some more. We've got to get to bed, Sienna said when she finally realized it was nearly three o'clock in the morning. We have to leave for television history in four and a half hours. Aaron leaned over the console and kissed Sienna. Yeah, we should probably go to sleep. It was another five minutes before they pulled themselves from the car and walked to the door. Then it was another five before Sienna finally pushed Aaron away and told him it was time to go. I really like you, Sienna, Aaron said. Her back was pressed against the door and he leaned over her, arm resting next to her head. 
I know this is so junior high of me, but I want to see where this goes. I want us to be exclusive. It's what Sienna had wanted, what she'd suspected Aaron wanted to discuss when she got back. But fear gripped her throat. What if, once Aaron knew about Hunter, he rejected her? She thought of Jared, kind, sweet Jared, who would shrug and say, I still accept you if she told him about Hunter. And then she thought of Jared's kisses and how they weren't even in the same hemisphere as Aaron's. She had to take the chance. It was the only way to be fair, to Jared, to Aaron, and to herself. Sienna, Aaron whispered, his breath washing over her and causing her heart to stutter. I'm asking you to be my girlfriend. Sienna laughed, giving herself over to the joy of the moment. She wrapped her arms around Aaron's neck. Yes, I'll be your girlfriend. Aaron grinned, covering her lips with his own. Finally, it's been driving me crazy knowing you were dating other guys. Just one, but not anymore. She grabbed the beaded braid that hung from Aaron's dreadlocks and played with it. You're the one I'm falling for. Sienna finally managed to get inside. Liv had been kind enough to leave a dim lamp on in their bedroom, but otherwise the apartment was dark and quiet. Sienna dropped her bag at the foot of her bed, then sneaked over to Liv's bed and shook her awake. Liv sat up with a start and reached for her glasses. What's wrong? What time is it? 3.15. Sorry for waking you up. It's okay, Liv rubbed her eyes. What's up? Sienna bit her lip, but the grin still spilled through. Aaron kissed me. Quite a few times, actually. Liv's eyes widened. Are you serious? He asked me to be his girlfriend. Liv let out a squeal. I knew it! What did you say? I said yes. That's amazing, S. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate his kisses? Sienna let out a happy sigh, curling up next to Liv. An eleven. That's pretty good. You only rated Jared's, what, a six? Don't be mean. But yeah, there's a chemistry with Aaron that I never had with Jared. Sienna made a face. So now I get to break up with Jared. He is going to hate me. It's not like you two were exclusive, and he knew you were dating Aaron. He'll be a gentleman about it. I hope so. Liv, how am I going to tell Aaron about Hunter? The longer you wait to tell him, the more awkward it's going to be. I know. But if you tell him, he might run away. Exactly. Well, I guess you have to weigh the risks versus the rewards and decide which option you can live with. Sienna chewed on her lip, knowing what she had to do. I have to tell him. Soon. She fell asleep that night with a new melody in her head. A few measures kept playing over and over in her mind. The swell of a first kiss. She knew what came next in the composition, and she knew what to call it. Aaron's Melody. When Sienna woke up for class only three hours later, her eyes were gritty, but her heart was full. Aaron was worth every moment of sacrificed sleep. He was already waiting for her when she arrived at the corner, his breath visible on the chilly October air. He pulled her to him and gave her a long kiss. By the time he stepped away, Sienna could feel herself blushing. Good morning, he said. I missed you. I missed you, too. Aaron grabbed her hand and they headed toward campus. A canopy of trees hung over the pathway, dropping vibrantly colored leaves to the sidewalk with each gust of wind. Are you busy tonight? Aaron asked. I was hoping to take you out on a date to celebrate. Our first official date as boyfriend and girlfriend. That sounds nice, Sienna sighed. But I have a date with Jared tonight. You're going to cancel it, right? I don't think I can. I need to tell him in person, and I'm not free until this evening. 
Aaron looked away and nodded. Sienna grabbed his chin, forcing him to look at her. Someone brushed past them on the sidewalk and she tugged Aaron onto the grass. I'm with you now, Sienna said. I know. He forced a smile. I swear I'm not the jealous type. And we're going on a date tomorrow with Liv and Eldon. You're still okay with that, right? Absolutely. And I'm sorry for being jealous about Jared. In class, Sienna could barely focus on Professor Callahan's lecture. Both she and Aaron had their laptops open, but his secret smiles were beyond distracting. When class ended, Aaron asked, Where are you headed now? The music hall. I have three classes there. Then I'll snag a practice room for the rest of the day. I didn't have much time to play this weekend, and it's freaking me out. I'm done with class at three. Can I come study in the practice room? It won't distract you? He lifted her hand to his lips and brushed a kiss along her knuckles. Not any worse than studying away from you. Sienna blushed. I'll text you which room I'm in. Sounds great. I'll see you in a few hours. Sienna watched Aaron walk away, the long lines of his body making her sigh. Somehow they would make this relationship work. She got in a good three hours of practice before Aaron arrived. He slipped quietly into the room, making sure the door didn't slam shut. She paused, her hands hovering over the keys as he leaned down and kissed her. Don't stop on my account, he said. I'm here to work on homework, not keep you from practicing. Sorry there's not a chair in here. Don't worry about it. Aaron pulled off his jacket and tossed it to the floor, then sank on top of it, his back resting against the wall and long legs splayed in front of him. He opened his backpack and pulled out a textbook. The tattoo on his bicep flashed with the movement. What does your tattoo say? Sienna asked. What? Oh. He lifted his sleeve, showing her the tattoo. Intricate cursive swirled around his arm. Forgiveness is the final form of love, she read. Hope fluttered in Sienna's heart. Maybe telling him about Hunter wouldn't be so difficult after all. Who said that? A man named Reinhold Niebuhr. He was a theologian. When did you get it? Sienna asked. What she really wanted to ask was why. Not long before moving here, I was really struggling with negative feelings toward my family, birth and adoptive, and it was destroying me. I wanted a constant reminder to try and move past it. And has it helped? Mostly. I'm not all the way there yet, but I hope I will be one day. Have you had any luck finding your birth mother? Not yet but my photo's been shared almost a thousand times. That's got to count for something. He brought her hand to his mouth and placed a soft kiss in her palm. Now get to practicing. You won't let me come back if you don't get something done. Sienna gave him a grateful smile and turned back to the piano. She would tell him about Hunter this weekend. That would give her a few days to plan the perfect reveal. She blocked out the world as she practiced, focusing on finger movement and memorization. After another hour, her fingers were stiff and her back ached. She switched to Aaron's melody for a cool down. The notes were easy, the melody beautiful in its simplicity. She paused, grabbing a pencil to add in a chord on the sheet music, then continued playing. The new section sounded just as breathtaking in real life as it had in her head, a gentle crescendo that built in passion, much like her first kiss with Aaron. She held the last note, then stood, cracking her back. You are amazing, Aaron said. Sienna jumped, nearly bumping into him in the confined space. He wrapped his arms around her waist and she blushed, hiding her face against his shoulder. Thank you, she said. What was that last piece? I loved it. I wrote it, she confessed. He nuzzled her neck, his breath hot and enticing. It's nice. What inspired the song? You. And then they were kissing again. 
Several moments later, Sienna pulled away. I've got to go home. Jared's picking me up in an hour. Aaron groaned. You had to ruin it, didn't you? Sienna lightly hit him on the chest. I'll tell him as soon as he gets there. I can't actually go out on a date with him. You'll call me afterward? Maybe there will still be time to do homework together. I'll call you, Sienna said. Liv wasn't home, so Sienna had the apartment to herself. She freshened up a bit, but didn't try too hard. It seemed wrong to get all dolled up for a goodbye. The knock at the door immediately sent Sienna's legs trembling. She'd never broken up with someone before. And while she hadn't been exclusive with Jared, she knew he liked her a lot more than she liked him. Sienna opened the door, feeling even worse when she saw how nice Jared looked. He wore khaki slacks and a light green button-up shirt, his hair neatly combed. Always so put together, always a gentleman. It would have been so much easier if she had fallen for him. Hey, Jared said, giving her a hug. Are you ready to go? Sienna took a deep breath, shutting the door behind him. Actually, can we talk first? Jared's brow furrowed, and she could see in his eyes that he knew. That doesn't sound good. Let's sit down. Sienna sank next to him on the couch, angling her body to face his. She wanted to look away, to talk to the wall or his left ear or something, but he deserved more than that. I don't know how to say this. You're a great guy, Jared, one of the best, and I've really enjoyed our time together. He folded his arms, eyes guarded. You're breaking up with me. I guess so. I'm so sorry. I don't feel as strongly about our relationship as I think you do, and I have feelings for someone else. Aaron. His shoulders slumped and his voice was resigned. Sienna swallowed hard and nodded. Please know I didn't try to lead you on. I only made my decision last night. I can't say I'm surprised. I've seen how you look at him. As much as I wanted us to work, I knew even last spring that you weren't fully invested. I wanted to be. Jared took her hand in his, rubbing a thumb over her knuckles. If I'd been more attentive that month you were gone, would it have made a difference? I don't know, Sienna said. If they'd been a couple, would she have even noticed Aaron? Probably. But would she have broken up with Jared to be with him? I can't believe I screwed up my chance, Jared said. Don't think like that. You're such a good guy. I tried so hard to make our relationship work. Please believe that. I do. Are you absolutely positive about your decision? Sienna thought of the next hurdle in her relationship with Aaron, telling him about Hunter. After seeing his tattoo, she hoped it wouldn't be a deal breaker. Aaron was a good person, and she knew his feelings for her were as strong as hers were for him but there was always the chance that as soon as she told him, he'd break up with her. Yes. She bit her lip, not sure how to tell Jared, but knowing she wanted to. There's something in my past, something no one here knows about but Liv and Pastor Tanner. Aaron might not be able to handle it, but I believe in him and want to give him the benefit of the doubt. It's not fair to you for us to keep dating when I know in my heart it won't work. Jared swallowed. His eyes were tinged red and her heart ached for the pain she was causing him. I can respect that, and I appreciate your honesty. If he's any kind of man at all, whatever you tell him won't matter. Jared leaned forward and kissed her cheek. It wouldn't have mattered to me. I know. Sienna's voice caught. That's part of what's making this so hard. I'm probably a glutton for punishment, but if you change your mind, I'm here and waiting. At least for a while. Thank you, Jared. They both stood and Sienna hugged him tightly. You've been such a good friend to me. 
I'm going to miss hanging out with you. Me too. Sienna walked Jared to the door and gave him one more hug. Then she watched him disappear down the stairs. At the bottom, he stopped and looked up, raising a hand in a farewell gesture. Sienna waved back, then shut the door, slumping against it. Maybe she should tell Aaron about Hunter tonight and get all the difficult discussions out of the way in one swoop. No, she needed to plan the perfect date for them, set the mood, and then tell him. She felt no need to defend her choice to Aaron. It had been the right one for her, but she did want to explain it in a way he'd understand. The door opened, pressing against Sienna. She lurched forward, scrambling to her feet. Liv peered inside, an eyebrow raised. Are you okay? Yeah, sorry. What were you doing? Feeling awful for breaking up with Jared. I thought I saw his car leaving. Looks like you need a hug. Liv pulled Sienna in for an embrace, squeezing tight. Sienna closed her eyes, grateful for the support. Thanks, Sienna said. I know it was the right thing to do, but it was hard. How'd he take it? Better than I expected. But now I have to tell Aaron about Hunter. Soon. Are you sure? No, but if he can't accept that part of me, it's better we break up now before either of us gets more hurt. True. You have to help me. I want to plan the perfect date and tell him this weekend. Aaron's a good guy and he's trying to get over his adoption hang-ups. If I explain it right, he'll understand my side of the story. What did you have in mind? Chapter 19 This is a nice restaurant, Aaron said, craning his neck to take in the turrets. A fountain gurgled softly in the courtyard. The cool October breeze sliced through Sienna's lace jacket and she shivered. I should have known, Sienna said. Eldon's loaded. Liv said he wanted to take us all out. No way am I letting some other guy pay for my girlfriend's dinner. I don't know, Aaron. This place looks pricey. A man in a tuxedo held open one of the ten-foot arched wooden doors, Classical music floated through the speakers, and the hostess gave them an appraising glance. Sienna had felt pretty when she slipped into her nicest black dress, usually reserved for when she played at wedding receptions. It was a simple v-neck with a flowy A-line skirt and beaded belt. Now she felt shabby and underdressed. Do you have a reservation? The woman asked, scowling. Yes, Sienna said. We're meeting Eldon. She floundered, realizing she had no idea what his last name was. The hostess's face instantly relaxed into an over-the-top smile. Mr. Ashmore, of course, right this way. Aaron raised an eyebrow and Sienna shrugged. They followed the hostess to a private alcove near the back of the restaurant. Sienna froze, her hand on Aaron's arm. Liv and a man she presumed was Eldon were locked in a passionate embrace, their lips devouring each other. The hostess cleared her throat and the two sprang apart. The rest of your party has arrived, the hostess said. Excellent. Eldon's voice was crisp and clear. He was handsome in a mature kind of way, with thinning hair and faint crow's feet around his eyes. Liv pulled out a compact and daintily wiped at the corner of her mouth with one finger. Sienna glanced over at Aaron, who looked like he was trying not to laugh. She looked away, her own mirth bubbling forth. Liv had no shame. Glad you guys could make it, Liv said, and introductions were made. Sienna slid into the booth and Aaron sat beside her. It's nice to finally meet you, Eldon, Sienna said. Liv's told me a lot about you. Or about what kind of kisser he was, at least. Sienna really could have done without seeing that firsthand. Eldon gave a lazy smile and played with a lock of Liv's hair. She does like to talk. Wow, what a charmer. Sienna opened the menu and her eyes widened. 
One entree was the equivalent of a week's wages at Dillard's. Aaron reached under the table and gave her knee a gentle squeeze. He glanced pointedly at the menu, then mouthed, don't worry about it. Yeah, like she wasn't going to worry. She couldn't afford anything on this menu, and she doubted Aaron could either. Liv tells me you'll be applying to Juilliard soon, Eldon said. She's an amazing pianist, Liv broke in. She's going to own a music studio someday and be the most sought-after teacher in the country. You're exaggerating, Sienna said, trying not to blush. Not at all. Do you have aspirations for performing? Eldon asked. For a few years, maybe, Sienna said, but not long term. I'd rather help others become performers and compose my own pieces on the side. Eldon nodded, taking a sip of his wine. And what about you, Aaron? I'm majoring in graphic design. I'm hoping to start my own freelance company after graduation. I didn't know that, Sienna broke in. Aaron gave her a wry grin. There's a lot we still don't know about each other, I'm sure. Eldon sniffed. I don't approve of entrepreneurial pursuits. Too much work for not enough pay. That's why I'm with a large law firm. I get the big bucks while letting the partners take on most of the risk. The night went downhill from there. Eldon was uncomfortably direct in his line of questioning, asking specific questions about Aaron and Sienna's career plans and relationship goals. Liv mouthed sorry to Sienna more than once, but then kept breaking out in giggles at random points in the conversation. Sienna didn't know what Eldon's hands were doing under the table, and she had no desire to find out. Sienna ordered no appetizer, no drink, and the cheapest entree on the menu, and noticed Aaron did the same. When the waitress brought the check, there was only one billfold. She sat it on the table and waited. Eldon and Aaron reached for it at the same time. I've got it, Eldon said. I can take care of my own date, Aaron said, his voice tight. Please, I insist. Eldon plucked the billfold from under Aaron's hands and set a card inside, then handed it back to the waitress. Thanks, Aaron said. He was smiling, but Sienna could tell he was annoyed. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Sienna said. It was so nice to get together. Aaron and I better get going now. Early class. Liv rose and gave Sienna a tight hug, air kissing her cheek. Sorry, she whispered. I guess Eldon had a little too much to drink. He's usually not so forward. It's okay, Sienna said. Eldon was just one guy in a long string of men undeserving of Liv's attention. See you at home. As soon as the restaurant doors closed, Aaron let out a huge sigh. Sienna laughed, wrapping her arm around his. Was it that bad? She asked. I can't believe he paid for dinner. I felt like I was back in high school asking my parents for money. I'm just relieved neither of us will have to take out another student loan to cover the check. She giggled. We should have ordered drinks and dessert. Are all the guys live dates like that? Live dates anyone and everyone. Her last boyfriend was a beach bum without an ocean. But yeah, she tends to pick losers. I still haven't figured out why. She deserves better, Aaron said. And those three words somehow made Sienna fall for him even more. In the car, Sienna said, Sorry, this is not how I envisioned our first date as boyfriend and girlfriend going. But now we can probably avoid a second double date, at least for a while. How did you envision our first date as boyfriend and girlfriend? Aaron asked. I don't know. More romantic? Aaron snapped his fingers, then flipped on his blinker to turn a corner. I have an idea. After a few minutes, Sienna said, We're going home? Just so I can pick up a few things. Wait here, I'll be right back. He ran up to his apartment and returned a few minutes later with a large thermos and a blanket. Are you going to tell me what we're doing now? Sienna asked. Aaron just laughed and started driving, heading out of the city. Someone emailed me today, 
he said. They saw my photo and said they had a little brother born on my birthday that their mom gave away. He wasn't sure of the hospital, but it was the same city where I was born. Sienna straightened. Are you serious? It might turn out to be nothing. Or you might find your birth mom. Maybe. Sienna settled back into her seat, watching the city lights fade away as they crossed the Delaware River into New Jersey. If you find her, what are you going to ask? Aaron kept his gaze steadfastly focused on the road, but even in the dim light she could see his jaw muscles working. I'm not sure. I just want closure. I want to somehow come to peace with that part of my life. Sienna rested a hand on his leg and he smiled. She wanted that for him, too, more than anything. Aaron pulled off the freeway and drove into a high school parking lot. He got out of the car and held out a hand. Come on, he said. Sienna looked around. The large brick building was a dark outline against the night sky. Skeletal bleachers rose into the sky, framing a football field. Is this high school supposed to mean something to me? No. When I moved to Philadelphia, I missed the quiet country nights. I found this high school one night when I was aimlessly driving. It's perfect for stargazing. He tossed the blanket over one arm and grabbed the thermos. That better be coffee and not apple cider or something gross like that. Aaron laughed. Not a cider fan. Got it. Good thing I only had coffee on hand. Their breath made tiny puffs in the cool night air. Aaron took her hand and guided her to the football field. They spread out a blanket, then sat beside each other. Aaron wrapped his arms around her as she leaned into him. I think I'm falling in love with you, he whispered in her ear. Sienna turned in his arms, her heart racing. The feeling is mutual, she whispered, and she kissed him. The evening was storybook perfect. They lay on the blanket, and Aaron pointed out made-up constellations while she laughed. Is this how you imagined our first date as a couple? Aaron asked. It's even better than I imagined, Sienna said, and she wasn't going to ruin it by bringing up Hunter. This weekend would come soon enough. I want to take you on a date. Turning the tables, huh? Sounds fun. What did you have in mind? It's a surprise. Just keep Friday afternoon free, maybe around four o'clock? That works. He took a sip of coffee, then handed it to Sienna. As much as I want to stay here forever, we should probably leave. It's almost midnight and we've got an hour drive home. When Sienna slipped into her room that night, it was empty. Liv was probably still out with Eldon. Sienna got ready for bed, then grabbed her phone to plug it in. She frowned when she saw a text message blinking. She must have been too wrapped up in Aaron to hear the buzz. She clicked it open. I called and talked to the Petersons tonight. They didn't let me talk to Hunter. I don't know if they're going to let me see him. Call me. Sienna threw the phone on her bed like it was lava. She couldn't blame Kira and David for being hesitant, and Sienna wasn't going to convince them otherwise. Why on earth did Dane think she would? She wasn't about to call him. Their relationship was over, and what he did from here on out had nothing to do with her. She crawled into bed, her mouth tasting sour. Leave it to Dane to ruin a perfectly good evening. Chapter 20 Sienna looked around the kitchen, hoping she hadn't forgotten anything for their date. Potato salad? Check. Fried chicken? Check. Rolls, chocolate chip cookies, soda, chips, check, 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 check. All homemade, of course. This wasn't the type of thing to spring on someone after serving store-bought potato salad and deli counter chicken. She'd gone to the grocery store last night and started cooking like mad as soon as class was over today. Her mother always said the way to a man's heart was through his stomach. Sienna planned to put that theory to the test. She grabbed her laundry basket and dumped the contents onto her bed, then went back into the kitchen and started piling the items for the picnic inside. Blanket, food, frisbee. 
Maybe they'd need something fun to break the tension after she told him about Hunter. If he stuck around once she told him. Stop it, Sienna said aloud to the empty kitchen. Liv was at play practice again, so Sienna was alone. Aaron was not the kind of guy who would dump her because of something that had happened two years before they'd ever met. It might take him a while to get used to the idea, but they'd get through it. Her phone rang. Dane, again. She quickly sent the call to voicemail. She knew she needed to talk to him soon, but she couldn't deal with it right now. She looked around the kitchen, making sure she hadn't missed anything. A knock came at the door, and she jumped. Four o'clock. Aaron was right on time. She grabbed the laundry basket off the counter and headed to the door. Hey, Aaron said, leaning in for a kiss. He raised an eyebrow. We're going to the laundromat for our date? Sienna tried to smile at the teasing tone, but her stomach was rolling with anxiety. A picnic. I had to get creative. Sounds fun. Like the painting at the art gallery. Exactly. Sienna said, relieved he'd made the connection. Aaron took the basket from her, sniffing. He gave a whoop. Fried chicken! You remembered! The painting would be so upset. Well, I didn't want to cause you emotional distress. Except that she was totally going to. Smells amazing. It's even homemade. Your mama isn't the only one who can cook. Aaron put a hand to his chest. You're stealing my heart, darling. Have I ever told you how much I love picnics? You even remember the frisbee. That's the most important part. I thought the fried chicken was the most important part. Well, okay. Frisbee is second. Sienna tried to smile. For me, it's feeding ducks. Okay, and flying kites. But I didn't have a kite on hand for today. She motioned to the breadcrumbs. There's a pond, so I thought we'd share our bounty. Sounds like a fantastic afternoon. The park was picture perfect. Green grass spread out in every direction, and a small pond was nestled at one end. A few people passed by on the walking trail with their dogs, but otherwise the place was empty. Aaron carried the basket, and Sienna led them to a sunny patch of grass near the pond, far away from the walking trail so they'd have plenty of privacy. It's beautiful. Aaron said, looking around. And the weather couldn't be more cooperative. It was the perfect fall day, crisp without being cold. Everything was quiet for the next few minutes as they unpacked the food and started eating. Mmm, Aaron said. Don't tell my mom, but your fried chicken's even better than hers. That is a high compliment. You've been holding out on me. Sienna's head snapped up. A bird nearby startled and flew off, squawking. What do you mean? Aaron raised an eyebrow. Just that I knew you were an amazing pianist, but I had no idea you could cook, too. I'd be a fool to let you go, especially now that I have you all to myself. She hoped so. Sienna relaxed, taking a bite of her potato salad. I messaged that guy for a few hours last night, Aaron said, the one who thinks he might be my brother. And? Aaron plucked a blade of grass and twisted it into knots. The information seems to match up. He's going to talk to his mom this weekend. Wow, this is big. I know. Where does he live? Maryland, not far outside Baltimore. It's only about a 90-minute drive. His mom lives in Baltimore, too. He laced his fingers through hers. I want you to come with me to meet him, Sienna. Sienna sucked in a breath. Are you sure? Yes. Being adopted is a big part of who I am, and I want you to be a part of it. I'd be honored. There's actually something I was hoping to talk to you about as well. She took a deep breath, her stomach twisting into knots as she looked into Aaron's curious eyes. Okay. His phone rang, breaking the moment. Sorry, I thought I silenced it. Hold on. It's my sister. She hardly ever calls me, so it must be important. Sienna nodded, her heart in her throat. His sister couldn't have waited five minutes to call? She just wanted to get this over with. 
The anticipation was making her nauseous. It's going to be fine, she repeated over and over like a mantra. He'll be surprised, but it won't change anything. Hi, Dana, Aaron said. Sienna watched him, fighting the urge to play with his hair or stroke his face, anything to touch him again. I'm kind of busy, Aaron said. Uh-huh, what? Okay. Why didn't you tell me about this last week? Or last month? Yeah. That doesn't help me now. There's no way I can come home this weekend. Well, I have homework and a job. I can't just drop everything at a moment's notice. No, you tell Mom that you didn't involve me in your plans and that's why I'm not there. No. No, I can't talk about this right now. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Bye. Aaron threw the phone across the blanket. I can't believe they did this. Sienna's chest tightened. Who did what? My sisters. Aaron let out a growl, covering his face with his arm. It's my mom's birthday this weekend. They've been planning a surprise party for over a month, apparently. My sisters all thought someone else had called me and just figured out today that I didn't know. What a pain, Sienna said, trying to focus on this conversation instead of the sick pit in her stomach. I'm sorry. I called my mom a couple of weeks ago and asked if I should come home this weekend, but of course she didn't know about the party, so she told me they didn't have anything planned. So your sisters will be there? Yes, they all still live there. Once again, I wasn't included in their plans, and I'm the last to find out. There's no way I can make it to Virginia this weekend on such short notice. The party's tomorrow night. Is your mom going to be really upset you're not there? Probably. I'm sure it'll hurt her feelings. Aaron blew out a breath. It's like everyone forgets I'm part of the family. I'm always the afterthought, and I'm always the last one to know. I'm not Aaron, their son or brother. I'm Aaron, their adopted son and brother. I get so frustrated. He let out a growl. And now they're going to make out like it's me who refuses to fully participate in the family because I'm not there for the stupid party when really I'm not there because they didn't tell me until it was too late. I'm supposed to be there in less than 24 hours. Sienna couldn't help herself. She reached out and played with a strand of beads in Aaron's hair. I'm sorry. Do they do it intentionally? No. At least I don't think so. Maybe subconsciously? I try so hard to be the son they want me to be, but I can't even come close when they refuse to let me into their lives. I'm sorry, Sienna repeated. I didn't realize it was like this for you. Aaron captured Sienna's hand and pulled it to his cheek. I want you to understand who I am as a person, and I want to understand you. His hands threaded into her hair as he kissed her deeply. I want to make this work. Me too, Sienna said. Aaron sighed. I have to go home. If I leave tonight and come home early on Sunday, I can make it work. How far is it to home? About six hours. He crushed her to him in a hug, and she could feel the stress in the tight way he held her. Please come home with me. I don't know if I can get through this weekend without you. Going home. Meeting the parents. Blood roared through her ears. Really? He ran a hand through her hair, and she shivered. I don't want to be away from you all weekend. Please come with me. You don't have to work, right? She didn't have anything to do this weekend but homework. Sienna saw the vulnerability in his expression, the desperate need for someone to see his family situation and tell him he wasn't crazy. Maybe he was blowing things out of proportion, but maybe his family did treat him different because he was adopted. Sienna had to see for herself. I'll come, she said. Really? Really. I don't have any performances this weekend, and I want to meet your family. This means a lot to me. Aaron rubbed his thumb over the top of her knuckles. This feels like a big deal. It doesn't have to be. What if I want it to be? I want it to be, too. Sienna leaned forward and kissed him. 
My family's gonna love you. Probably more than they like me. Thank you. We're a couple, right? That means I'm here for you no matter what. The same goes for me. Wasn't there something you were going to tell me? Yes, but now wasn't the time. Aaron needed her this weekend, and they needed a less stressful situation to rebuild their trust after she told him about Hunter. She would tell Aaron next week. Meeting his family might even help her be sensitive, while also helping him understand why she had made the choice she had. Just that I'm really enjoying spending time together, Sienna said. You did all this just to tell me that? I really, really like you. Aaron laughed and wrapped her in a hug. Me too. But seriously, what were you going to tell me? I'll tell you later. This weekend is all about you and your family. Chapter 21 Liv lounged on her bed, the tight cat suit hugging her body and face still covered in crazy makeup. So let me get this straight. You're going home with Aaron for the weekend. Right. Sienna grabbed a pair of pants and tossed them into her duffel bag. And you didn't tell Aaron about Hunter? A twinge of unease ricocheted through Sienna's stomach. Had she made the right decision? Right. Okay, explain something to me. How the heck did you get from, I'm going to tell my boyfriend about Hunter, to, I'm going to meet my boyfriend's family and not tell him about Hunter? Seems like a pretty big leap. What was I supposed to do? He was really upset about the phone call from his sister and went on and on about how much he resents his family for treating him differently because he's adopted. It wasn't exactly a great time to tell him. Sienna pulled a few shirts off their hangers and started folding them. He's struggling right now, and I think he really needs me this weekend. I can't dump more on him right now. Going home for the weekend would have been a great way for him to get some space and digest the news. Sienna bit her lip. Yeah, but telling him when he was already experiencing so many negative emotions felt like setting our relationship up for failure. It'll be better if I wait until next week. He's super tense over this party. Maybe his family really does treat him differently. Not all parents are as awesome as Kira and David. That's what I want to find out. Sienna threw the last few items in her bag and zipped it closed. I'll tell him, okay? Today just wasn't the right time. If you say so. Liv rolled to her feet, the movements fluid and cat-like, a leftover of today's rehearsal. She hugged Sienna. I just don't want to see you get hurt. Sienna returned the hug, swallowing hard. Aaron isn't the type of guy to hurt me. He better not or I'll kick his trash or tell Eldon to hire guys to rough him up at least. I've got to be careful with cats in two weeks and Ieda right before Christmas. No way am I letting my understudy take over either show. Sienna rolled her eyes. Her phone buzzed and she quickly read the text from Dane. See, I'm begging you. I'm going to be in Utah next month for a game and I want to see Hunter. Help me convince the Petersons. Sienna showed the text to Liv. See how much stress I'm dealing with right now? Are you going to help him? No, I can't deal with Dane right now. A knock echoed through the apartment. Sienna cast one last quick glance around the room, then hoisted her duffel bag onto her shoulder. I think you're going down a dangerous road, Liv said, following her into the living room. I'll worry about that on Monday. This weekend is about being there for Aaron and making a good impression on his family. Now, shh. Sienna opened the door and gave Aaron a quick kiss. Hi. Ready to go? He asked, taking her duffel bag. Sienna nodded. Liv pulled the door open wider, then folded her arms and glared at Aaron. At least, Sienna thought it was a glare. It was hard to tell through all the cat makeup. Meeting the family, huh? Sounds pretty serious. I hope it is, Aaron said, smiling at Sienna. You know, Sienna isn't like most girls. She has really strict standards, and God is really important to her. Those things are important to me, too, Aaron said. 
Just checking. Okay, okay, Sienna interrupted. We've got to go. Bye, Liv. Make good choices, Liv called at their retreating backs. Aaron waved. Sienna could tell from the lines around his eyes that he was holding back a laugh. Sorry about that, Sienna said. Liv's overprotective. I think it's sweet. I'm glad you have someone looking out for you. Aaron popped the trunk on his car and set her bag inside. Once they were in the car, he handed her his phone. It's hooked to the stereo. You're in charge of the music selection. Nice! Sienna scrolled through the playlist. You know, they say you can tell a lot about a person by their music tastes. And what can you tell about me from mine? You've got a decent selection. A little heavy metal, which tells me you have a rebellious streak and like to swim against the current. Aaron laughed and pointed to his dreads. I go to church every Sunday looking like this. I don't think that's a secret. Sienna continued scrolling, hiding a smile. You also have some love ballads, which tells me you're a romantic at heart. Classic rock, so you appreciate the tried and true favorites. Sienna stopped. Justin Bieber? I think I just lost all respect for you. Aaron's ears turned red. He has some good songs. Uh-uh, I don't think so. I would think a music major would find something to appreciate in every song. Sienna laughed. She picked a classic rock song and pushed play. It's a good thing I'm picking the tunes for this trip. Fine, you win. Having Justin on my phone is embarrassing. Don't tell anyone, but I have a few Britney Spears songs on mine. So what you're telling me is we all have embarrassing music obsessions? Pretty much. Sienna set the phone to shuffle, then turned the volume down so they could talk more comfortably. Tell me what I'm getting into with this trip. I want to know about your family. Okay. My mom's a pretty typical housewife. She's really involved in the community, and she's very opinionated. What about your dad? He works for the post office and loves sports and fishing. He and my mom bicker a lot. Frank, why didn't you take out the trash? Frank, the toilet's clogged. Frank, didn't I tell you dinner was ready five minutes ago? I swear they're constantly on each other's nerves. But they really love each other, too, and they've made it work for 35 years. That's pretty admirable. Yeah, it is. And they're good parents. I love my family, and I'm grateful for the support and love they give me. I just wish I didn't feel like such an outsider. Sienna covered Aaron's hand with her own, and he gave her a quick smile. What about your sisters? Sienna asked. I want to hear about them, too. Dana's 12 years older than me and married with three kids. She's bossy, but gets the job done. Lisa's married, too. Two kids for her. Madison is closest to me in age. She's pregnant with her first, and they're planning a summer wedding. The three of them together are like clucking hens. They're always up to something. And usually, they forget to include me in their plans. Like the party? Like the party. Maybe that's more of a sister thing than an adoption thing. Aaron shrugged. Maybe. All I know is it's another reason why I don't feel like I belong. They talked for the next four hours about everything under the sun. Movies, books, childhood memories. We should be there in about an hour, Aaron said as they passed a sign announcing the mileage to the upcoming towns. What can I expect when I get there? Sienna asked. Do they know I'm coming? Yes. My sisters and their families will probably be there, dying to meet you. Dana said she'd tell Mom we're coming for her birthday and that I'm bringing my new girlfriend. The party's still a secret. Aaron grinned. My sisters and Mom will try to talk you to death. They'll probably tell you lots of embarrassing stories about my childhood and try to make me blush. Will it work? Depends on how embarrassing the story is. What about your dad? He'll say hi and then disappear into his man cave to watch football. Fair enough. Sienna tried to quell the butterflies bursting to life in her stomach. She could do this. Once she met his family, maybe she'd finally understand where Aaron was coming from. Because regardless of how this weekend went, 
She had to tell him about Hunter when they got home. Here we are, Aaron said. They approached the city limits sign, the headlights flashing over it briefly before it disappeared behind them. Sienna couldn't make out much in the darkness, just the outlines of buildings and trees. He turned off the main road and started down a peaceful lane. Houses were set back from the road, lit windows peeking through the thick trees that seemed to be everywhere. He rounded a bend and turned down a private drive. The house hid behind dense trees, porch lights illuminating the wraparound porch. Is that it? Sienna asked. Aaron nodded. That's home. You ready? No. She had never met a boyfriend's parents. Dane hardly counted. They had been in high school and she had known his family for years. Sienna swallowed, her nerves tingling in anticipation. She had no idea what she was about to walk into, despite the prepping she had received from Aaron. But it didn't matter how nervous she was. This was about Aaron and what he needed right now. She'd get over her nerves and get to the bottom of this. She took a deep breath, then nodded. I'm ready. Chapter 22 Sienna stared up at Aaron's childhood home, her knees trembling with nerves. The house was modest, neither too small nor too large. One dimly glowing porch light revealed red siding and white trim. Mature trees towered in the yard, shadows against the already dark night. Across from the driveway sprawled a pasture. She could just make out the outline of a barn and what appeared to be two horses grazing. Sienna nudged Aaron's shoulder with her own, trying to make her voice light instead of nervous. You didn't tell me you were a farm boy. Why don't you have a southern accent? Aaron threw his head back and laughed. My parents ask me the same thing all the time. I had a slight one, but lost it within a week of moving to Pennsylvania. He grabbed both their bags from the trunk of the car, and Sienna followed him to the front door. She was surprised when he rang the bell instead of just barging in. The door burst open, and a woman stood there, her sagging arms open wide. Aaron! Hi, Mom. She wrapped him in a tight hug, the top of her gray-streaked blonde head barely reaching his shoulder. Aaron leaned down and kissed her on the cheek. And this must be Sierra, she said. Dana told us you were bringing a girlfriend. It's Sienna, Aaron corrected. Sienna, this is my mom, Jessica. Mom, this is Sienna. Jessica wrapped her arms around Sienna in a hug, which she returned. Jessica was soft and comforting, with a faint floral scent surrounding her. Not at all what Sienna had expected. I'm so glad to meet you, Jessica said. We didn't even know Aaron was dating anyone. Had Jessica just pronounced his name with a Spanish accent? It's a recent development, Sienna said. We met at the beginning of the semester. Well, come in, come in. The living room was cluttered with knickknacks and framed photos, but vacuum lines in the carpet and a gleaming mantelpiece said it had been recently cleaned. A faded floral couch and love seat filled the room. Magazines scattered over the end table, a hodgepodge of home goods and southern living selections. Your father's already asleep and your sisters will be here soon. Jessica held up her phone. They wanted me to text when you got here. Sienna, you'll meet their kids tomorrow. Jessica lumbered over to the worn leather recliner, her apron releasing a thin cloud of flour as she sat. I must say this was a surprise having you show up like this. I know I told you to stay at school, but I'm glad you came. Me too, Aaron said. He didn't mention anything about the surprise party or how his sisters had neglected to invite him. Sienna's heart swelled with pride. Aaron was a good man who respected his family. It made her like him even more. I'm guessing you want to get settled, Jessica said. The two of you can take Dana's old room for the weekend. It has the most comfortable bed. The sheets are fresh and I just cleaned the bathroom yesterday. Sienna's eyes widened and she turned panicked eyes to Aaron. He wrapped an arm around her shoulders and gave her a reassuring squeeze. Sienna can take Dana's room. I'll stay in my room this weekend. 
Aaron said. Jessica waved a hand dismissively. I'm old, but I'm not old-fashioned. Mom. Aaron's voice held a warning. Separate rooms are fine. Jessica adjusted her apron, mouth turned down in a frown. No need to get snippy. Aaron gave Sienna an apologetic look and grabbed both their bags. Come on, I'll show you to your room. Your sisters are on their way, Jessica called after their retreating figures. Don't be too long. Aaron led Sienna up the stairs and into the first room on the left, shutting the door behind them. The walls were painted a soft eggshell. A basic navy comforter covered the bed, and sheer curtains hung at the one window. A dresser stood against the wall, the top devoid of any knickknacks or photos. Sienna gave Aaron a meaningful look and opened the door a crack. Sorry about that, he said. She raised up on tiptoes, pressing a light kiss to his lips. Thank you. I didn't expect her to offer us one room. No, thank you for coming with me. Sienna pulled away a few pleasant minutes later, blushing. Is this your room or Dana's? Dana's. My room's next door and the bathroom is at the end of the hallway. Clean towels should be in the linen closet. Thank you. Sienna lightly traced the tattoo on Aaron's bicep. Am I crazy, or does your mom pronounce your name with an accent? Yeah. Aaron scrubbed a hand over his face. She and my dad wanted to honor my Mexican heritage, so they gave me the acute mark above the O. I dropped that in high school. No one ever pronounced it right anyway, but my family still uses it. Okay, that was a little strange. Sienna was beginning to see why Aaron felt like an outcast. I'll pronounce your name however you want me to. You can pronounce my name however you like, as long as you keep on dating me. He leaned down and kissed her. The cracked door flew open. Sienna jumped away from Aaron, her cheeks flaming. A woman leaned against the doorframe with a smirk. She had blonde hair pulled up in a ponytail and large, startlingly blue eyes. Found them, the woman called. When you two are done, come downstairs. Dana and Madison are here, and we want to meet Sienna. She left, closing the door behind her. Sienna hit her head in Aaron's chest. Oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Was that your sister? Aaron chuckled. Yeah, that was Lisa. I guess I should properly introduce you to them. I don't know if I can show my face now. She couldn't believe she had been caught kissing Aaron, especially after they had made such a big deal about separate rooms. They'll tease us, but it'll be okay. I'll be right beside you the whole time. In the living room, three very blonde women with very fair skin stood behind the couch, whispering. They all looked up when Aaron and Sienna entered. Glad you could join us, the girl with the ponytail, Lisa, said. Her eyes twinkled with mirth, and she held out a hand to Sienna. Hi, I'm Lisa. Before Sienna could say anything, the shortest sister had her arms wrapped around Sienna in a hug. I'm Madison. She placed a hand on her back, and Sienna noticed her protruding stomach. And I'm Dana, the third woman said, holding out her hand. We're so glad you could come. No thanks to you. Aaron glanced behind him, presumably to make sure Jessica wasn't near. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Dana shrugged. Madison was in charge of invitations. Madison put a hand on her hip. That's not fair. Lisa said she'd mention it when she called. She never called, Aaron said. Gabe was going to call you for help on an art project for school, but he ran out of time and I forgot, Lisa said. I didn't think Madison would neglect to send you an invite. We're being rude, Dana said, and her tone indicated the conversation was over. It's so nice to meet you, Sienna. We're glad you could come, even if we almost did forget to invite you. So how long have you been dating? Madison asked. Aaron wrapped an arm around Sienna's waistline and pulled her against him. Fire spread through her body at his touch. Just over a month. Aaron said. Lisa raised an eyebrow. 
So it's new. You've never brought a girl home so quickly. That was news to Sienna. She liked the idea that she meant more to Aaron than any other girlfriend had. Hopefully that meant he would quickly get over her news when she told him about Hunter. When it's right, it's right, Aaron said. He gave Sienna a tender smile and her heart did backflips. We're happy for you, Madison said. Yes, very happy. Now let's talk about the party before Mom comes back. Dana handed Aaron a list and a credit card. I need you to go to Walmart and pick up these things. Dad said it's fine to use his card. Think you can handle that? Right now? It's almost midnight. I know, but we need your help getting things set up in the morning, and we didn't have time to shop today. We're going back to my house right now to assemble the party favors. Aaron snatched the list out of Dana's hand, and Sienna could see the frustration in his tightly coiled muscles. We'll take care of it. Lisa gave Aaron a kiss on the cheek. You're a peach. Get the pretty plates, okay? Something festive, not just the boring white ones. Let Sienna pick them out and get Mom a birthday present from you while you're there. Since no one bothered to tell me about the party, I mailed Mom a card last week. A card? Madison snorted. Get her a nice robe or some new pajamas. She really needs both of those things. Aaron rolled his eyes and grabbed Sienna's hand. Come on, let's go. Chapter 23 Sienna woke up early the next morning and tiptoed to the bathroom, where she quickly showered and dressed. Another text arrived from Dane, begging her to contact the Petersons. She knew she needed to call him, and she would, after she told Aaron everything. One crisis at a time. Downstairs, she found Aaron and his mom in the kitchen. The room was dated with faded wallpaper and cheery blue cabinets, but it was cozy, too, with a breakfast nook in one corner and the yeasty smell of fresh bread permeating the air. Aaron hopped up from the counter and gave Sienna a kiss. Good morning. How did you sleep? Great, thanks. You're right, that bed is insanely comfortable. Told you, Jessica said. A timer went off. She grabbed some hot pads and set a pan of cinnamon rolls on the counter. Sienna's mouth started watering. Wait for these to cool, then frost them, will you, Aaron? I'm sorry I can't stay, but I promised Sue last week that we could hit the tent sales early this morning, then get pedicures. I tried to reschedule, but she was insistent. I'll be back this afternoon. Sure thing, Mom. Jessica pointed a finger at him. Make this girl feel welcome. Help yourself to anything in the fridge or pantry, sweetie. Thank you. Sienna said. She wasn't sure if she should call Aaron's mom Jessica or Mrs. Johnson, so she decided she'd avoid using names until she could ask Aaron. As soon as Jessica left the room, Aaron pulled out two plates and put a cinnamon roll on each of them. He dropped a generous dollop of frosting on top, then handed one to Sienna. They're better warm, he said. I'll frost the rest later. Sienna took a bite of the cinnamon roll, and her eyes rolled back in pleasure. Your mom knows how to bake. She's an excellent cook, too. The door banged open, and Lisa, Dana, and Madison walked in, their arms filled with packages. We've been waiting almost 20 minutes for mom to leave, Lisa said. Sue had to talk fast to convince her not to cancel. She wanted to stay home with you. Aaron rolled his eyes. So now it's my fault? Lisa opened her mouth, but Madison interrupted. Cinnamon rolls, yum. She dropped her bags on the counter and grabbed a plate, helping herself to one. Eat quickly, Dana said. We've got a lot to do before the party this afternoon. The morning was a rush of activity. Aaron and Sienna set up round tables and plastic chairs in the spacious backyard, while his sisters argued over whether to use blue or white tablecloths. It felt weird to be outside setting up tables and chairs in October, but the Virginia weather was still a balmy 70 degrees. The grass was summer green and freshly mowed, and the neatly pruned rose bushes still held full blooms. It wasn't long before Aaron's brothers-in-law, with their children in tow, increased the noise level significantly. Aaron's five nieces and nephews, 
from the one-year-old toddling about on unsteady legs to the ten-year-old who pretended indifference, all seemed to adore him. He tossed them in the air, sneaked them cinnamon rolls, and chased them around the yard until his sisters yelled at him for not helping. But they chastised him with the fond annoyance only sisters could display, and Sienna could tell they loved him. The three sisters directed their sometimes unwilling group of helpers. The last hour was complete chaos. Aaron rushed armfuls of supplies out of the backyard and into the kitchen while Sienna arranged food on platters. She had to admit that while his sisters were bossy, they'd managed to transform the backyard into an elegant garden party in just a few hours. Barnwood vases with burlap bows held bright yellow daisies in the center of each table. Party lights had been strung about the yard. A quilt, handmade by Dana as a birthday present to their mom, hung on an easel near a small table. Madison had made a guest book with pictures from Jessica's childhood, and Lisa created an elegant chalkboard sign to welcome guests. Guests started filtering in, dressed in everything from cheerful blouses to worn jeans. Five minutes! Dana called as she set a beautiful three-tiered birthday cake on the dessert table. Sue just texted and said they're almost home. Sienna looked around for Aaron, feeling suddenly self-conscious and unsure of her role. Her eyes roved the crowded backyard, searching for Aaron's signature dreads among the fifty or so guests. She found him near the refreshment table, setting down a large fruit platter. He looked up as though sensing her gaze and strode over. Are we supposed to hide? Sienna asked, looking around the backyard. Round tables surrounded by chairs filled most of the area. A refreshment table ran along one side. Aaron laughed. Unfortunately, no. I'd pay good money to see my sisters crouched under a buffet table. Quiet! Lisa hissed to the small crowd, motioning with her hands. The side gate creaked open and Jessica appeared, looking pretty in a sundress with her hair pulled back in a twist. Surprise! Everyone yelled. Jessica placed a hand over her heart, laughing. Oh my! Happy birthday! Everyone called out. I'm going to give her a hug, Aaron said. Sienna nodded and hung back. She stayed on the outer fringe of the tables, not wanting to sit, but not sure where else to go. A Hispanic woman sidled up next to Sienna, her face wrinkled and back stooped with age. Hello, she said, the words heavily accented. I'm Camila Hernandez. I live a few houses down from here. How do you know Jessica? I'm Aaron's girlfriend. The word felt strange on Sienna's lips, but she liked it. My name's Sienna. Oh, it's so nice to meet you. I love little Aaron. She pronounced his name with the accent, just like his family did. When he was younger, Jessica brought him over all the time so I could teach him Spanish. Aaron had mentioned his parents made him learn Spanish. Learning a foreign language was good for a child, but it was a little strange they had pushed the matter so hard when he clearly had resisted. Did his sisters come too? Sienna asked. No, they never had time but Jessica thought it important that Aaron be connected to his culture. The adoption agency told them his birth mother was Mexican. Did Aaron like to come? Sienna asked. Camilla pursed her lips. He never seemed very interested and didn't work very hard at his lessons, but he was always respectful, and I enjoyed having him over. Aaron strode across the yard, a broad smile on his face. He immediately leaned down and hugged the tiny woman. Camilla, I've missed you. How are you? Estoy bien. Ella es muy bonita. Aaron grinned. Yes, she is. Un español, muchacho. Sienna doesn't speak Spanish. These days, I only use it in my language classes. Ah, you can teach her. Maybe one day, Aaron said. She could tell from the tone of his voice that what he really meant was no way. I don't know many Spanish speakers in Pennsylvania, Aaron continued. That's too bad, Camilla said. I'm sure there's a strong Mexican community somewhere in Philadelphia. Dia de los Muertos is only a couple of weeks away. 
I'm sure there would be parties where you could make friends. Sienna raised an eyebrow. Aaron has friends in Philadelphia. There's me, Evan, his roommate Lane. Aaron smirked. I haven't been in the city long yet. You must find the Mexican community, Camilla said. I'll ask my granddaughter to look on the internet for you. Okay, Camilla seemed to be pushing the culture thing pretty hard, but she was an eccentric neighbor, not family. Yes, his family pronounced his name with a Spanish accent, but it wasn't uncommon for adoptive parents to try and honor their child's heritage when choosing a name. Yes, his sisters seemed to leave him out a lot, but they were three bossy women. Sienna doubted it had anything to do with the adoption. We're going to sing to mom and start serving the cake now, Lisa called across the crowd. It was nice seeing you, Camilla, Aaron said. He took Sienna's hand and pulled her away. We'll talk later, Camilla called. The crowd had congregated around the birthday cake. Aaron and Sienna slipped into the outer edge where they could just see Jessica. She glowed as they all sang happy birthday, her cheeks flushed a becoming pink. Jessica blew out her candles and everyone clapped. Look how happy Mom is, Aaron said. I'm glad we came. Me too. Seeing his family went a long way toward helping her understand him. Come and grab some birthday cake, Dana called to the guests. Carrot cake with cream cheese frosting, Mom's favorite. Mmm, Aaron nuzzled Sienna's ear. My favorite, too. Lisa breezed by them. I almost forgot. We bought a flan for you, Aaron. It's in the kitchen. Why don't you take Camilla a piece, too? Sienna's mouth dropped open. Flan? Oh, yes, Lisa said. It's a traditional Mexican dessert. Mom always makes sure we had some on hand for Aaron when there was a celebration. I knew she'd get mad if I forgot. It's from the bakery. Sorry, I didn't have time to bake it myself. Don't forget Camilla. Lisa waved, disappearing into the crowd. Aaron clenched his jaw. Have you tried flan? It's got the strongest taste, like honey mixed with cheese that went bad. It's disgusting. So why don't you tell them? Sienna asked. I have, but they can't seem to grasp that not all Mexicans love all Mexican foods. Aaron tugged her toward the dessert table. Come on, let's sneak some carrot cake and go eat it where they won't harass me. This was getting weirder and weirder. A traditional Mexican dessert? An accent in his first name? Spanish lessons with the grandmotherly Hispanic neighbor? It seemed a little much. They did treat Aaron differently, not because they were trying to be cruel, but because they were trying so hard to respect his heritage. Sienna could see how isolated that made Aaron feel. Guests started to leave as the sun sank lower on the horizon. By the time the last guest left, it was completely dark. Leave the cleanup for tomorrow, Jessica said, wrapping an arm around Aaron's waist. The girls can help us after you leave. We don't mind helping, Mom, Aaron said. Frank grunted and waved a hand. Aaron's father was tall with the build of a football player who had stopped exercising. He hadn't spoken much and had a severe face that was more than a little intimidating. You ain't helping with nothing, he said. Go visit with your mom and sisters. He leaned down, kissing his wife on the cheek. I'm going to watch the game highlights. Happy birthday, dear. Thank you, dear. Jessica patted Frank's cheek, then started shooing everyone inside. You heard your father. This can wait until tomorrow. Frank disappeared into the den with a bottle of beer, and Aaron's nieces and nephews ran around the house with reckless abandon. Jessica paused in the kitchen, pointing to the untouched flan that sat in a clear plastic container on the counter. What's this? she asked, pulling the flan toward her. Dana, didn't you tell Aaron this flan was here? Lisa put a hand on her hip and glared. I thought I told you to share a piece with Camilla. I don't like flan. Aaron threw up his hands. How many times do I have to tell you? There's no need to be embarrassed. We don't mind buying something different for you. Here, we'll all have a piece. Jessica pulled a knife from a drawer. 
Madison, grab six plates. I'm 22 years old, Mom. I don't feel a compulsion to hide my opinions. Honestly, it's no trouble. The plates, Madison. Sienna looked at Aaron, her eyes wide. He sank onto a bar stool, shoulders slumped. Aaron really doesn't like flan, Sienna said. Jessica paused, knife poised over the golden custard. Sorry, dear? Sienna glanced at Aaron, then cleared her throat, speaking louder. Aaron doesn't like flan. He really does prefer carrot cake, like you. Jessica dropped the knife, frowning at her son. Is this true, Aaron? Mom, I've literally been saying this for years. Well, yeah, Dana said, but you're always a pain in the butt about Mexican stuff. We thought you were just being obstinate. Camilla said it's natural for kids in a foreign land to try and hide their culture to fit in, Jessica said. I'm not in a foreign land, Aaron said, his voice rising. Guys, I've lived here my entire life. You were there. I think it's nice you want to honor Aaron's culture, Sienna said quickly, breaking into the conversation. But I think what Aaron's trying to say is that he really doesn't feel much of a connection to it. He wants to feel a connection to you, his family. Huh. Jessica looked at her daughters, who all had confused looks on their faces. I guess I never thought of it that way. You really don't like flan? I really don't like flan, Aaron said. Good, Madison said, because that stuff is gross. Jessica laughed. She picked up the container and walked to the trash can, dropping the entire custard in. Well, that's that, she said. Who's up for Scrabble? Aaron's sisters followed Jessica out of the room, talking about the high points of the party. Aaron pulled Sienna close as they followed behind. Thank you, he whispered. It was a small victory, minuscule, really, but Sienna was happy to have helped. They stayed up late, playing games and talking. They behaved like a normal family, arguing over game rules and teasing each other about cheating. For the most part, they treated Aaron like one of them. But Sienna had seen enough subtle differences throughout the day that she finally understood why Aaron felt excluded. His adoption was different than Hunter's, and her heart ached for the loneliness he felt. They got an early start home the next morning. Even though she had enjoyed herself, Sienna was glad. Aaron needed the afternoon to do homework before classes the next day, and Sienna was desperate to spend an afternoon in the practice room, working on her Juilliard pieces. As they pulled into Sienna's apartment parking lot, Aaron leaned over and kissed her. Thank you, he whispered. For what? For coming home with me. I know it was probably awkward and uncomfortable, but I was so glad to have you there. Sienna placed a hand on Aaron's cheek. I wanted to come, and I'm glad I did. Seeing where you came from helps me understand you better. You mean my crazy family doesn't make you want to run for the hills? Not at all. She just hoped when she told Aaron about Hunter, he wouldn't be the one running. I'm heading to the practice room as soon as I unpack. Want to come? Sure. I'll meet you at our corner in a half hour. Sienna trudged up the stairs to her apartment and unlocked the door. Liv was in the living room, sitting in some yoga pose with textbooks spread all around her. Hey, Sienna said. Studying? I've got a test in music history tomorrow that I'm totally unprepared for. How did it go with Aaron's family? Sienna dropped her duffel bag on the floor and sank onto the couch. Aaron's not imagining things. His family is weird. They totally treat him differently. Liv raised an eyebrow. How? His name? It's not Aaron. It's Aaron. Like the Spanish pronunciation? With the accent and everything. Liv covered a yawn with her hand. Okay, that's a little odd, but lots of couples who adopt international babies do that. They made him take Spanish lessons from a Mexican neighbor growing up. Spanish is a useful language to learn. They only made him take lessons, not his sisters. 
live. When they cut the birthday cake for his mom, his sisters told him there was flan in the kitchen. Liv pursed her lips and tapped a finger on her chin. Yeah, that's a little strange. No wonder he's weirded out by adoption. But Kira and David aren't like that. Hunter is totally part of their family. Heck, they gave him Kira's maiden name as a first name. Doesn't get much more familial than that. You know Kira and David aren't like that, and I know it. But Aaron doesn't. I think I'm even more scared to tell him now than I was before. I should have gotten it over with at the picnic, no matter how awkward it would have been. Aaron's a good guy. It'll surprise him, but he'll work through it. What if he doesn't give me a chance to explain how different our situations are? Then you don't want him. I know that in my head, but here? Sienna touched her heart. I'm already too involved. Oh, S. Liv pulled her into a hug. When are you going to tell him? Sienna took a deep breath. Today. The longer I wait, the harder it will be. She'd spend a few hours practicing to give herself courage, then tell him they needed to talk. I think you're making the right decision. Aaron will be okay with it. Maybe not right away, but you'll work it out if it's meant to be. I hope so. Sienna grabbed her duffel bag and stood. I've got to hurry and unpack, then meet him. Today, in just a few hours, she'd tell him everything. Chapter 24 Sienna spent an intense few hours practicing while Aaron sprawled on the floor doing homework. The pieces were difficult enough to require all of her concentration, and it helped her calm down and forget the conversation she knew she needed to have with Aaron. By the time she started playing Aaron's melody for her cool-down, she was sweaty but more at peace. She fiddled with the ending, adding new measures to represent the weekend spent with his family. The notes were smooth and melodic, punctuated with staccato minor chords that perfectly captured the argument over Flan. Maybe I can wait and tell him about Hunter when we're more serious, Sienna tried to convince herself as she played. They'd only been exclusive a week. He was her boyfriend, not her husband. She didn't have to tell him everything. But she knew that wasn't right either. Aaron deserved the truth. If their relationship was going to progress, he'd find out about Hunter eventually. It was wrong to keep it a secret when she knew how sensitive of a subject it was. Sienna played another minor chord, then paused to record it on her score paper so she wouldn't forget. Is that part new? Aaron asked. Yeah. Sienna put the pencil between her teeth and played a few more notes. It fits. Thanks. She put away the sheet music and started gathering her things. I'm ready to go if you are. Sienna was quiet on the walk home. Her thoughts swirled and she desperately tried to collect them, to turn them into something cohesive. The autumn wind bit at her face, but she barely noticed. She should just say it. The longer she waited, the harder it would be. They passed by Aaron's apartment building and crossed the street to Sienna's. He pulled on her hand, tugging her to stop before she stepped onto the stairs. Are you okay? He asked, his brow knit in concern. You've been really quiet. She pulled her jacket closer around her. I'm fine. Did you not have a good time at my parents' this weekend? No, it's nothing like that. You can be honest with me. If my family did something to make you uncomfortable, I want you to feel like you can tell me. Your family was wonderful. She sighed, unfolding her arms. On the street, a car honked as it sped by a bicyclist, fraying her nerves even further. Aaron, I need to tell you something. His eyebrow rose. Okay, is this what you wanted to tell me at the picnic? Yes. She gazed into his eyes and imagined them clouding with disgust, imagined him storming across the street and out of her life. But no, he wasn't like that. He was good and kind. And if he didn't understand, it was better she find out now. Sienna? Aaron said. 
It's cold out here. Come inside and I'll make us some coffee. I think Liv's out with Eldon right now. You're scaring me. She took his hand and tugged him toward the stairs, her heart threatening to pound out of her chest. It will all make sense in a minute. See? That one word sent a cascade of ice water down her spine. Sienna gasped, whirling around. Dane strode across the parking lot. He wore a leather jacket, his figure large and imposing. No, no, no. Sienna squeezed her eyes shut tight and opened them, hoping he'd disappear. Surely this was a nightmare. Dane stopped in front of Sienna and folded his arms across his massive chest. You haven't returned any of my calls. Aaron stepped closer to Sienna, his presence reassuring and terrifying all at once. Who is this? Dane, Sienna said. The word was almost a whisper. Terror gripped her heart. She had to get Dane out of here before he ruined everything. Aaron's eyes widened. Your ex? Sienna nodded. We need to talk, Dane said. His eyes flicked to Aaron. Privately. Aaron wrapped an arm around Sienna. She's not going anywhere alone with you. I'm not going anywhere until we talk, Dane said. Sienna shrank against Aaron. Not returning your calls wasn't code for show up at my apartment. How did you figure out where I live? It wasn't hard. He shoved his hands in his pockets. Kira and David aren't budging. I don't think they're going to let me see Hunter. Sienna's eyes flicked to Aaron's. His face was a mask of confusion. That's really their decision. Dane, now isn't a good time. I'll call you later, okay? Tomorrow. I promise. She slowly backed away, Aaron moving with her, and stepped onto the first stair. I think they're going to cut me from the team. Dane's eyes were tortured. Ever since my ankle injury, I'm not as fast and Coach is constantly riding me. I made a huge mistake, Sienna. We never should have given Hunter away. I should have married you so we could raise him together. Sienna heard the sharp intake of breath from Aaron. Her heart pounded and she struggled for air as black spots darted in front of her vision. This wasn't how Aaron was supposed to find out. She should have told him when she had the chance. That's insane and you know it, Sienna said, her voice shaking. Insane? He's our son. You have to convince the Petersons to let me see him. It's killing me. What's he talking about? Aaron asked. His voice was frigid, and Sienna worried her legs would give out. His eyes were blank, unreadable, but he wasn't running away. Dane's eyes flicked to Aaron as though noticing him for the first time. You haven't told your boyfriend? Leave now or I'm calling the police. Sienna's throat had a lump the size of a tuba lodged in it. Dane laughed, but it was without humor. You aren't any better than me. You're trying to hide from your past just as much as I was, and yet you get to see our son and I don't. He ran a hand through his hair, cursing. I'm not leaving town until I get an answer. I'll talk to you tomorrow. He turned and stormed away. Sienna stumbled as her legs gave out. Aaron wrapped a strong arm around her waist and she struggled to regain her footing. As soon as she was steady on her feet, Aaron released her. Aaron? She said, her voice tentative. Your son? Aaron rested his hands on his hips, chest rising and falling rapidly. You have a son? With that jock? Sienna tentatively placed a hand on his arm. That's what I wanted to tell you. I was going to tell you Friday, but you got the call from Dana before I could. Aaron didn't even glance at her hand. He folded his arms across his chest, and Sienna let her hand fall to her side. Hunter's your son? Kira and David's son. They're his adoptive parents. You and Dane are the bio parents. Yes. The word was barely a whisper. I can't believe you've been lying to me. I didn't lie. Sienna grabbed Aaron's hand. 
He tried to shake it off, but she held on. Yes, Hunter is my son. I had him when I was 18, and Dane wanted nothing to do with either of us. Now he's decided he wants to be involved in Hunter's life, which is why he's been contacting me recently. I can't believe this. Aaron took a step to leave. Sienna jumped in front of him. It's not like your situation, she said. Kira and David are amazing parents. We have an open adoption. I see Hunter every time I go home and I video chat with him all the time. He will never feel abandoned or out of place like you have. You knew how I felt about adoption and you still kept this a secret from me. His voice shook with emotion and his muscles were taut. When was I supposed to tell you? When we first met? When you were bashing Kelsey's sister for placing her baby? Sienna shook her head, angry tears filling her eyes. As soon as you asked me to be your girlfriend, I started planning when and how to tell you. But Dane beat me to it. I can't even look at you right now. He stepped around her. Aaron, wait! You lied to me, Sienna. You lied to me about something you knew I was sensitive about. Something that is hard for me to accept and understand. I didn't lie. You didn't tell me everything. Right now it feels like the same thing. He backed away. I need to think. I'll call you when I'm ready to talk. Aaron, Sienna pleaded. He shook his head and stomped away. She watched him run across the street and disappear behind one of the buildings in his complex. A sob tore from Sienna. Her legs finally gave out and she sank to her knees, wrapping her arms around herself. She should have told him when she had the chance. Now she'd explained it all wrong and he might never understand. The cold tore through her clothes until she was numb. When would she stop making life-altering mistakes? A soft hand landed on her shoulder. S, what happened? Sienna threw her arms around Liv's neck, her chest throbbing with pain. He's gone, she said. I've ruined everything, and I don't know if I can fix it. Chapter 25 Aaron wasn't waiting for her at their corner the next morning. Sienna's eyes were red and swollen from crying. She waited 20 minutes, guaranteeing she'd be late for class, but he didn't show. She seriously considered turning back around and going home. Liv was still in bed, and Sienna knew she'd be more than game for cutting class. Liv would make her fabulous double fudge brownies, and they'd spend the day watching corny movies and whining about guys. But that wouldn't get her into Juilliard. Sienna blinked back the tears pooling in her eyes and headed toward campus. Aaron was understandably upset right now, but he hadn't broken up with her last night, which had to be a good sign. He'd said he'd call when he was ready. The news had come as a shock. Once he'd had time to digest it, he'd come around. She should have told him at the picnic. Sienna sat through television history the empty seat next to hers screaming of her mistake. No, not a mistake, a miscalculation. Placing Hunter was a decision she had made long before meeting Aaron, and she didn't owe him an apology or explanation for something she had done two years ago, something she knew had been the right choice for her situation. But she had known about his issues with birth mothers, and she had kept quiet out of fear. Sienna absently did finger exercises during class, not hearing a word Professor Callahan said. New stanzas for Aaron's melody danced through her head, angry and full of pain. Was their piece destined to have an unhappy ending? After class, Kelsey came over to talk. Hey, where's Aaron? I think he's sick, Sienna lied. Oh... Well, we wanted to get together this week to study for midterms. We were hoping to study at his apartment, but we can use the library if that doesn't work. Maybe Thursday night around six? I'll pass the message along and get back to you, Sienna said woodenly. Thanks. Kelsey gave a little wave and left. Outside, Sienna looked up at the gray sky. A few flakes of snow had started to fall, the first of the season. 
By the time she walked home, the ground would probably be coated in a thin layer of cold, wet snow. Perfect. If Aaron wasn't okay with dating a birth mom, and it seemed like he wasn't, it was better she found out now. She wouldn't give up her relationship with Hunter for anything or anyone, even a guy she was falling in love with. The person she ultimately married would have to be someone who was okay with the Petersons as unconventional in-laws. Marriage? she asked herself sternly. Isn't that a little presumptuous? But somewhere along the way, that's how Sienna had started to think of Aaron. She trudged through the accumulating snow toward the music hall for her lesson with Dr. Stone. She needed to stop thinking about Aaron and focus on Juilliard. She had a week until they'd start recording her pieces for the pre-screening audition. Men would come and go. Music and Hunter were the constants in her life. The warmth of the music hall bathed Sienna's face. Students rushed past, many carrying instrument cases. A few said hi, but Sienna barely registered their greetings. She trudged to Dr. Stone's office, unwinding her scarf. Dr. Stone's reading glasses were perched on the end of his nose, a stack of papers spread in front of him. He was probably grading original compositions for one of his classes. Right on time, as usual, he said. Start warming up. I'll be there in a moment. Sienna nodded and sank onto the bench. She rolled her shoulders, trying to release some of the tension there, and started playing. Good, he said when she finished her scales. Now play me a Juilliard piece. Let's start with Bach today. For the next two hours, they worked on her Juilliard pieces. Sienna took Dr. Stone's suggestion stoically and did her best to make the changes he'd requested, but everything came out angry. Hadn't she been through enough? Was Aaron's anger yet another punishment from God for her sins? She had prayed so often for grace and thought she had been granted it. Dr. Stone sighed, leaning back against his chair. That's enough for today, Sienna. We have a few minutes left if you have anything else you want to work on. Maybe the new personal composition you showed me last time? Aaron's melody. Sienna took a deep breath and placed her hands on the keyboard. She slowly played, the notes tugging at her heart. She'd written this piece while falling in love with Aaron. Would it now forever be a source of pain, reminding her of what she'd lost? She just wanted to talk to him, to know where they stood. But he'd asked for space, and she needed to respect that. She leaned over the keys, playing the last few measures of the piece. Not quite an ending, but all she had written so far. Dr. Stone's lips were pursed, pen tapping against his crossed knees. The hopeful note is gone from the piece. It now has that sorrowful quality the lullaby medley had. He waved his hand through the air as though he could call the correct words to mind. There's a longing, a despair in the notes that wasn't there before. Sienna's shoulder slumped. I'll work on it. I don't mean that this version's bad, but the version you played last time was a lot more compelling. This version makes me want to lock myself in a room and not come out for days. In fact, all your pieces have felt that way today. Is everything okay? I've had a rough day, but I won't let it affect my music again. Good. We want the admissions board to be enthusiastic about what you can contribute to their music program, not catatonic with sorrow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. She just didn't know how to fix it. She closed her eyes, sending up a silent prayer. Please, Lord, help me fix this. She couldn't do it alone. Dr. Stone glanced at his watch. We have a few more minutes. Play that one again from the top. This time, focus on making it hopeful. Sienna took a deep breath, then placed her fingers over the keys and started playing. I was forgiven, she reminded herself. She didn't have to continually pay for her mistake. The Lord had forgiven her. She'd forgiven herself. She'd only been in Pennsylvania a few weeks when she attended Pastor Tanner's congregation for the first time. 
Tears had streamed down her face as the choir sang. Peace coursed through her veins, along with an overwhelming love for God. She had known in that moment, without a doubt, that her sins were forgiven and her slate was wiped clean. Aaron was not her judge. She pressed the piano pedal to the floor and played an arpeggio. If he couldn't accept her, she didn't want to be with him. Peace washed over her and a tear trickled down her cheek. The Lord had a plan for her. There was someone out there who would love her not in spite of her mistakes, but because her mistakes had shaped her into the person she was today. And he would love Hunter just as much as she did. Aaron was not a punishment. He was just a boy trying to deal with his own baggage. Whatever happened, Sienna would be okay. She played the last note, her arms aching with the force of her emotions. That was beautiful, Dr. Stone said. Draw on that emotion, whatever it is, and you'll ace your Juilliard audition. Next time we'll work on that transition midway through the piece. It was a little rough, but if we work on your fingering, we can smooth it out. Sienna nodded. If she and Aaron couldn't work things out, it would hurt like the devil, but she would be okay. God had a plan for her life. Sienna's phone buzzed as she left the music room. Her heart soared with hope. Maybe Aaron was ready to talk. In the student center, we need to talk. Sienna chewed on her lip, trying to decide how to respond. Dane was the last person she wanted to see. I can come to your apartment if that's easier for you. Sienna blinked back angry tears. He wouldn't leave her alone until she talked to him. Better to just get it over with. She wasn't scared of Dane, but she didn't want to have this conversation at her apartment either. If she didn't respond, he'd probably just wait for her there. Be right there. Her nerves grew with each step she took toward the student center. It was dinner time, so the center was crowded with hungry students. This time, she didn't have to look around for Dane. He was sitting in the same alcove where they had met the first time. Had that really been only six weeks ago? She closed her eyes and said a quick prayer. Lord, help me know what to say. Dane looked up when she sat her backpack on the floor, his eyes rimmed red but relieved. I didn't know if you'd really come, he said. I figured you'd keep harassing me until we spoke. She sank into the chair, giving him her full attention. His eyes clouded with regret. I'm sorry about last night. I was a jerk. Yeah, you were. Is your boyfriend really pissed? Not that it's any of your business, but yeah, he is. I hadn't had the chance to tell him about Hunter yet, and now he won't talk to me. I'm sorry. Want to tell me what happened to make you freak out like that? Dane ran a hand through his hair. I talked to Kira and David yesterday morning, and they said that they'd be happy to get together while I was in Provo for the game, but they didn't feel comfortable letting me meet Hunter yet. I lost it. Next thing I knew, I was driving to Philadelphia and trying to figure out where you lived. How did you find me? I got lucky. You'd posted a few pictures online that had your apartment building in them, and I was trying to match them to the buildings. You just happened to be outside when I walked by. Sienna shivered. Those pictures were going down tonight. If Dane had been a creeper... But he wasn't. Just a desperate man full of regret. It doesn't sound like Kira and David said no, Sienna said gently. They just want to make sure you're going to stick around. Prove to them you want to know Hunter for the right reasons and that you're in it for the long haul. If you do, eventually you'll get to meet him. Dane looked up, and Sienna was shocked to see that his eyes glistened with tears. I'm so sorry, Sienna. I was selfish and immature. I put you through hell. You didn't deserve that. The pain and regret sliced through her. For the first time in years, she saw a glimpse of the boy she had fallen in love with. Forgiveness is the final form of love. Aaron's tattoo popped vividly into her mind, the elegant cursive writing almost a song. 
Sienna reached forward, taking Dane's hand in both of hers. She waited until he met her gaze. I forgave you a long time ago. Dane hung his head, wiping furiously at his eyes. Thank you, he choked out. I never meant to hurt you like that. I loved you. I loved you, too. You hurt me a lot. But that's in the past and I've moved on. You need to move on, too. If you want to be part of Hunter's life, prove it. Show up. Be a man. Talk to the Petersons and accept their terms. Convince them that their son will be safe knowing you, even if it takes years. I will, Dane said. I hope you do. But you have to stop putting me in the middle. I'm not going to influence Kira and David's decision. Hunter's their son, and they are the ones that need to make the choice. Dane slowly nodded and stood. I won't bother you anymore. And I will fight for Hunter. He's worth fighting for. Can I get a hug goodbye? Sienna nodded and stood. Dane's arms felt familiar and warm but the old spark was forever extinguished. They held each other for a long moment, neither saying anything. It was the closure their relationship had never received. She hadn't realized how much she wanted that until now. Dane pulled away, wiping at his tears. Sorry about your boyfriend. If it's meant to be, we'll work it out. Dane nodded. I wish you all the best, Sienna. You too, Sienna said. As she watched Dane walk away, she felt a new level of peace. She had a feeling this wasn't the last she'd be seeing of Dane, and that was okay, because it meant he was finally ready to be part of Hunter's life. Hunter would never have to wonder about his birth family the way Aaron had. She could live with that. She closed her eyes, thanking God that the conversation with Dane had gone well. Now if only she could have as happy a resolution with Aaron. Chapter 26 Sienna didn't hear from Aaron at all that day. Or the next. But early Wednesday morning, before television history, she got a text. Going to campus early so I won't be able to walk with you. Can we talk after class? Sienna quickly texted back. Yes. She'd scheduled a practice room, but she'd skip it. She walked to school alone, the cold air biting through her coat and making the early snow swirl around her feet. She stepped into class and looked around, hoping to see Aaron's signature dreads. Maybe his lips would even turn up in a slight smile, asking for a truce. Sienna passed over the women and men with short hair, her heart dropping. He wasn't here. Hiding out in the library, maybe? She claimed their usual seats near the middle of the middle row. She kept watch as the room slowly filled. Still no Aaron. Professor Callahan called the class to order, and Aaron hadn't arrived. Sienna did one last scan of the room and finally located him. He must have just slipped in. He sat on the back row, one seat in from the end, the same chair he had sat in on the day they met. Her heart sank. Whatever he wanted to say to her, it couldn't be good. Class dragged. Sienna nervously did finger exercises on the desk, a staccato, anxious addition to Aaron's melody floating through her head. She barely heard a word of the lecture. Her stomach twisted in apprehension when the professor released the class. The room broke up in noisy conversation as students gathered their bags and started to leave. Sienna stuffed her laptop into her backpack and slowly turned around. He stood at the back of the room, hands deep in his pockets, waiting for her. His dreads were pulled back in the customary low ponytail, and he wore a heavy coat and had his backpack slung over one shoulder. Sienna slowly trudged up the shallow steps of the auditorium and stopped just in front of him. His eyes were unreadable, his expression a perfect poker face. Hey, Sienna said. Hey, I thought we could go to the food court to talk, maybe get some coffee. Sienna nodded. At only nine o'clock, the area would mostly be deserted and quiet. 
the perfect place to break up with someone. He kept his hands in his pockets as they walked, a clear sign everything wasn't fine between them. Sienna zipped her coat up against the wind, glad the rustling of trees at least interrupted the loud silence between them. Aaron held open the door to the food court and Sienna stepped inside. Most of the eateries didn't serve breakfast and were closed, their lights off and signs dark. But the coffee shop had a girl working the counter, and Sienna could smell breakfast food from the sandwich place. After the biting wind, the silent food court was almost louder than the rustling trees had been. What do you want? Aaron asked. Just a coffee, Sienna said. She stepped up to the counter and pulled out her wallet. Aaron's hand covered hers, and she jumped at the sudden contact. I'm paying, he said. Sienna swallowed and nodded. Maybe he wasn't going to break up with her after all. Or maybe he felt guilty making her pay for the I'm dumping you comfort drink. Aaron paid for their drinks, then motioned to a table in a secluded corner of the food court. She wondered if that meant this conversation would take a while, and he anticipated still being here when the fast food restaurants opened and the building overflowed with the lunch rush. Sienna sank onto the hard chair and watched as Aaron slowly took a sip of coffee. She wrapped her hands around her own cup, feeling the heat seep through the styrofoam and into her hands. She couldn't drink anything when her stomach was a tight ball of worry. The next few minutes lasted a lifetime, but Sienna was determined to let Aaron speak first. She took a sip of her coffee, burning her tongue. She didn't care. She just couldn't sit there and stare at him. I've been thinking a lot the last few days, he said. She nodded, relieved he'd finally spoke. Whatever the result of this conversation, she was glad they were having it. He took another sip of his coffee, his eyes holding hers. I want to clarify a few things to make sure I have everything correct. That conversation's kind of a blur. Okay. Her voice came out soft and squeaky, and she cleared her throat. Ask me anything. Dane's the ex-boyfriend who's been contacting you lately. Yes. Because he wants to see your... He gulped. Your son. Yes. Sienna wanted to say more, wanted to jump in with explanations. But Aaron needed to lead this conversation. Has Dane been around a lot since Hunter was born? Aaron said the words quietly, his eyes on the table. Was he jealous? Sienna couldn't take the physical distance anymore. She leaned forward and grabbed his hand. Dane didn't want anything to do with Hunter. He disappeared as soon as he realized I wouldn't get an abortion. When he showed up again right after we met, it was the first time I had seen him since high school graduation. Are you glad he's back? Sienna didn't even have to think about that. Absolutely not. But it's not my choice whether he's in Hunter's life. If Kira and David let him in, then I'll be around him sometimes by extension. Aaron nodded. He flexed his fingers, his words slow and labored. Have you talked to him since Sunday? We met yesterday. I think he finally understands that I can't be the middleman. He won't bother me anymore. That's good. I mean, I know that's what you want. Aaron took another sip of coffee, his eyes far away. Sienna had never seen him so somber. What are you thinking about? She asked. I'm trying to understand what made you give your baby away. Place my baby. Place your baby. It was a small concession, but it felt like a giant leap forward. I don't understand what made you do it. Did you give him away because Dane wasn't around? No. If Dane had been on board, it would have made a lot of things easier, but it wouldn't have changed the outcome. Sienna leaned back, tracing the business logo on her cup. It was the hardest decision I've ever made. I cried and prayed and talked to my parents and adults I trusted, and my pastor. I met with a Christian crisis center dozens of times. There were lots of factors that went into my decision, but ultimately only one mattered. 
I knew, knew that Hunter wasn't supposed to be mine. The first time I saw Kira and David's picture, I started sobbing. I knew immediately they were his family. Do you see him a lot? Every time I'm home. I text Kira a few times a week and video chat with the kids every month or so. It's not the same as your situation. Hunter knows me. I'm Aunt Sienna in their family. He knows he grew in my tummy, but that Kira and David are his parents. Aaron looked away. This is a huge mental shift for me. I've never known a birth mom. I've always assumed they chose adoption because it was the easy way out. Her heart twisted at the admission. I can't speak for your birth mom, but I can speak for me. And I promise you, I made the decision for him, not for me. I met her. The words were so quiet, Sienna almost didn't hear them. Excuse me? Aaron looked up, his gaze steady. My birth mom. I went to Baltimore yesterday. It was her. My half-brother was there, too. Oh, my gosh. Sienna ran a shaky hand through her hair. I don't know what to say. Her name is Yolanda. He quickly brushed at his eyes. She's so young. She was only 17 when she had me. 17 and she had already given birth twice. Oh, Aaron. Sienna's heart ached. She works three jobs just to pay for her crappy apartment. Doesn't even have a high school diploma. I have two more half-siblings. He shook his head. That's not important right now. When I realized what Dane was saying, I felt betrayed. It was like you suddenly became a different person. Fear clutched at Sienna's chest and she swallowed it back. I'm the same. I'm right here. Nothing's changed for me. Meeting Yolanda yesterday? It was hard. I've spent my whole life believing my birth mom was a selfish person who couldn't be bothered with me. I've struggled my whole life to fit in, to find my identity. I've talked with so many others who felt the same way. Birth mom has always been a negative in my mind. Sienna's heart shredded and the remains turned to ice. If that's how you think of me, then I guess we're done here. She grabbed her backpack and rose, leaving the coffee on the table. She didn't want his pity comfort drink. Aaron grabbed her arm. Wait. I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you yesterday. I know adoption's been hard for you and I want to help. Sienna, but I won't apologize for placing my son. I made the right decision for Hunter. He isn't you, and I'm not your birth mom. I know. When I met my mom yesterday, I finally started to understand on an emotional level. She wanted more for me. For the first time in my life, I really, truly tried to see things from a birth mother's perspective. Aaron gently caressed her cheek, making her shiver. I've been letting bitterness and prejudice rule my life for too long and I'm done. Hope sprang in her heart, and Sienna held her breath. What are you saying? I'm saying I love you. I'm head over heels, can't eat, can't sleep, crazy in love with you. I want to know everything about you, and I want to spend the rest of my life proving how much you mean to me. Please, allow me that chance. I want to make this work so badly. Sienna blinked, tears pouring down her cheeks. She let out a laugh and threw her arms around his neck. I love you, too. His lips found hers, and she kissed him like he was the only man on earth. He was the only man, at least for her. I'm so sorry, he whispered, resting his forehead against hers. I shouldn't have judged you for something I knew nothing about. And I'm sorry for not telling you sooner, Sienna said. I was so scared and I didn't know how to start the conversation. Adoption's been such a negative experience for you. I'm trying to heal, Aaron said. 
Yolanda seems willing to answer my questions. I want you to meet her. I would love that. Sienna wiped away a tear with a shaky hand. And I wanted to help you understand how positive adoption had been for me. I want to make this work. We will make this work. Aaron laughed, kissing her again. You have no idea how good that is to hear. I thought for sure you'd kick me to the curb. I thought you would kick me to the curb. I'm not going anywhere, he said, and then he kissed her again. Epilogue. Five months later. Sienna gripped Aaron's hand tightly as the plane dove steadily downward. She held her breath as the runway rose to meet the wheels. The plane landed with a thump, and her ears filled with the roar of the engines as the runway sped past. The plane slowed, and Sienna relaxed her grip on Aaron's hand. You okay? He asked. She nodded. I didn't peg you as a nervous flyer. He popped a piece of gum and handed her one. Thanks, she said, taking it. Hopefully it would unplug her ears. I'm usually not scared of airplanes, but the audition has me on edge. You'll do great. Aaron kissed her on the temple. And even if you bomb it, I'll love you either way. She whacked his chest. Thanks. I'm teasing. Juilliard would be an idiot not to accept you. She hoped he was right. Thanks for coming with me. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Sienna turned on her phone and found a photo text from Kira. She laughed, showing the picture to Aaron. Hunter sat proudly on the toilet, butt naked and grinning. Looks like he finally went potty like a big boy, Sienna said. Of course he did, Aaron said. That kid is awesome. We have to find a Statue of Liberty stuffed toy for him and Sophie. I promise them both. That's a great idea. Sienna said, her heart bursting with happiness. We won't forget. Let's send them a picture so they know we got here safely. Aaron pulled her close and held up his phone. Smile. Sienna couldn't stop smiling even if she tried. They collected their baggage and then went outside to wait for a taxi. The whole trip felt startlingly familiar, but different at the same time. The air was unseasonably warm for March, just like it had been last year. The curb was packed with people waiting for taxis, just like last year. The air smelled like exhaust and body odor, just like last year. Aaron squeezed her hand, offering a reassuring smile. His dreads were pulled back in the low pony she loved. He smiled and her heart flipped. Even after five months, that hadn't changed. Whatever the outcome of her audition, she'd be okay. She still had Aaron, after all, and Hunter, too. The last five months had been a blur. They'd had a lot of good times, and a few difficult ones as well. In December, Sienna had brought Aaron home for Christmas. With Kira and David's blessing, she'd introduced Aaron to Hunter. The meeting had gone better than she could have hoped for, and the two had instantly fallen in love with each other. By the end of the trip, Hunter had called him Uncle Aaron and begged him not to leave. It had only made Sienna love Aaron more. Dane had been to Utah twice and met with Kira and David both times. He'd even brought a gift for Hunter, a football signed by his entire team. Kira and David seemed happy with how things were progressing and said Dane seemed in it for the long haul. They weren't ready to let him meet Hunter, but said they'd consider it if things continued going well. Sienna hoped they would, for Hunter and for Dane. Aaron continued to develop a tentative relationship with his birth mom. Sienna had finally met Yolanda over Thanksgiving, and the two had instantly bonded. There were still a lot of unresolved feelings on Aaron's end, but he was making progress, and Sienna was grateful he had allowed her to be a part of it. Cab's here, Aaron said, pulling her out of her trance. The inside smelled like stale coffee and cigarette smoke, but Aaron didn't seem to notice. He pulled Sienna close, excitedly pointing out landmarks he recognized as they drove past. I can't wait to see everything, Aaron said. Sienna laughed. There will be plenty of time to sightsee after my audition. 
I can't believe you've never been to New York. He pulled her hand to his lips and kissed her knuckles. I'm glad. That means I get to experience it for the first time with you. Sienna blushed, her stomach fluttering with a different kind of excitement. She couldn't wait to explore the sights with him. They spent the evening admiring Times Square, then video chatted with the Petersons for a while. Liv called, too, eager to tell Sienna about her date with the man of the hour, an international business consultant named Aiden with a British accent. Eldon was long gone, which no one was particularly sad about. Sienna thought something might be different about Aiden, though. Liv had a sparkle in her eye that Sienna had never seen before. Sienna slept fitfully, audition stress waking her up every hour. When the cab finally pulled up to Juilliard the next morning, her nerves were frayed. Sienna stared at the building, her heart in her throat. The ultra-modern design with sleek, sharp lines and large windows was as intimidating as ever. Aaron paid the cabbie and grabbed her bag. Ready? he asked. She nodded and took his hand, walking into the building. One hour until her audition. She could do this. Sienna checked in, then went to freshen up. She changed into a simple black audition dress, then reapplied her makeup and fluffed her hair. A student employee ushered Sienna and Aaron to a classroom to wait. Sienna couldn't sit still and instead paced. The room was small and nothing spectacular. There were desks for 20 and a whiteboard at the front. Two other students sat in the room, a girl and a boy. They both looked impossibly young, maybe 16 or 17. Surely they couldn't be seniors. Were they graduating high school early? Sienna turned, tracing her steps back up the length of the room. She was getting too old for this. Today, her last Juilliard audition, she'd put it all on the line. The door opened and the employee spoke with someone on the other side. She turned, pointing to Sienna. You're next, she said. Get ready, you have about five minutes. Sienna nodded, her breaths coming more rapidly. She wanted this so badly. Hey, Aaron grabbed Sienna's hands, pulling her to a stop. Take a deep breath. You'll do awesome. What if I don't get in again? She whispered. Look at me. Sienna blinked, focusing on his face, the strong line of his jaw, the kindness in his eyes. You've got this, he said. It's time. The employee motioned for Sienna to follow her. Aaron grabbed her bag and they trailed the employee down the long hallway. They paused outside a black door. Only Sienna can go in, the employee said, an apologetic smile on her lips. Aaron nodded. He crushed Sienna to him in a hug. I love you. Now go slay that audition. Sienna gave him a quick kiss, then opened the door to what looked like a professor's office. A grand piano stood in the center of the room, and the panel of judges sat in a line of chairs. Eight pieces. Fifty-five minutes. She could do this. She introduced herself to the judges, then sat down and started playing. She pushed everything else out of her mind and focused on the music, harnessing the emotion she'd perfected in Aaron's melody and channeling it into each piece. She forgot about the judges, the audition, and her nerves and just played. On the last note of the piece, the room came back into focus. Sienna gulped, then rose in what she hoped was a graceful manner. The judges' faces were impassive, giving nothing away. After two prior auditions, she'd expected nothing less. She thanked the judges and left the room. As soon as he saw her, Aaron pulled Sienna into his arms, kissing her soundly. How do you do? he asked. Sienna paused, considering. She'd played every note correctly, infused the correct amount of emotion and technique into each piece. She had never felt better after a performance, audition or otherwise. I think this was my best audition yet, but it doesn't matter. Aaron's brow furrowed. Huh? I realized something as I left that room. She held out an arm, motioning to the school at large. I would love to come to Juilliard. It would fulfill a lifelong dream. 
but Juilliard isn't what's important to me anymore. He ran a finger over her cheek. And what is important to you? You. She placed a hand lightly on his chest. Whether I get in or not, I'll be okay. Because I have you. Juilliard is no longer my goal. Building a life together. That's what I want. Aaron laughed, burying his face in her neck. I love you. If you get in, and you will, I'm coming with you. I'll transfer. I'll do whatever I have to. Your dreams are my dreams. We're in this together. Aaron, no. He stuck his hand into his pocket, fidgeting. I'd plan to do this somewhere romantic, like the Statue of Liberty or Central Park, but I can't wait another second. Slowly, he sank onto one knee and pulled out a box. Sienna gasped, placing a hand over her heart. Blood thundered through her ears, a melodic roar. Oh my gosh! You showed me that there are two sides to every story. You supported me in the search for my birth mom. You let me into your heart and introduced me to your son. You are loving and kind and exactly who I want to spend forever with. I don't care if we live in New York or in Philadelphia or in a cardboard box as long as we're together. Sienna McBride, will you marry me? A thousand moments flashed before her eyes. The first time he'd kissed her, the daisies crushed between them and her clothes smelling of airplane. Stargazing at the high school where he had told her he was falling in love. A smile dancing across his face as he chased Hunter around the living room. This moment where he offered her his heart. Yes, she said slowly. I'll marry you. I love you so much. She threw her arms around Aaron and kissed him. He rose, slipping the ring onto her finger. Sienna looked down at the diamond that sparkled in the light. New measures played in her head, and she knew she had finally found the ending to Aaron's melody. She didn't know what the future held. She didn't know if she'd get into Juilliard, if they'd move to New York, or if she'd ever open her own piano studio. But none of that mattered. With Aaron, she'd finally found her song. Discussion Questions 1. In the book, Sienna purposefully keeps her past, and specifically her son, a secret from Aaron. Should she have told him sooner? 2. How have Aaron and Sienna's life experiences shaped their views on adoption? 3. How have your own life experiences shaped your views on adoption? 4. Do you think that open adoptions or closed adoptions are healthier for the parties involved? Why? 5. At the end of the book, Aaron is very upset with Sienna when he finds out about her son. Does he have a right to be mad at her? 6. Do you think that Jared would have been understanding of Sienna's past had she told him? Why or why not? 7. Did Kira and David make the right decision by not letting Dane see Hunter right away? Why or why not? 8. How did Sienna and Aaron grow over the course of the book? Acknowledgements This book has probably been one of the hardest I've ever written. For whatever reason, Sienna and Aaron's story was a struggle to get out, but so rewarding in the end. There were so many times along the way I was certain this book would never make it to the bookshelves. If it weren't for my amazing husband, who took care of the kids and the house and dinner and so many other things while I rushed to meet my publication deadline, this book wouldn't have made it. Thanks to my beta readers, Liz, Lachelle, and Candace, for their invaluable feedback and support. Thank you to Jacqueline, who read the book in a single day and assured me it wasn't awful and I could take that leap and release it into the world. Thank you to my critique group, the authorities, David, Jacob, Darren, and Lachelle, for their suggestions and support. 
And most of all, thank you to my Heavenly Father, who has supported me on every step of this crazy publishing journey. I am so blessed. About the Author Lindsay Armstrong is the USA Today best-selling author of the No Match for Love series, Sunset Plains Romance series, and Kiss Me series. In case it wasn't obvious, she's always had a soft spot for love stories. In third grade, she started secretly reading romance novels, hiding the covers so no one would know because, hello, embarrassing, and dreaming of her own Prince Charming. Lindsay finally met her true love while at college, where she graduated with a bachelor's in history education. They are now happily married and raising twin boys in the Rocky Mountains. Traveling is one of their favorite activities. Lindsay has visited 11 different countries, most of them in Europe, and more than 35 states. Like any true romantic, Lindsay loves chick flicks, ice cream, and chocolate. She believes in sigh-worthy kisses and happily ever afters and loves expressing that through her writing. To find out more about future releases, you can join Lindsay's VIP Readers Club. You can also find her on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or at her website, lindsayarmstrong.com. For more information on the narrator, Tiffany Williams, look for her on Facebook, Twitter, and at her website, tiffanywilliamsvo.com. This has been Tomorrow's Lullaby, written by Lindsay Armstrong, narrated by Tiffany Williams, copyright 2017 by Lindsay Armstrong, production copyright 2017 by Lindsay Armstrong. Hey, it's Lindsay Armstrong again. Thank you so much for listening to this audiobook. I really hope you enjoyed it. I've got more than 20 books published, and I hope to make more of them available on YouTube soon. You can help make this happen by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. If you want to check out more of my books, you can head over to my website, lindsayarmstrong.com, and join my newsletter. I'll send three free ebooks to your inbox immediately. You can also find my books on Amazon, Apple, Kobo, Nook, and Google Play, pretty much wherever ebooks are sold. I'll drop the links below so you can check it out if you're interested. Thanks for listening.